Hello again, friends! And you are our friends, the great Brian Last here. You there, it is omnibus season, and we have a big omnibus here today. Something we've talked a lot about in the last year, cast media. And of course, to join me, the leader of the cult of Cornet, Mr. Jim Cornet. Well, I know somebody that's about to feel like he got run over by a bus, and I hope that he doesn't retain a person who chases ambulances, because we have got the voice of the voice of the voiceless, Mr. Stephen P. New, as well as his henchman, Andre the Giant, well, not on henchman. this case. I wouldn't say henchman. That's probably not the right word to use. They're, they're, hey, Stephen P. New is going to come down on this weasel like he was a Batman villain anyway, so why not? We might as well have the names written across the chest. <laughs> what we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, is the... The financial genius that decided that he was going to defraud Brian Last and I and other famous individuals, both famous, infamous, and even obscure, of their money in a podcast Ponzi scheme that has been very entertaining for our listeners over the last year, but not entertaining for Mr. Thompson and Rob Ellen, the chief asshole officer of the big parent company that was going to built people for a lot of money in this stock scam, and now their stock is in the toilet. Snot is running down their noses, greasy fingers smearing their shabby clothes as they sit on a park bench eyeing little girls with bad intent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the saga of cast media and how they picked the wrong motherfuckers to be messing with. This is one that has been requested by the listeners over and over again, so we're happy to bring it to you guys here today. I remind everyone, everything's been cleared by Stephen P. New. And this saga is not over yet. This omnibus just brings you up to date, but Colin's fate will be the subject of next year's. Well, that's right. There probably will be a volume two next year, and you reference Colin Thompson to give everyone a quick look back at all of this. Colin Thompson is the owner of Cass Media, who previously had been our advertising agent, and decided to stop sending us our money. Various people have various tales of where this money could have gone. Was our money used to pay other talent? Was our money used to fund Colin's lavish lifestyle? We don't know. But we know there's millions of dollars that no one can figure out where they went. Or where it went. It's money no, them they, or they, it. They, they would be, all of those individual dollars add up to a group called they. Because it wasn't just our money, it was other people's money. So right now, what you're about to hear is a story of not just this show, but of podcasting, of someone who was in over his head, who then decided to obfuscate and be dishonest about it, and try to screw everyone who he was working with. You can hear about someone who thought this is a great opportunity to try to steal a bunch of shows and get them while they're disadvantaged at a bad position. And you're going to hear about us doing things a different way. The story of independence in podcasting. This is Jim Cornette's Cast Media Omnibus. There have been a lot of questions recently from the listeners. You may have noticed a few disruptions in the podcast feed, the podcast schedule. You may have noticed that the advertisers and the very, very popular conversations we have about them have been out of the show for the last little while. There have been less commercials in the show the last little while. And this is because of a situation that emerged between us, Arcadian Vanguard, and Jim Cornette and a company that was handling our advertising called Cast Media. And was that a good introduction? Well, <laughs> well, well yeah, that, that basically lays it out there. And here's the problem. And I mentioned this a couple months ago, probably when this first became an issue and we had to start making some changes. As it, you and I, some people call us control freaks. I kind of say that we are picky. We're picky about what we do and and our programs, and that's why that we do everything ourselves or in-house. Unlike many other podcasts, programs, whatever, we're not with a network. And we own all of our content, and we are our own producers, and we decide what we say and talk about and what we don't. And even our editing and our administrative technical support, they work for us. They're Kippelman. And old J Shark NATO and so many more. They they're highly paid, highly trained stooges. They're very No, they're not stooges in any way. Why oh, would you yes, say they that? Are, Why they would you do, say that? They do as we direct. 
Now, they're not just run-of-the-mill stooges. They're not the three stooges. They're highly paid, highly trained, highely sought-after stooges. Plus, you just named two stooge of them. work. So it can't huh? be three. Well, you named two. It can't be three. Well, I didn't know if I was supposed to talk about the other guy until we clear it with his parole officer. <laughs> there is no parole officer, ladies and gentlemen. Not that you know about. But anyway, so the point is, as I mentioned a couple months ago, uh, but didn't go into detail about, there was one weak link in the chain, one outside entity that we had come to rely on because we had no reason for quite some time to not rely on him. And that was this weasel, I'm sorry, alleged weasel, since this is going to court, that was running cast media who was selling our advertising to the fine advertisers that advertise on our program's advertising. But as to paraphrase Jerry Seinfeld, it's not the selling of the advertising, it's the paying for the advertising. And suddenly, there was no paying for our advertising, not from our fine sponsors who have been upset as we were about this disruption of service. They paid him, and he didn't pay us. Have I summed that up correctly, Brian? You have summed it up. There's a lot of detail, and we should note, we're not unique in this situation. There are other shows, pretty much all the shows, under the umbrella of cast media. Now, again, we were an outside production. We were just using them for advertising support. There are other shows that are in the unfortunate position of being cast productions. or may not have a big audience and may not know what to do. So we're in a better position than most, but this happened to many. Yes, and here's the thing. This idiot was working for us for a straight commission. You sell the advertising just like anybody else on Madison Avenue, right? And as a, a bonus to us, and this is where it got a little sticky, we had to get some changes made. As a bonus to us, he's, oh, and we will provide the platform that your podcast is on, right? The feeds and everything. Right. He had stopped me because I was going to set up our own hosting several years back after we had already been doing business with them for maybe a year or so. And he said, we're going to do it. We'll cover your cost. And we just want to, you know, continue give, to be a part of the a, advertising. Yeah, give you a little bonus there. Okay. Well, since... Well, it wasn't a billing, bonus. I wouldn't call well, it a bonus. Well, you know, give, give us a little something to save us a few thousand dollars a, a month when the billing for his company, the commission off of our advertising just last year alone was six figures for him. So he beneficially, just charitably, oh, I'll save you a couple grand a month. Well, okay, fine. Right. With no overhead. Important we didn't think again, we were putting him out. Again, no overhead for him or his company because we are an independent production. All the costs are ours. And we would provide the finished show. But meanwhile, what this alleged weasel does, did we mention his name is Colin Thompson? I don't know if we mentioned that. But what this alleged weasel does is he takes our money that our advertisers paid for the advertising on our shows and invest it back in another part of his company that is helping produce other people's programs. And he has got some people, as you said, in the same boat, but worse because he owes them money. He was providing them maybe producers or production facilities or who knows what kind of who shot John deal he had sold them on that he was going to benefit them in some way. And as you mentioned, unlike us, either they weren't technically out of, not under contract to him for their shows, or he had some ownership, or he had some hold over them to where they had to sit around and go, well, what the fuck do we do? Whereas we immediately, when we found out that this weasel is going bankrupt, Still owing us, and by the way, don't think anybody out there who who just hates us just horribly like a Hardy fan 24 or whatever and thinks this is going to kill the podcast. No, unfortunately for you, this was a minor bump in the road. It's 
Let me put it this way. This was the best thing that could have happened. I hate to say it. Will, th- will this guy owes me and Brian each a brand new Ford Expedition? No. It's, now that it's it, more than that. What are you talking about? Have you seen the prices on them goddamn tricked out, fully fucking loaded? I've been checking. I haven't. Well, exactly. Anyway, so that is, again, not going to change our standard of living, but it's enough to piss us the fuck off. Yeah, he owes us more than he owes us more than that each. If we're doing it, you know, he owes us more than that if we're doing the math. Well, and then we're not t- we're talking about the lost revenue also then which would add on to that. But nevertheless, the point being this guy goes from paying us every month for our advertising to all of a sudden he misses a check. Well, what's going on? Oh, no, they're just uh, industry issues. And then we get one the next month. But is it for what we thought we should have got? Uh, and then we don't get one the next month. And then you're on his ass. You've been up his ass. You've been so far up his ass. You could probably draw from memory the goddamn sketch of his fucking colon turns. And he's, oh, is it just a, no, there's no problems. There's no issues. And then we get a check. But then it's, eh. And then we find out, oh, by the way, I'm going bankrupt. So he Well let, let's let's take a couple steps back and actually give some information and some details here to the story. All right. We were on our own doing our thing and while looking for hosting and advertising support, someone in the industry said, "Hey, we know a network. It's a young aggressive guy. He's doing his own shows, but they may be able to represent your sales interests because they want to pad their numbers and say that your show numbers a part of their network. So we start doing business with them slowly. Things work out. There are always issues with the accounting from day one. And there were a lot that you could overlook. I mean, we didn't get money unless I checked on it every month. And then we would get the money. But if I checked on it every month, we would get the money. So it's a pain in the ass, but we got paid. All of a sudden last year, there were these blips. This happens at a very interesting time for us. These shows are excessively popular and growing. Also, we have no contract. We've been out of contract for years. And there's a specific reason why we're out of contract. And that reason was I demanded a key man clause. I demanded an immediate opt out of the contract if there was a sale of the company or any change in the senior management structure, any changes from the company we're signing the deal with today, we have the option, the ability, to immediately opt out. Because you, not being Nostra dumbass, but Nostra Damus, realized that this, if we were under contract to this weasel, and this weasel sold this company, that we would have to be doing business with someone that we didn't even know as well as we did him, apparently, which we didn't know him that well. And we don't want to do that. Well, I was worried about that, and that's exactly what happened. But also, I believe from my conversations with this flake that his game plan wasn't to have a business and hold on to it for years and run it and love it. It was to find something, pump it up, and sell it, and set himself up with a job and some money, hopefully. Didn't work out in the end like he hoped. We'll get to that. But I think that was the game plan. And every time I brought up the opt-out, radio silence. I wouldn't hear anything from them. Now, I was dealing on a daily basis with their sales team. Besides what we say about Colin Thompson, the flake boob owner of Cast Media, that's alleged flake boob. Oh, no, no. I dealt with him. I could say it. He is a boob flake and a phony creative executive. He has no creative skills at all. And also, that's T H O M S O N, no P. We're taking the P out of him right now. That's right. So every time I brought up the opt out, he would go silent. I'm dealing with their sales team. Great sales team. Great management of the sales team. Great people. Great relationship. The success of the advertising on these podcasts has been a wonderful relationship between Jim Cornette, Arcadian Vanguard, and the sales team that was under Cast Media. So all of a sudden, late last year, 
right around the time my dad died, the money stops coming in. Okay, we always have to check on things. They've gone through multiple accountants. There's always an accountant to point a finger at, whatever. Where's the money? That's when we start hearing about industry conditions. Ignoring the fact that we are in this industry. And, and our conditions have never been better. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. We know how to scale a business. We know how to make a profit. We're good. We have survived just fine any industry issues with advertising. We've done quite well. You've got a problem. It's not an industry problem. It's a you problem. So earlier in the year, we had some talks. Again, out of contract, we could do whatever we want. And he said he was going to come up with a plan for repayment. In the meantime, they gave us a payment schedule. Oh, and by the way, you forgot about the platform change. That was before that. The reason why that everybody suddenly had problems with downloading the show or finding the show or is the show up or we can't fast forward or whatever the case may be was because he switched over to something that may have been more affordable to his weakened financial condition that he was denying was the case and not telling us about. That's right. And to be quite honest, the people... We went to a company called Soundstack for hosting briefly, and I don't think they were ready for prime time, but they're very nice people, and they were a big help to us. So we say thank you to them, but it just wasn't ready for us. Yeah, right because now. since this guy is is uh, the pulled a fucking Jimmy Hoffa, and nobody, even his own ex employees, who he also left in the lurch and fucking probably are looking for him right now. Uh, has been able to get a hold of the guy or heard from him. So we had to go into rounds with that to get everything switched back to where we wanted it. Right. And when all these things were happening early in the year, Jim and I had conversations. Okay, I'm going to engage other parties right now. All we need is advertising support. We could do everything else ourselves. We could do the advertising support ourselves too. I don't want that. I want an established entity. We can pop the corn too, Joe. And sometimes you want to do that, because sometimes you want salt, sometimes you want butter. But we wanted an expert in salt and butter, and that's all we needed. They put together a repayment plan. I had a conversation with Colin Thompson, and he tells me he knows that we've been waiting for money. We've been a great partner. He's very into, like, just mindless buttering up. So if you could sit through that, sometimes you get something. And he said that he's in the midst of selling his company to Podcast One. And this would be a good thing because he would have the funds from the sale to repay us the money we're owed. The money that he has already collected, because as we've mentioned, it was not that the sponsors did not want to pay for the advertising. It's that he misdirected our money someplace else in a losing venture. That's right. Again, when you're trying to fake it till you make it, at a certain point, you need to stop. And one of the biggest problems with podcasting as a business, as a genre right now, as an industry, is too many people don't understand what the business is. And the business is a wonderful business as long as you don't pump it up and try to make yourself bigger than you are and have productions that there's no audience for. You really have to like treat it differently than everyone else is treating it, but whatever. He's going to make this deal with Podcast One. Now, at this time, I already know, okay, the conversations Jim and I had earlier this year, that's the game plan now. We need another home because we're not going to Podcast One. So we're going to get our money from Cast Media that they owe us, and then we're going to have to set everything up. I started having conversations about a new sales team, an in-house team, and then after that, the next communication was I got an NDA emailed to me. <laughs> an NDA. Not from Tony Khan now. And by the way, let me just say this for the record. If you're hearing this on the show, this has been cleared by Stephen P. New. This has been cleared by our legal counsel. So we're good to go. And I'm not under any NDA. So I can read all these emails. I don't give a fuck. But I got an email here. May 15th, NDA for acquisition transition process. As discussed last week, Cast assigned and letter. I think I got the wrong grammar here. It's A. Cast assigned a letter of intent 
to move forward with an acquisition. We had expected the announcement last week, but due to timing considerations, ah. the announcement has been pushed back. We are asking you to sign an NDA, which will allow the three parties to get into immediate dialogue. This will expedite the transition process so that we can move forward with funding and payments, excuse me, transaction, not transition, funding and payments as quickly as possible. Please provide below and send the NDA. Thank you for working with us through this process. We are excited for the next phase. I never signed this NDA. I never sent it back to him. An them. NDA of what? What do we know otherwise than just you owe us money and we want it and you don't want to give it to us? It's a mutual non-disclosure agreement made on the date set forth between the Courtside Group Incorporated doing business as Podcast One, a Delaware corporation. Ah, they've got an assumed name, eh? And Cast Media Incorporated, a Delaware corporation doing business as Cast Media. And, and that's us. with a K, by the way, if you're looking these alleged weasels up. Cast, K-A-S-T. Yes, and Colin Thompson is with a C. It's important to make sure we understand exactly how to spell his name. It's C-O-L-I-N, yes. not K. K for cast, C for Colin. But yeah, it's this big NDA that I can't say anything about anything that I don't know anything about that I didn't ask <laughs> to be a part of. <laughs> and they didn't even put our name on here. It's just a generic NDA they <laughs> sent to us. See, T Tony at least filled my name in. See, this went right into the fuck you folder here. So now I'm waiting to hear back, because again, we're still advertising our sponsors. And let me just say, this is not a sponsor issue. I think you've said it already. Yeah. Sponsors paid. The company they paid didn't pay us. They stole the money. They misappropriated money that was specifically paid for the programs of Jim Cornette. That's it. Complete financial misappropriation of funds. So I don't... So it, oh, go well, ahead. I was about to say, so you didn't... Uh, you called me and said, hey, listen to this. We obviously... Nobody signed an NDA. And we uh, still was hanging in the air that uh, he's supposed to be paying us back. Right. Or not paying us back, but, but he's supposed to be paying us. He's supposed to be paying us. This is all happening in the middle of the payment schedule he has set up with his newest accountant who's about to be fucking deposed but his newest accountant who gave us a payment schedule and i believe at this point they hit the first two and there were two more on the schedule i was asking are those coming through and also what about after that date what's going to happen so the next communication is this email here hi brian hope all is well <laughs> We previously communicated that Cast Media is in the process of a proposed acquisition of certain assets of Cast Media by a subsidiary of Live One, a company listed on NASDAQ. You can find the press release here for more details. And he said it was a generic press release about the, this uh, Live One acquiring something certain related assets. to certain assets, not something even not mentioned, not itemized or outlined. So he uh, sends over a proposal here. I'll get to that in a second. The attached file elaborates on the specific terms of this proposed transaction, particularly how it pertains to the migration of your podcast if your agreement is acquired as part of the acquisition. If your agreement is acquired, well, boy, we're on pins and needles. I can't wait to migrate my pot. We're not going to be migrating, whether legally, legally or illegally, any fucking where except away from you, motherfucker. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, you went past the other thing. If our agreement is acquired, we have no agreement. Yeah. <laughs> there is no agreement, you idiot. There's no agreement, Jerry. As we've discussed. We plan to keep your current operations with your cast support team intact during and after this transition. By the way, he laid off that entire team. Since yes. this email, <laughs> that entire team that was going to be there for everything, they've all been laid off. They've all we've, been laid off. We've hired a couple of them. <laughs> Additionally, the Live One team will provide further resources. We are thrilled to be working to provide a solution that covers your balance due to cast, ensures ongoing timely payments, and boosts resources for our team. 
As per the terms of the proposed acquisition, certain existing cast podcasts are expected to transition to the post-acquisition company managed by Podcast One, a subsidiary of Live One. <laughs> this condition is based on the subsidiary of Live One acquiring your agreement with your consent, along with certain modifications there too. Certain modifications! Including extension of its term. Extension of its time! And payment by the post-acquisition company of agreed-to outstanding amounts, including back pay, generally on the terms as described in the attached file. Kind of a bailout from these people that we hope will buy us. Through this email, we would also like to introduce you to the exceptional team at Podcast One, Kit, the President, and Eli, Vice President of Talent Partnerships. Kit and Eli sounds like a vaudeville duo. Please let us know if you are interested in proceeding as per the details given in the attachment. Any payment structure and amount will depend on the successful closing of the proposed acquisition and the execution of a new or amended podcast agreement to be entered into between you and the post-acquisition company. Basically, he's saying you're not going to get shit unless you are strong-armed into signing a deal with the people that I'm now trying to get to buy something if I have anything of value. And then there's the attachment here. Jim Cornette experience and drive through proposed deal terms. Live one and cast media assets acquisition. Adjustments to your current contract in the transition to live one affiliated post acquisition company. It says they would give us a term that would be a proposed two year deal ending June 1st, 2026. A two-year deal that will last three years <laughs> is what that is. These idiots. Uh, the split, there's no changes, so we would allegedly get the same split. But such other changes as Live One may reasonably request. Uh huh. And then here's the accounts payable estimated. We will get, based on the amount they claim that they currently owe us, which doesn't even include the amount they said they were going to pay us for the next two payments... They were going to pay us a third in cash. A third in cash over 24 months. And then a third converted to public stock over 24 months. So we would get, <laughs> allegedly, a third of the money that they're claiming here, not including the other money they owe us. And then a third of that money, we would have to wait for two years, I guess in the middle of our two-year, three-year term, whatever the fuck that is, to get that money. And then we would have to get stock that we would be forced to hold on to for two years in a bullshit company that no one wants the fucking stock of. And that we don't want to be involved with to begin with. Note, the above deal terms are for discussion purposes only and do not constitute an offer or a binding agreement by Cast Media, Live One, and or any of their respective representatives, agents, affiliates. No binding agreement shall exist until such time as the parties execute a definitive agreement with respect to the above deal terms, it goes on from here. So it's an offer without being an offer. <laughs> I told you what was going on and told you I was not very happy. <sighs> I felt that he had plenty of time to give us a heads up about this. Well, and plus, I'm, I'm a, cause, and by the way, if anybody's wondering, well, what does Cornette say to him? I've never talked to this guy yet for both of our fucking self-preservation. I don't fucking, because I'm way not as patient as you are. But I'm, I'm seeing these emails, and you are continually saying, no, no, we're not taking this deal. No, this is probably going to court. No, we're not going to work with Podcast One. No, and he keeps sending you emails yeah. like he, he doesn't even, he's not even reading them. He's all, it's going to be so wonderful. He's a sociopath. When we walk down the yellow brick road with Podcast One. He's a sociopath. None of this matters to him. He's looking for his end game, which is he's going to end up at Podcast One. He's trying to set himself up with a job because he can't sell his company for cash. And as we come to find out, are they not trying to set up some kind of publicly traded company that they can sell stock in and make something out of nothing? Well, let me continue with the emails because you'll okay, go ahead. Let's do that in their actual words so we can't get accused of making anything up. So I responded to Colin. Colin. 
The proposed deal terms attachment is disappointing and thoroughly unacceptable. We will not be engaging in any conversations with Live One unless Cast Media's outstanding balance to us is paid in cash. Also, your attachment reflects a certain amount as the balance. How was this number generated? <laughs> is that the number minus the amounts we were told to expect in June and July? Will those payments be going through as scheduled? We are not interested in any stock or payment deferrals. We expect CAST to fulfill its end of our financial agreement. In order for us to continue to advertise the existing sponsors on the schedule, we need immediate clarity on this. Please know. If CAST does not pay us exactly what we are owed, the listeners will regularly be informed and reminded about this issue, and we will make sure the sponsors and their agents know that we haven't been paid for their spots. By the way, Part B of that's already been done. We're doing Part A right now. Also, we will put a ticker on all future YouTube videos displaying the amount owed and who owes it. (laughs) (laughs) Now, that we're not going to do. That one I threw in just to make myself laugh. Also. Please let me know who it casts to speak to about preparations to move our shows to another distribution platform, as it appears that is now highly likely. Let me know if you want to get the lawyers involved. I just informed my corporate counsel of the contents of your email. And again, as I said, he acts like, wait a minute, I haven't even seen or heard these words that were coming out of your mouth. And he just writes back. Hi, Brian. Let's get on a call first thing next week to discuss. I'd like to highlight one thing. In the current economic climate, CAST, a small entity in podcasting, and so highly impacted by volatile times, has managed to navigate a path that offers the potential for all podcasters to receive the full value of their balance. Not only that, but with a fantastic first-class podcasting company and team in Podcast One to drive better results in the collaboration moving into the future. There is no collaboration. <laughs> he he has just said bullshit. We have there are no volatile times at the Jim Cornette podcasting business except the ones that are involving him. And he may be a small entity in podcasting, but we are not. He has navigated a path that offered the potential for all the shows on his network to get fucked. Because he can't run a fucking business without going bankrupt. And again, he's sending us this email, but attached to it, copied to it, are the two top executives allegedly of Podcast One. One guy's apparently being sued, because I saw that. And then a couple of the cast media executives, who again, good people that we had good relationships with. The issue was with him and the accounting department. But then in the same email you were quoting, the recent downturn in the digital advertising economy has placed every podcasting company in a vulnerable position. It's important to note that cast shareholders and investors who have invested millions of dollars and years, millions of years, really, millions of dollars and years of their lives into the company are receiving exclusively stock in this transaction. He has managed to hornswoggle somebody into putting money into this sinking ship, and now they're getting fucking paper for it. For further context, I recommend this article, and it's a Bloomberg article about podcast consolidation reaches smaller studios amid advertising downturn. It provides insight into the alternative, more likely paths that could have played out, which would have resulted in far less favorable outcomes. I look forward to our call. Please let me know a suitable time for you. I don't see how there could be a less favorable outcome than we're not getting our money. We're not getting our money. This is the first time you've heard from me since the NDA. I'm contacting you with these guys who I'm trying to get you to work with because that's all part of this deal. And he copied them on this email. Is one of them the, this, this, uh, this Rob Ellen fellow oh, that, no, that sent me an email? That guy comes in in a little bit. What a, okay. what a story that guy is. Holy shit, I, I'm going to read those. So I responded to Colin. Colin doesn't sound like much reason for a call. Sounds like you've decided to fuck us on our money. You had plenty of time in the last several months to give us a heads up that you couldn't fulfill your obligations, and instead this. Jim will have plenty to say about this on future shows. And, and, and by the way, also, I know that there's a lot of people 
uh, that he's fucked around on money. Also, their shows, they may not be listeners, but if you know somebody that does a podcast, oh yeah, get in touch. That uh, yeah, or send this clip to him or whatever, because they're gonna love to hear this because there's other people that he's really put in the fucking lurch. Go ahead. Again, we expect full payment of what is owed to be in cash, as it has always been. We reject any offer of stock or deferred payment. Stock, built on an unsustainable business model, has no value to us, and certainly is not equal to cash. Unless we hear a plan for a complete repayment in cash, we will immediately cease all cast advertising on the programs, including this weekend's episodes. We are not under contract, and we have no intention of moving to Podcast One or any of their subsidiaries. As I asked earlier, Please direct me to who it cast I'll be able to work with to facilitate the feeds being transferred to a new home. Also, as I asked earlier, please let me know if the next two scheduled payments will be processed as expected. Would you like to read his response? Well, tell me, you, tell me after all this if you could hear his response and not be like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? I know you're upset, and clearly my efforts are not going to change that. The reason I didn't reach out two months ago is because it looked like with everything happening in the industry, there was a high likelihood you were not going to be able to get anything and that Cast was going to have to close down as other similar podcast companies have recently. In the, We don't care about your podcast company. You stole our advertising money. In this scenario, you would have lost the entire balance as has happened at other companies. So I went to work on finding a solution, and this is that solution. I didn't want to discuss something that I wasn't confident could happen, so I put the deal together first and came to you immediately when it was ready. So he he put a deal together that he knew would be completely unacceptable and then presented it to us rather than saying, hey, I'm in trouble. Can you guys work with me in any way, shape, or form? And he finishes, I'm still imploring you to do the right thing for you and your client. <laughs> the right that thing That is apparently and me. <laughs> We've been doing these shows for five years. This guy's been selling advertising, never listened to one of them. Uh, which is, anyway, uh, yeah. Do so the right thing. I'm do the right thing. I'm imploring you to do the right thing and take this shitty fucking deal <laughs> to save my ass. <laughs> so you wrote back. Colin, again, please direct me to who it cast I will be able to work with to facilitate the feeds being transferred to a new home. Ask twice in previous emails, and you've not answered. A reminder, we own the show, not cast. Again, please let me know if the next two scheduled payments, June and July, will be processed as expected and promised. Ask twice in previous emails, and you've not answered. We will not be moving to Podcast One or one of their affiliates. You need Podcast One. We don't. We are absolutely going to sue Cast and you personally in at least three states if we do not receive what we are owed. Please direct me to whom your legal counsel is so I can pass along that info to my legal team. All advertising has been halted. We will be informing sponsors and agents on Tuesday that Cast has decided to keep our money for themselves. Also, I'm going to instruct my team to immediately begin production on a new podcast called Does Colin Thompson Owe You Money? I will budget half of what you owe us to advertise it all over Los Angeles. I bet there are others with something to say, and I'll find them. How are those billboards working out? Well, by the way, I was asked not to do this just yet because of the pending <laughs> litigation, but... This is going to fucking happen. Yeah, because gonna... we hadn't actually got to the pending litigation yet. Yeah. Go ahead. There's more, folks, including a, 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 an executive that apparently does not have a grasp on the English language, but go ahead. We plan to make sure all the listeners know that Colin Thompson of Cast Media decided to rip us off and is a con artist. Over and over again, we will remind everyone, Colin Thompson of Cast Media decided to rip us off and is a con artist. Good luck. And then I responded quickly after that. One more thing, because I was fired up by this. <laughs> One more thing. You wrote, the reason I didn't reach out two months ago is because it looked like with everything happening in the industry, there was a likelihood you weren't going to be able to get anything and that cast was going to have to close down, as other similar companies have. For the record, 
I started raising issues in email about our money in late 2022, not two months ago. You had nothing but time to tell us there were problems. You had plenty of opportunities to inform us that we would not be paid for the ads we were doing. You decided to obfuscate and have us continue to do ads we weren't going to be paid for. Then you email us that we will only be paid if we sign a bad deal with a company that has a horrible reputation and that that payment would consist of garbage stock. You have attempted to force us into a bad deal in order to collect our money. This will not stand. You have until May 31st to produce a full accounting and issue a complete payment for monies owed. My legal team is now looking into anything we could possibly do to kill your planned sale of cast unless we are paid what we are owed. Stronger words to follow. But you yelled those out of your window. Well, this is what panicked them the most was the threat of killing the deal. Because this triggered a whole nother round of the emails. Yes, because now we we're starting to find out what the, the, there is a plot behind all of this. So following up on my last email from Colin, Hey Brian, to answer your question, as you referenced above, Cast and Jim have an agreed payment plan in place, to which both parties agreed, and Cast has adhered. Cast intends to continue to make these payments you referenced on schedule. Note, editor's note, we ain't got one goddamn penny since he wrote this email. No, nothing. So that was Conti a lie. Yeah. Accordingly, Cast has continued to perform according to its side of the agreement. <laughs> <laughs> There's no agreement. Both parties are in continuous and unbroken performance under the terms and conditions stipulated in the contract and amended and agreed by email, thereby it is presumed to be in full force and effect. We expect Jim's continued performance under the contract, including responsibility and confidentiality, as well as continued advertising integration. Yes, and even though our written contract, for reasons that we mentioned earlier, has been expired with this guy for several years now, we do have as Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. We have had an implied contract because both parties were operating, continuing to operate under the terms that had been agreed upon until he breached his first. Breached it multiple times. He's an idiot. Other podcasters who have balanced as a cast as you do view this transaction as a tremendous opportunity. <laughs> and are very focused on helping us close in order to, one, be paid the full value of their balance with cast, two, continue forward with the fantastic team and infrastructure of the combined entities of cast and podcast one. Once again, the only entity we cared about was their sales team. They're all gone. And three, become partners pre-IPO Bingo! In the largest combined independent force in podcasting, with tremendous upside, and this is my favorite part, and the opportunity to double up the revenue of the podcast by driving potential stock value appreciation over time with ownership in the network at which the podcast is hosted and monetized. <laughs> Fuck you. That is the most incredible bullshit sales pitch I've ever heard. Become partners pre-IPO. So before the stock is public, we'll have a piece of it and be part of the largest independent force in podcasting. We already are the largest independent force in podcasting. Tremendous upside and the ability to double up the revenue by driving stock value appreciation over time with the ownership and the net. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, but I like the, the next paragraph. It must be clearly understood that any attempt to interfere with this transaction, either directly or indirectly, would cause significant damage to Podcast One, Cast, and a number of other parties who are relying on the successful conclusion of this transaction to ensure their rightful payments. It, again, everybody's begging and pleading us to do this so they can get some of the money that we owe them. And he says the ensuing damages, if you were to cause this deal to unravel, could be substantial, potentially falling within the region of $10 million to $20 million. So where's it my money? Impact, it would impact a broad spectrum of parties. Well, there's much less than that that we need. 
So we were wondering, well, if it's that big of a deal, why don't you just give us our money to just go away and shut up? But anyway, he says, consider this as a serious caution. Any attempt to disrupt or compromise this transaction would lead to decisive legal actions. We strongly urge you to bear in mind the significant repercussions that your actions may bring about. And you just know that I love a challenge. Anyway, he highly recommended that we get on a call with Podcast One and get to know them. No. They're fantastic operators. After all of that, again, I'm here to help. I only want good things as we move <laughs> forward. I highly recommend you get on a call with Podcast One, fantastic operators, and they will ensure the impressive trajectory of increasing advertising revenue over time that Cast has been responsible for on your show continues on the future shows, which they did by firing the entire sales team. Although yeah. Mike Jensen, I think, resigned on his own, but they fired everyone else. But now he also, at the same point, he copied on this email Cast's retained bankruptcy counsel and the CEO of Live One, a guy named Robert Ellen. And one would think that he wouldn't, if, if he's talking to somebody who's basically told them, look, if you don't pay us our money that you owe us, we're going to raise enough of a stink. It'll screw your goddamn scam up your plot in here. One would think that he wouldn't copy on the email the, the fucking head of the company that he's trying to get bought by unless this guy's in on it too. So my response to this, and now I'm just, now I'm pissed off. So I wrote, no. <laughs> We will not be working with Podcast One or any of their subsidiaries. Again, you need Podcast One. We don't. We have no interest in their garbage stock, and there is nothing they have to offer us. As it seems you keep missing this point, I will put it in bold. We will not be working with Podcast One or any of their subsidiaries. It is very dark and bold. A reminder. Despite your ridiculous statements in the previous email, we are long out of contract and free to do as we wish with our programs. Even if we were under contract, Cass would have been in violation numerous times. All advertising has been halted, and we are alerting all advertisers as to what you are up to. We are not bound to any confidentiality agreement, which you already know. Our relationship with Cast is over. We are free agents. We are not concerned with what other cast podcasts are doing, although after we start reaching out to them, maybe they will see things differently. I genuinely feel awful for those shows and any cast staff that will be told they have to take worthless stock for payment. You can stick the legal threats up your vagina. You have attempted to swindle us, and we will let everyone know. You had us continue to advertise the sponsors for months, even though you had no intention of paying us what we are owed. You are a crook, plain and simple. Consider this as a serious caution. We are going to make sure to endlessly let all the listeners know, with great detail, that Colin Thompson of Podcast One stole our money because he doesn't know how to run a business. Also note, my team is working tonight on the artwork for the new Does Colin Thompson Owe You Money podcast, which I've scheduled for a mid-June launch. We've been asked to hold back, but goddamn, I'm the first guest. We've been asked to hold back while this pending litigation situation yes. is happening here. With the strength of our audience and how upset everyone will be about someone trying to rip us off, I'm confident we will get it to the top of the charts in a couple of genres. Once again, you have until May 31st to produce a full accounting and provide payment for the outstanding balance. I'm copying Jim Cornette and Stephen Pinu, our counsel on this email. I'll also be speaking with my friends at the SEC about all this. What did the Southeastern Conference have to say? Well, as soon as I brought up the Security and Exchange Commission, that's when they really got scared, and that's when this Rob Ellen goof thought he was going to somehow circle around me and go to you directly. And he won you over, didn't he? He convinced you that we should go to Podcast One. Well, here's what he said. Somehow, out of the blue, again, and also he copied... Uh, somebody named Sasha Obloviatsky? That's got a, a, a bloviator? That's got to be some kind of made-up shit. But anyway, he says, Jim, I opened the email because I don't know who this is from. Jim, we do not own cast media, 
and have never met or done any business with your team. Then I found out it's Rob Robert Ellen, who is the CEO of Live One. He said, truly, and by the way, I'm going to read this the way it's written. Truly shocked by these crazy messages from your team about Podcast One. The SEC does not take kindly to these kinds of threats. I'm a huge WWE fan and partner with them for 40 years and really enjoy your podcast. You've been a fan of mine for many years. Live One is 100 mil plus public company and have no zero dog in this fight today. We have only signed an non-binding LOI to acquire certain assets of cast media. No guarantee any deal goes forward. I'm available anytime if you want to speak directly. Without, I would highly recommend your team does not bring Live One's Podcast One into this fight. Thank you, Rob Ellen, CEO, Live One, parentheses, LVO. His cell number is 1310. I guess Jace will have to take that out. We'll leave it in. We'll see. see what but Steven anyway, says. so, you know, I'm like Stephen P. New. Well, I, I got his motto. Hold on. Do you know what you, can I reveal what you sent to me after this guy contacted you? Well, no, wait a minute. Hold on. That's after I sent him. <laughs> I got to read my email to him and then his re- response to me. And then. No, it was before was the, that. It was before no, that. No, it wasn't. I'm looking at it right here on the paper I got. Hold on. I'm fucking this dog. You just hold its head. Because I figure, okay, as I said, I got Stephen P. New motto. I will give any man one chance to do the right thing, and then I will fuck him up. So I wrote to this guy, hi, Rob, you are correct. You nor your company have never met or done business with Brian Last and myself, and we're not even the ones who included you in any email exchanges. That was Colin Thompson at Cast Media, who owes us a six-figure sum. And he's been tossing your company's name around for weeks as an entity that would help us get paid. So we'll take you out of the emails if you like, but I thought you might want to know how Colin has been representing you. And then I, I gave him the history in one paragraph. They've been acting as our agency selling advertising. Blah, blah, blah. And it all of a sudden... We ain't getting our money, and it was change of accounts, and it was problems with the industry. We asked for accounting, blah, blah, blah. And then I said he's repeatedly tried to push us to signing with your company, who we have yet to have any contact with, as the way to get our money. And he's offered to pay us part of it, part over two years, and part of some kind of stock that we don't want. We're not going to be strong-armed into signing any kind of contract for a two-year term to get money that we're owed now for services we've already performed. Nor is Colin doing your company any favors being grouped with him if he's dealing with any other individuals he owes money to in this manner. So in my opinion, Colin's messages are the crazy ones and Brian's are reasonable reactions. All we want is paid and we'll be done and on our way. So I offered him, I said, if you want specific details or more information about this, you can contact Brian Last or our attorney, Stephen P. New. And I highly recommend you encourage Colin to just get right with us so we can go away and everybody can continue with their lives because I'm 62 years old, pissed off, and don't care what I say about anybody in public. So if you don't want to be brought in a fight, let's not have one. Oh, and P.S., I personally don't know anybody at the SEC, so if you do and they don't take kindly to these kind of threats, tell them Jim Cornette doesn't give a shit, but I'm glad you enjoy our podcast. That's what I told Rob. And what Rob... See, no, you see, you, you responded to me already, because the second one is here. The first one was, before you responded to him, you said it to me, you said, so who is this fucking guy? Oh, okay, all right. With this in caps, who is yeah, this who fucking guy? Who is this fucking guy? guy? <laughs> and he responds to the email that I just sent him. Happy to try and help. I ask Colin for to provide STMTS, as in statements, I guess. Assuming you decide worth call with Podcast One team, Kit, Eli, Sue, all whiling with one L to join call. Fax, THX, Rob. And I wrote to you, forwarding that email, 
is this fucking guy on drugs? That was the second email. <laughs> and that was, and that's, uh, that's so, yeah. So anyway, obviously then the, the next, uh, I think the next contact was from Steven. Well, no, you heard from Rob one more time. Did I? Spoke to Colin, asked for full accounting. My gut tell me you, my gut tell me worth you meeting podcast one team without Colin will be in bankruptcy. Yeah, and I'm just I'm uh, I'm playing the world's smallest violin right now for poor Colin. It's bankrupted himself again. Every single thing since we started saying we're not going to deal with Podcast One from Colin Thompson of Cast Media, as well as the CEO allegedly of Podcast One or the parent company, whatever it may be, Live One. Everything's a push. You have to do this. You have to talk to our team. There will be no money unless you do this. <laughs> the deal will unravel unless you do this. Get the fuck all of you. Seriously. Remember what I said to you? I said to you, I said 10 to $20 million. If we can cost them that much, they ought to just give us our fucking paltry mid six figures and we'll go away. So yeah, then we got Steven involved and he's now dealing with their attorney. And then as soon as he contacts their attorney and has the, the first call, which weasel or alleged weasel was it that then contacted you to try to go around Steven? Oh yeah. After Steven had the call with them, the attorney, uh, let me get this guy's name. Hold on. Yeah, make sure we know his name for the State Bar Association, because what happened was once that this attorney had been contacted by our counsel and informed that we were pursuing the issue legally and that he was the representation, it is goddamn, it's not according to Hoyle for that attorney to then contact the opposition client directly. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah, so then I get an email from this guy. His name is Neil Sackler from Sackler Entertainment Law PC. You guys know what entertainment law means. He knows how to read a contract and maybe negotiate. That's it. Dear Brian, I am outside counsel for Cast Media and am writing you concerning the settlement of financial obligations in connection with, in quotes, Jim Cornette. <laughs> like canned peas. I'm a product now. Cast has entered into a letter of intent for the purchase of its assets by Live One. A key condition to closing of the transaction is the settlement of your balance. In the event that Cast is unable to close the Live One asset sale, it will likely declare bankruptcy under Section 7 or Subchapter 5 of Section 11 of the Bankruptcy Code. Cast anticipates presenting a settlement offer within the next one to two weeks. I'll provide you with the necessary details as soon as they become available. Thank you for understanding and cooperation. Sincerely, Neil Sackler, which I immediately forwarded to you and Steven. <laughs> who the fuck and, is this and, guy trying to go around everyone? And again, Brian, have you seen the information? That was uh, June... June 14th. Ju June 14th. Uh, yeah, because... Stephen then, and I, I got to read this one because Stephen wrote back to Mr. Sack, Sacker there. Sacker, not Sackler. You're thinking of the... Oh, it is Sacker. Neil yeah, Sacker. You're, you're thinking of the other criminal elements, the Sacklers. But anyway, this Neil Sacker character that wrote to you after being introduced to Stephen P. New, Stephen P. New wrote back to him, Neil, we spoke last week about cast media. As you are aware, Jim Cornette and Arcadian Vanguard are represented by counsel. It is unethical, even in California, to contact parties whom you know to be represented by counsel. Please do not do so again. Please direct all correspondence concerning this matter to my attention, and I will afford you the same courtesy. Thank you. And, and no so offer. Again, yeah. we're going to get an offer within two weeks. It's now over a month. No offer. From what? I'll just say this. I will not be surprised if this Neil Sackler outside counsel, not the bankruptcy attorney that was attached to the earlier email, I will be surprised if this guy's not mixed up in this. Mixed up in terms of helping Colin. Who knows? Who do, knows? Whatever, do whatever he's trying to pull. Hey, listen. Millions of dollars, he said, from investors have been lost. How did he find these investors? I mean, there's a lot of questions we're going to be asking. There's a lot of things that are going to become apparent in Discovery. The relationship and the conversations between Rob Ellen and Colin Thompson, whether or not paying us was a strategy to try to leverage us 
into a deal, which fell apart. I mean, I got to be honest with you. The money they owe us, it's a good amount of money. This story to me is more than worth it. <laughs> like, I yeah. love the fact that I got to tell this guy in front of his new bosses to stick his legal threats up his vagina. That makes well, it all worth it to me. Because here's the thing, and we mentioned this, but there is obviously legitimacy to it. There's a lot of people that this guy has screwed around that may have either taken their show off the air or uh, they're beholden to these people because they had contracts. They have to deal with people they don't want to deal with. They can't get their money. They can't get paid. We are pretty uh, convinced and assured that there are people that he owes money, more money to than us. And that's a consider. And when you add all of this up, he's fucked a bunch of people around. Not only that, but as, as we mentioned, his own employees that were blindsided by this in a lot of cases and were either immediately let go. They can't find the guy now. Like I said, we've hired a couple of them. But th they can't find the guy now. He's not responding to anybody. He's hiding out. So if this deal is still a deal or a thing, he's not doing himself any favors. And we're going to make sure that we are here to, on behalf of all those shows that either don't have the platform or the people that were unfortunately contractually beholden to this clown somehow are going to be strong-armed into this fake stock scam this Ponzi scheme, whatever's going on here, we're going to let people know, don't trust Colin Thompson of Cast Media and apparently the rest of these weasels that are trying to pull something over on everybody and in conjunction with him. And we don't need Podcast One. We got one podcast right over here, the big one. And by the way, this week, now that we were back on full coverage, According to the Apple charts, did we not, are we the Beatles? Isn't that fitting that it's the Apple charts and we're the Beatles because we had five <laughs> of the top seven shows? That's right. For episodes, when they actually count the episodes and how many downloads they get, even though we had a bunch of old shows that we put up, five of the top seven. And of course, once the shows went back on the feed, we took one and two back the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And Colin Thompson couldn't make enough money to stay afloat and keep his fucking yap above water off a show like you that know, see it's a bigger problem if we could talk about it real quick you have a bunch of people that try to take advantage of a situation and come up with a business plan and it falls apart podcasting's a big deal everyone has one everyone does it you know every now and then they have the stat of how many podcasts there are every week and it's astounding when you really look at it because there's no audience for a good amount of them but people do it the idea of building a business around it, it has to be scaled. It has to make sense. But there are too many people whose business strategy is try to make as much as we can and then pump it into building us up and making it look like more is happening than it is. In a Every, everybody wants to go Hollywood. Again, fake it till you make it is the story of Colin Thompson. And I believe in a perfect world, his endgame was to be able to sell cast media and its intellectual property and its assets and whatever contracts they had to a podcast one or any third party and get a big cash payout for him, set him up with a job, and hopefully other people would get money too. But it's about him. Didn't work out that way because Colin Thompson doesn't know how to run a business. Colin Thompson doesn't know how to run a podcasting business, and Colin Thompson is thoroughly uncreative. So now Colin Thompson sets up this deal where... He's got no more money. He's misappropriated shows money into other, who knows what? I mean, we presume it was put into other productions. Maybe he needed special narrators or special music or who knows what. If you need all that stuff, you're not doing it right. Or maybe it went somewhere else. We will find out. We will follow the money. We will fucking drag every account that he's ever had and to do a deposition. So we will find out. But Colin's plan didn't work because he couldn't run a business. So instead, the best he could do, and we'll find out how long he was talking to Rob Ellen a Podcast One or Live One, the best he could do was a deal with Live One where they're going to get certain assets of cast media for pure stock, no cash. And then they're going to try to spin that off into a new stock. I believe this company, Live One, has previously spun off other parts of its company into 
thing. I or maybe the live event company or something. Oh, that they're they're pre-spun. There's a lot of spinning. It's a lot of spinning. You don't always want hedge fund people running your business, especially when they have a certain mindset. And podcast one is a horrible reputation industry wide. Google them. Just Google podcast one lawsuit or Rob Ellen deposition. <laughs> All of these things. They're getting sued by various people. They have a reputation for not paying. Wrestling people were hip to this many years ago in like 2016, 17. Remember, they got busted. There were certain shows that did it. Some wrestling fans know who at, were out there doing fake numbers. But there was a network. Podcast One got in trouble for faking numbers several years back, I believe. I'll double check. If it's wrong, it won't be in this. So we're not interested in doing business with them. And the deal he structures is one that helps him. He was going to get set up and come out on the other side with a job with Podcast One. And his team was going to be completely cut as they were. And the shows that he owed money to, he wouldn't owe them money anymore. Live One would owe them money, and it would be contingent upon this bullshit deal. And they would, they would come in with a suitcase full of worthless paper like they used to do in a Banana Republic and say, here, it is your payment. Yeah, no, fuck Podcast One, fuck Live One, fuck Colin Thompson, fuck anyone who conspired with him or helped him on any of this. This fucking weasel, this effeminate flake, owes us a lot of money. And he owes other people a lot of money. And I understand sociopaths can just let shit go right off their shoulders and not care. But this is going to follow But him there's around. always somebody that can remind them once they've forgotten. He can be daily reminded. That's right. He can be reminded. His wife's parents could be reminded. There's lots of people that are going to be reminded regularly about Colin, the effeminate flake, screwing us out of our money. But you know, the one mistake he made, you mentioned it and glossed over it a little while ago, the intellectual property. The problem was he wasn't intelligent enough to have any valuable property. Except us, and he fucked that up. Yeah. Well, again, there's a lot of, there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of people, there's a lot of people in podcasting trying to take advantage of a situation, not trying to do something with a view for the long term. And not really caring about quality, just caring to pump shit up. We've always been an outlier. We've always done our own thing. Luckily, we still, I'm, you know, I'm happy to say we now have a brand new sales team. That's a lot of our old sales team. And all the sponsors, uh, honestly, we want to thank them and their understanding while we had to extricate them out of being involved because none of them want to continue to be involved in this with this guy, but they wanted to come directly to us. And we said, hold on for a couple of weeks till we get this sales team in place so that everything's seamless. We got the feeds, et cetera. But everybody, all the sponsors contacted us and said, you know, we're sorry about this issue and we want to continue. And then for this Rob Ellen guy to jump <laughs> into this, I understand you guys are all scared because the stock is the end game here. Spinning podcast one or the podcast business into a brand new stock. That's the fucking end game here. But if you built that idea on the idea we were going to be there, you were a fucking idiot. I just, I don't understand why if the deal's worth all these millions of dollars, they couldn't have just given us our money to go away. Cause you just, cause there's no cash podcast one. It's a stock deal. They're not even buying it for any cash. I'd, I'd, I'd cash in an IRA or something if I were them, if I was going to scam somebody else out of millions of dollars and there's only one stumbling block, these loudmouths that want their fucking money don't like to get fucked around. And right, if you are a show, it. an employee, a former employee, a accountant, anyone with anything to say or... You have information, get in touch. Corny drive through at gmail.com or Brian at ArcadianVanguard.com. Let us hear what you have to say. We'll be more than happy to do the airing of the grievances early this year before Festivus. That's right. There'll be a lot of airing of the grievances about Colin Thompson of Cast Media going forward. And that name again was C O L I N T H O M S O N, the bankrupt, reviled, and in hiding head of cast k-a-s-t media he called me a few months back hadn't heard from him in forever you know and i'm dealing with a sales team and a sales team are good people and i'm dealing with the accounting department and the accounting department's always a mess 
But again, you don't know if it's the people or because that department only reports directly to Colin if it's Colin telling them to fuck around because he's fucking around with the money. I hadn't heard from him in forever. Calls me up. It's like, hey, it's Colin. I'm like, hey, Colin, what's going on? Oh, everything's good. I just had a baby. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a- I hope he doesn't have stretch marks. It's lots of fun. Me and my wife, we, we have a baby now. I'm like, okay. Are you staying up at night? And then it was like a weird pause. Like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? <laughs> it's like, he's like a robot. There's like no human interaction or ability. And this guy's an idiot. And again, he's a sociopath. He screwed a lot of people. And this is going to come back to bite him in his ass. He may like that. I don't know. But this will do something painful to his ass. I'll say that. That's right. Hey, Jim, some uh, funny, a funny update here. A funny update? A funny update. It appears some of the Cult of Cornet members have found a video on YouTube entitled Colin Thompson on how to make money with your podcast. Oh! <laughs> of all the titles for a video by oh. this guy. <laughs> how to make money with podcasts. Take no, someone else's no. money and run. I was about to say, <laughs> this video should be titled how to make money with somebody else's podcast. <laughs> do we have any do we have any video or any audio from that? Uh hold on. Give me a chance. I'll pull it up. Hold on. How does that start? How does he commence that sales pitch to people? Send me a check and I'll I'll make money with your podcast. That's about the only way he'd know how to do it. All right, it's taking a second to load here. I wasn't prepared for this. Hold on. Well, you you need to be prepared for my load every time, just every second of the day. Well, I'm not behind the dumpster right now, sir, but hold on. Here we go. Let's hear some audio. If you have an audience of 10,000 and 100 pay $8 a month, you're making $800 a month off of that. And that's probably a lot more than you would be generating off of affiliates, maybe even merch. Well, there's a, a teaser <laughs> of some of the wit and wisdom. Yeah. If there are 17,000 people in Wartburg, Tennessee, and each one of them was to give you 50 cents lunch money every day, you'd make $74,000 a week. But the problem is they ain't going to do that. And I don't know how to make them. Because I'm Colin Thompson and I owe everybody money. And I <laughs> file bankruptcy after collecting other people's money instead of giving it to them. That's what they should be saying over there. Maybe you're being a bit harsh. Maybe there's a, oh, here are the topics. The topics include monetization, advertising revenue, joining a network, podcasting as a medium. Who is the podcast listener? Who is the podcast audience? <laughs> How Colin got interested in podcasts. Who is the jailer with the keys to my cell? Pitching your podcast. Are they hedging their bets? That's an interesting topic there. Mm. Who are the listeners? Uh, how much money can a podcast make? Monetizing an audience, advertising, no gatekeepers, deal structure, and how to get paid. Maybe we should watch that part. Let's see, how to get paid. It varies from case to case. It's why, you know, <laughs> we and other people have a full sales team because there's so many different equations to deal with. Sometimes it's a relationship with an agency that specializes in a specific kind of deal with their brands where the brand goes to them saying, Hey, we, we are willing to pay $5 per, you know, sign up and the, and then I keep that money and I, <laughs> and I go to Acapulco. <laughs> oh man, this idiot. Well, more to come from this. We'll go through various things and uh, play some audio examples in the future. So you can hear the likes of what we're dealing with, but uh, this is your show. It's your show. No, you can't do that right now like that. That's unfair. <laughs> That's really unfair. Well, you know, there is somebody we've been talking about in the news lately that ain't going to get away with it. Well, that's right. And of course, you're speaking about Colin Thompson of Cast Media, who owes us and many, many other shows, and it's turning into a bigger story than I thought, a lot of money since we last, well, I guess we should do an update here. Well, yeah, and, and, and by the way, the, the clip is right now. On, on our YouTube channel, if, you, if anybody wants to get refreshed on Colin Thompson of Cast Media, who thought he was going to get away unscathed with Owen, not only us a significant amount of money, but now we've come to find out all kinds of people significant amounts of money. 
And we've gotten some more clarity on not only the people that he's been ripping off, but also the way apparently that he's been spending people's money. Well, since the show came out, since the clip came out, we've heard from a lot of podcasters or podcast creators, producers, people who are in somewhat of a similar boat to us. Again, we were in a situation where he owes us a bunch of money, but we're free and clear. I don't know if we'll ever recoup any of it, but he doesn't own anything. We're good to go, do whatever we want. Not everyone's in that position. And also, sadly, there are people who are in a position where the money their podcast makes is literally the money that they use to feed their family. And it's the money they use to take care of sick relatives. And you feel awful when you start hearing from this, and we're all in the same boat. And it's a lot of big shows who have not spoken out yet. Hopefully they do. But we've kind of started something, and as I said, we've heard from other shows. There was a report in Pod News, which is the industry's leading daily free newsletter that everyone in the business gets in their email. Check it out. There's a free plug for you. And by the way, they read it also on their YouTube channel. And that that British announcer has such a wonder. Every time he said our names, we sounded nicer. Well, you and these accents, I believe he's from Australia. Well, we're, we're somewhere in that neck of the woods. Well, he did an article talking about the segment we did on the show. And again, that segment was legally cleared, backed up by documentation. And he mentioned in this article, he's also heard, there's been rumors going around about other things happening with Cass, but no one's been willing to speak out. Everyone's either afraid or still hoping against hope that they're going to get a little bit of their money back. And this is the most interesting thing in this article. He reached out to Colin Thompson, who... According to what we're hearing from people, because the only social media he apparently is active on is his Instagram, which is now private, and I probably have a good idea why, he's been living it up and having a good time with his wife in Las Vegas. Also, we understand maybe taking some international vacations, jetting around the world. We've heard from people who say Colin's been doing these vacations with his wife, and a lot of people don't think highly of her. They say she's never worked a day in her life. Uh, some people use wife in quotes, which is interesting. And the other thing we started hearing from people about is that apparently he's been bragging about a $2 million custom home, not a home he's purchasing, but apparently, allegedly, a custom built $2 million home. I hope he at least names a urinal after me in there, because some of that well, money. Uh, well, is but it, it maybe uh, actually. There may be a, a transition of the deed now that we know that it, unless he's conned the real estate people also, we don't know if he actually owns it. He may be living in it, but uh, if that's an asset that can be attached in litigation. Well, he's expecting that, so he's hoping to rely on the homestead protections from California, so we're going to have to see what we could do about that. But anyway, he was reached out to by the editor of Pod News, and here's what it says in this report. Colin Thompson, the CEO of Cast Media, emailed us a link to a guide on U.S. libel law. <laughs> he later denied that this email was meant as a threat, telling us, was curious myself. I didn't know. Looked it up. So he's now trying to threaten the journalists, this fucking sociopath weirdo. Hey. Now, don't you go around giving sociopathic weirdos bad names by comparing them to Colin the Weasel. The Weasel! He's not Pauly Shore now, he's Colin Thompson. So basically, now we have found out that there are people that have been doing programs that he owes more money to than he does us. We've also found out that there are other people that he owes less money then he owes us, but these are people that are using it to feed their families. As you said, one, there's one person, as you mentioned, with, that we've heard of so far, could be more, with family members with medical issues. And they're either tied contractually, their podcast has been partially owned, or they're in some way not only still trying to see if they can get any of their money, but their their programs are being screwed up with this. All because of this guy and the fact that he collected this money and then never gave it to where it was supposed to go. He put it back in his losing business. 
the other interesting thing as we are recording, and I don't know where this is coming from as of this point, I'll be honest. We've heard from a lot of people, but no one has said that they're behind this. A press release went out yesterday. Talent and managers speak out against Cast Media's acquisition by Live One, highlighting unpaid dues and exploitative practices. Frustrated talent and their managers have joined forces to shed light on the controversial acquisition of Cast Media by Live One, parent company of Podcast One. This collaboration aims to bring attention to the ongoing issues surrounding unpaid talent and exploitative practices within Cast Media. Colin Thompson, the CEO and owner of Cast Media, has come under scrutiny for his failure to compensate the majority of talent, with some individuals reporting non-payment dating back to 2021. <sighs> the talent, who have dedicated their time and efforts to producing quality content, have been left without the compensation they rightfully deserve. Jim Cornette spoke about his experience on a recent podcast. Colin Thompson owes over $5 million to talent. Ooh. Now, that's the first time we had heard that. In addition to the non-payment allegations, Cast Media faces multiple lawsuits filed by talent managers and former employees. These legal actions highlight further concerns, such as the denial of overtime pay and the denial of basic employment benefits like lunch breaks. <laughs> it is deeply troubling to witness an environment where employees' rights and well-being are disregarded. And again, just like I said before, that's the first time we had heard that. He doesn't let them have lunch breaks? He's cracking the whip over there. I'm sure he's not paying them well, so they don't get paid well and they don't get lunch breaks? Sounds like a great boss. I continue. Live One, the company acquiring, uh, acquiring by Cast Media, whoever wrote this wrote this wrong, the company acquiring Cast Media has contributed to the distressing situation by offering unfavorable contract terms to talent. With a revenue split of 60-40, <laughs> talent finds themselves on the receiving end of an unfair deal compared oh. to other industry standards. Oh. Furthermore, the lack of production support provided by Live One adds to the disservice faced by talent, putting them at a significant disadvantage within the industry. We rejected any conversation with them. We yeah, never we even got to that point. Yeah, we, we never even got an offer to begin with because we, we held up the finger before that. But now they're trying to 60-40, hmm? Hmm? 60-40. Can you, if, if anyone in podcasting has a 60-40 deal, get out of it. Sue, do whatever you got to do. You're getting screwed. The compensation practices exhibited by Cast Media and Live One are far from satisfactory. <laughs> Rather than fulfilling their financial obligations to talent, the companies offer only a minimal upfront payment accompanied by an equal amount dispersed over a two-year period. The remaining owed compensation is unjustly issued in the form of stock options in a newly formed company involving Colin Thompson <laughs> and, and Live that's, One. And that's the offer that we got that we said, are you out of your fucking mind? Once again, stock options in a newly formed company involving Colin Thompson and Live One. Maybe. This approach, <laughs> this approach not only disregards talent's rightful earnings, but also leaves them feeling coerced and undervalued. One anonymous talent shared their experience, and by the way, for the record, this is not Jim or I, stating, it's been frustrating as we see Colin not paying anyone, and at the same time, he is posting photos on social media about his custom multi-million dollar home he's built in Calabasas or lavish vacations in other countries. Wasn't there a famous leaping frog from there? No, you're thinking of the Kardashians. Uh -oh. It seems like he's been embezzling the ad revenue owed to us for personal gain and has no intent to really pay us what is owed. The talent and their managers and the gardeners you hear behind me <laughs> are united in their stance against these exploitative practices. They demand transparency, fair treatment, 
and proper compensation for their hard work and dedication. It is essential for Cast Media and Live One to acknowledge the severity of the situation and take immediate action to rectify the injustices inflicted upon talent. That is a press release. Went out yesterday. We don't know where it came from. So if you are behind that, reach out corny drive through at gmail.com or Brian at Arcadian Vanguard.com. Well, and see, here's the thing is that, as we mentioned, we got off apparently pretty easy compared to a lot of other people because we didn't specifically because we, you smelled something of this nature. We weren't under written contract. We were on an agreement where without a 60-40 split, we'd never agreed to that. Oh, my God, no. Good Can Lord. you imagine? 60-40? And, yeah, but this weasel had no ownership in our program, and we were able to extricate ourselves fairly quickly over the fucking 4th of July weekend and get everything where it's supposed to be. But a lot of people are not coming out by name yet because they're still in the middle of contracts and or issues where they need the money and they want to say fuck you, but they they need to see if they're going to get something or whatever the case. But we're also we've heard they're starting. They're still dangling the settlement offers to people from what we hear. But they're also starting to come up now that we've broken the log jam a little bit because. These are not wrestling podcasters, folks. Also, these are people doing podcasts in other lines of entertainment or hobbies or endeavors or whatever. They might be doing this, again, as Brian has said, for their... They put work into it to try to make this go, and this is their employment. And this guy is is fucking flittering about with his beard, I mean his wife, and... It, it, sp- squandering their money that they expected to feed their kids. And he, unfortunately, he happened to be dealing with the wrestling folks where it's not really a big deal to us if somebody says, I'll have my attorney call you and sue you and do this. And well, good, good. Join the fucking club. We've been hearing that for 40 fucking years, motherfucker. And it's actually legitimately happened before for people that I beat over the fucking head with a blunt instrument. And I'm still here. So you think you're going to sue me for running my fucking yap? Fuck you. And I come from the music industry. And I'm a fan of punk rock. I know how to fucking protect my content from fucking weasels trying to hone in on it. Oh, I thought you were going to say it. I know how to kick you down the street in the Bowery when you went to the punk rock thing. I thought you were going to physically intimidate him with you wearing a fucking leather jacket and a fucking no, well, no, I and never, a goddamn spikes. And a, I was never the come out dressing and, up like it. I dressed the way I did, and I would walk down the Bowery yeah. to the Bowery Ballroom or wherever and have a good time. No one really fucked with me. Uh, but you weren't dressed wearing the whole gimmick. No, I was dressed... You were undercover. Probably in a polo shirt. No, I wasn't dressed undercover. I was dressed like myself. Well, you went, you, you got to be, if you're wearing a polo shirt to a fucking punk rock club, you got to be undercover something. I have been to more punk rock clubs than you could even, like, you've never been to one. Have you ever been I've to never, one? No, I've never been to a, no. Well, wait a minute. Did they do them at Shotgun Saturday night? Did, was, were any of those punk no, rock clubs? No. All right. Well, then I've not been. But let's get... Let's get back to the Weasel Club, of which the sole member is Colin Thompson. That's right. So basically, we're going to keep everybody up to date on it, but we have apparently broken a a little news by actually coming out and saying his fucking guy's name and company and what he did and what he's trying to pull, and that is now encouraging other folks to... We've had a couple people say, hey, well, join your lawsuit. And we're taking that information down and for future use. Yeah, and if you're a content creator out there, even some of the wrestling content creators, even some of the people who don't like us, there's no reason to have people that have nothing to do with the creative energy of your show, have nothing to do with the production of your show. There's no reason for any of these people to have any piece of your content. You're the artist. You're creating the shit. These people should just do their job and find ways to help you and supplement what you're doing and compliment what you're doing, I guess I should say. But... There's a lot of weasels out there who try to take advantage of people that don't know what to look for. Well, and what we're also finding out, allegedly, allegedly, the alleged weasel, he was trying to... He's a weasel. I've dealt with him. He's a weasel. Okay, okay, but I'm just saying, for the purposes of the the courtroom transmission, uh, he was padding the numbers that... He was padding his company with our numbers. He was trying to keep us happy. 
so that he could claim our numbers, even though he had no ownership or any other involvement in our show. We, it was just an advertising deal between they and us. But that way he got credit for our numbers in this scheme that he was trying to pull off to build this thing up on paper and obviously not government issued paper, but on paper and then sell it to podcast one or live one or whoever the one is. We ain't the ones. No. How long was live one talking to Colin? How much of this was a strategy that was developed as a way to coerce talent, strong arm talent into these bad deals? We thought it was a bad deal just based off the compensation repayment. We didn't even know about 60, 40. Could you imagine if we had said, oh, you know what? We really need to recoup this, some of this money. I'm just so happy that we'll get some of this money that we work for. Let's have a talk with podcast one. Maybe they're good guys. And then they said, it'll be 60, 40. That would have been like trying to renegotiate the Midnight Express's contracts with Jim Hurd in 89. Really sad. Sad how many people this has affected. Again, reach out to us, cornydrythrough at gmail.com or brian at arcadianvanguard.com. Or Colin Thompson on Twitter. Oh, yeah. He hasn't shut that down yet. I believe it's Colin P. Thompson. Uh, no P in the Thompson, but I think P is his middle name or middle initial. Yeah, well, we took the P out of him earlier, but yeah. I might have to put some back in. Look for Colin Thompson on Twitter and look for the one with the goofy hairdo that looks like Kip Sabian's weak brother. And that's the one. Where were we going with all of this? I don't even know where we've been. Oh, I know where we're going. We're going to court. We have found out a bunch more information about our favorite weasel that owes everybody money, Colin Thompson of Cast Media, K-A-S-T, for those of you looking it up. We've told the story of how he ripped us off on advertising, about how he's ripped off tons of people we've spoken to over the last week or two, and we've also heard news reports of other indiscretions of his, and now we find out that his own employees were the ones who thought of suing him before we even did. How do you even write this shit? It has been a crazy week. I have had so much of my day every day filled up with phone calls and conversations with people. We said we weren't alone in this. We're not alone in this. And there's a lot of people owed a lot of money. There's a lot of people who didn't realize the severity of it because of how many people were involved. And this may end up being a lot bigger than people thought it was going to be. We spoke to numerous people this week, and I spoke to you earlier in the week, and I told you after I had spoken to three other creators, so three other people who have programming that was through cast media, along with us. And between our four parties, Cast Media owed a million dollars. And that was just us four. That's not even counting any of the gigantic shows. I mean, Logan Paul has been associated with Cast, at least in the past he was. Lots of other shows. Lots Sarah of other, Silverman. Sarah Silverman. Lots of other shows, lots of other names. We don't want to make any assumptions. But just from us four, it's a million dollars. So this may end up being quite significant. We Here's another thing. We haven't heard from anybody that's not mad at him. That he that's does right. it, That he has paid all of their money and they are happy with their business dealings. We have heard nothing from any of those people. We no. solicit you if you exist. Come try to defend the weasel, but we're not hearing it so far. No, it's it's people that are looking at different ways of getting restitution, but also... At this point, making sure this can't continue, I'm going to read in a little bit the original press release that Podcast One and Cast Media put out about their sale of certain assets. But as that press release we read on the drive through so perfectly put, and we don't even know who did it. Again, if you did that, please reach out to us. I'd love to know who put that out. We're all being, and again, we're out, but we were all being told that the money that you earned is not coming to you. The only chance you have of recouping any of it is by signing a deal with Podcast One, at which point you'll get some of your money, and then the rest of it, including stock, will be over two years. Stock at a company that technically doesn't exist yet. It's pre-IPO. The, the company has not been spun off. There is no stock yet. And that company that you're being told you will have stock in, which would be the company that would represent the hosting of your show, 
will have Colin Thompson involved with it. It's yes, ins- the, it's insane. The, the, you're invited to work with the person that has screwed you out of money and derailed, in some cases, your podcast. And is you are contractually obligated to, in some cases, thankfully not us, but these people are, and they can't get out of it because they can't even find this guy because he won't talk to anybody. Well, no, now. that's not true. He'll talk to certain people, and you know we're, we've been hearing a lot of things. And I want to be careful what we say here, but. Not everyone can't find him, so I don't think we should say that because that's not accurate. Oh, he, 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 some people can find him, just not the people that really want to. We have not heard anything, and other parties who are waiting to hear something about settlements, we didn't expect it. Again, the lawyer said we were going to get it within two weeks, a month and a half ago, and we haven't had anything. But we haven't heard anything. Other people who are still waiting on it haven't heard anything. There are people who are trying to figure out a way to get into arbitration. Because some of the cast contracts, for anyone who's still under a cast contract, typically they, if not exclusively, had a clause saying that any dispute would go to arbitration. There are people trying to force it. There are people who just want to sue Colin. And at this point, the biggest contingent, the growing contingent, are people who are about to press charges and about to talk to the attorney general and about to talk to as many district attorneys as we can, because this is insane. This is insane, and again, the involvement of Live One for no good reason in any of this is puzzling and seems to be becoming a bigger and bigger story. And why they're not running away from this guy. The more they hear about the more people he owes money, the more people he has misrepresented things to, the more people that he has led down the primrose path, they will not separate themselves from this guy or this deal with his moribund organization and one has to question why that would be the case are they are they trying to take him under their wing and rehabilitate him from a life of crime you know there are a lot of people scared we spoke out and we heard from a ton of people thanking us and a ton of people with almost the exact same story we have not heard from anyone who's ready to speak out publicly yet we heard from people who are trying to take care of relatives with medical issues with the money that they are owed from this guy because they had put work into their programs to where that they could have that income and take care of these people. And now they're sitting around with their dicks in their hands because of this guy at his $2 million house in California and his vacations flying around the world. And the reason why, by the way, besides the fact that we just like to talk about people that we're not happy with, The reason why we keep bringing this up is because what you said, a lot of people are still contractually obligated and or just scared to talk, and we can, and it's already made podcasting industry news, not related to wrestling podcasting, but podcasting in general, and it's probably going to make some bigger news when we all eventually discover why that Live One slash Podcast One is so enamored of this guy and this deal that they're putting themselves in the middle of all of this. We still got to find that out. And that's going to make sense. So we're just trying to get ahead of all the news that's going to be made when this becomes a big thing that this shyster has created for himself in regular mainstream news is what we're doing. There are two big things here. One is, what did Colin do with all the money, and how much was there? At this point, I don't. based on everyone I've talked to, I haven't talked to anyone not owed money, and not owed a lot of money. So how long was this going on? The other thing, too, is, typically when people steal millions of dollars, they don't do it alone. Typically, there's someone involved. Typically, there's someone helping. Typically, there's someone advising. We will find out who that is. So I think. The Colin end of it and the misappropriation of all of these shows' money is a big deal that will probably become a criminal deal. And I think the second question is, why the hell did a publicly traded company think it was a good idea to get involved with this guy and then continue to stay with this guy when, Jesus Christ, is it apparent that there's a major problem here? And they try to intimidate anyone from saying anything. You can't say anything. We expect you to hold confidentiality about all of this stuff. Oh, the, the, remember the guy, the head, uh, what's his name? Oh, Rob? Rob, Rob Ellen. When he, when he emailed me, not even knowing who the fuck I was, and apparently he found out, but 
Say, well, and the SEC doesn't take kindly to threats. Well, the Southeastern Conference is going to come down on these some bitches one way or the other. He said the SEC doesn't take kindly to these threats. The threat was we're going to call the SEC and tell them what you're doing. Yeah. We have factual evidence to back up in your own emails. That was the threat. We're going to call the, the SEC yeah. about all this. Yeah. Let's take a step back. I know you want to talk about this class action lawsuit that we've now become privy to, and this is getting crazier and crazier. Let's go to the original press release about this purchase. May 23rd, 2023, 8.45 Eastern Time. This was put out. The source is Live One Incorporated. This is, I think, approximately, I got to check the emails, two weeks after I heard from Colin, Colin Thompson of Cast Media, who owes us a lot of money. Two weeks after I heard from him that this was what he was doing. He was selling his company and that because of the sale, he'll then have money to pay us back all that we're owed and then we can figure out things from there. But we'll be whole at that point. Here's the press release. Live One to acquire certain assets of cast media. And there's some bullet points here. Proposed deal expected to add $10 million plus in annual revenues Acquisition would bring in-house IP development and ownership to Live One and its subsidiaries and is expected to include more than 25 weekly podcasts and 33 million monthly downloads. Assets expected to include top cast media shows, some more news, Brandon Schaub's Fighter and the Kid, The Opportunist, Lost in Panama, Vigilante, and Was It Real? And top-tier host talent, Ellen Marsh, Rabia Chaudhry. I don't know who these people are. I'm sorry if I'm I've, I've, these names I've, wrong. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I've never heard any of this shit. Whitney Cummings. Okay. Peabody Award recipient Mariana Atencio. You may remember her from MSNBC. And Audrina Partridge. Live One Combined Podcast Network distribution would rise to over 340 episodes weekly and nearly 750 million verified downloads annually. Once again, they're putting out this press release for the market. They Saying have to. that they are acquiring certain assets of a company that owes everyone money and is going to go bankrupt by the owner's own words and admission unless this deal goes through. By the way, the owner's attorney wrote that to us, so we have yes. that in writing. Yes. It's basically, take this bad deal with Podcast One, or... He's going bankrupt, and you get nothing. That's the threat. They're awful happy about acquiring a company that's losing money hand over fist, leaking like a fucking sieve, aren't they? How does that work? Because they're not losing money. Cast media should be profitable. We just don't know where all the money went. That business, the business of selling advertising for podcasts, if you take yourself away from the production end of it, which they haven't, which is part of the reason why it's a badly run company, that end of it, should be a very lucrative business. I mean, I say that knowing numbers. It should be a very lucrative business. If a doctor's office is busy and they're billing nonstop and getting paid nonstop and they're losing money, maybe the doctor's taken off with the money. I used to work for doctors when I was a kid, when I was like 20 <laughs> years old, and I remember these billing problems. So there's that, but let's go to this press release. Well, what you're saying is, Live One shot a man while robbing his castle, but Colin Thompson took the money and ran. I don't know, but let's uh, go to this. Live One on NASDAQ is LVO. Announced today, it has entered into a letter of intent. And what is today, by the way? What's the date on that, just for people hearing it now? Uh, May 23rd, 2023. Okay. Live One announced today has entered into a letter of intent to acquire certain assets of the Los Angeles-based podcast network, development, and production company, Cast Media, in an all-stock deal. <clears throat> no cash. That's insane. Especially if you have to hold that stock for at least two years. That's crazy. If completed, the proposed acquisition is expected to increase annual consolidated revenue for Live One by over $10 million. Here's a quote from Colin Thompson, founder and CEO of Cast Media, an executive producer of Cast's owned narrative IP slate. Our goal is to entertain, inform, and inspire through our shows. And Live One has the infrastructure, reach, and operational excellence 
to take that mission to the next level. Live One's commitment to our premium original podcasts will allow us to expand IP development and production, oh, excuse me, and production to increase our original own content slate. We look forward to completing the deal and working shoulder to shoulder with the impressive team at Live One. Let me stop for a second. You're usually shoulder to shoulder with somebody when you're handcuffed to them. Let me just say something right there. That's the problem. I mean, there's a lot of problems here, but after all of this, we're being told, again, re what he's saying here, Live One's commitment to our premium program it will allow us, I'm staying on board, I'll still be in charge. The guy who fucked around with everyone's money will be in charge of this if anyone feels forced into taking this awful deal just to try to get some of your money. How is this not completely... Every time I describe any angle of it, it's just so fucking illegal. How is any of this possible? Well, here's a quote from Live One CEO and Chairman Robert Ellen. He's one I wanted to hear from. Live One has long admired Cast Media's roster of top-notch podcast programming, their host talent, and their development in IP. Through this collaboration with Colin and his team, we expect to deliver a slate of original programming with an eye towards second window TV. The letter of what? They, well, what? they want to take Collins' podcast. My, my TV doesn't have any windows in it. It doesn't even have a fucking door. They want to develop television programming for Collins' podcast <clears throat> content, it sounds He's like. got the perfect face for radio, though. The letter of intent with Cast Media is non-binding, and the contemplated acquisition is subject to execution of definitive documentation with Cast Media completion of due diligence, settlement of cast media's outstanding obligations, obtaining applicable approvals and consents, and other customary closing conditions. How much due diligence could that, do they need to do when you can Google this motherfucker and see what he's into? There could be no assurance. But you can Google them and see what they're into, though, too, can't you? That's right. There could be no assurance that the proposed acquisition will be completed and or within the anticipated timeline. And then it goes into some biographical information about both companies. Well, because that's the thing. If you Google Live One Podcast One, it doesn't all come up sunshine, lollipops, rainbows, and waterfalls, right? So maybe this is birds of feathers. You know what? I don't want to reveal it because someone who I used to work with at Sony Music got in touch with me, and they said, I heard who is involved in this whole thing. Welcome to Sleestown. They have a reputation for not paying anyone. AEG, Live Nation, et cetera, et cetera. So we're being told, well, let's take a step back and lay it out again. We're being told in order to get the large amount of money they owe us, we have to sign an agreement with Podcast One where we would not get all of our cash up front. We would get a third of it. And then a third... And it doesn't even specify cash in the original document. They said a third over two years. Loosely. It could be cash or whoever. And then a third in stock after 24 months. Couldn't do anything for two years. So it's not like, here's the value of what we owe you in stock. You could sell it tomorrow and get your money back. That's not what we're being offered. No, here's stock in a company that doesn't exist yet, but might exist if all goes through. And then <laughs> it'll be good in two years if the company's still around. Here's stock in a company that's being spun off by a company that gives everyone stock instead of cash for every deal they do. <laughs> no, thank you. So, uh, so no, you're, the, you. you're the big financial Wall Street high muckety muck grand poobah around here, Brian. Is there a way? I'm not saying they're doing it. I'm just saying, is there a way that the live one and podcast one people and Colin Thompson could all get together and make stock in this company that doesn't actually exist and then distribute it around and make some money themselves despite the fact that the stock may or may not be worth a tinker's damn, as Mama Cornette used to say? Is there a way they could make money off that just theoretically? Yes. High in the sky? Yeah, the investors can lose money and the people running companies can make money. That happens all the time, sure. Even, even if the shit they're doing is absolutely worthless. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of stock and worthless shit out there. Absolutely. Well, and, and that may or may not allegedly, theoretically, explain why that this company 
would continue to do business with a miscellaneous weasel that was trying to bring them a deal that would allow them to sell some fictitious stock and make some money somehow before anybody figured it out. And once again, a reminder, Rob Allen's involvement, the CEO of Live One, a publicly traded company, his involvement was to get copied on an email by Colin after his two top executives, I believe, in his podcast one division were already copied for the entire chain. He got copied by Colin. Then he wrote to you and said, we have no dog in this fight. We don't want to be involved. Don't get us involved. However, talk to my team. <laughs> But yes, just talk to us. Just every single time. We don't want any problem. Talk to my, my gut tells me, my gut tells me you should talk to my team. And in his second email, I had to ask you, I said, is this what is written by a person on experimental LSD nope. type medication? The exact words were, is this fucking guy on drugs? That was the oh, yeah. It could, <laughs> there were some English words sprinkled into the conversation, but anyway. But you brought up strong arm last time. That's, look, that's what it is. We're being strong arm. If we want to get any of the money that we earned that was paid for the work we did, we have to, we well, have to submit to, to, to be, these terms. It's insane. To be perfectly fair, we don't know whether even those ridiculous terms are still a thing because we've heard nothing since we referred their attorney to our attorney. We've heard nothing from these people at all, and we, and we, they only have to guess that that is their best offer because they haven't made another one. Probably because he doesn't have any money. Probably because they thought that this was all going to go by without anybody calling attention to them in public. And guess what? And they inflated the cast media numbers with our show, even though we were an independent show and they were simply selling our advertising for a straight commission split. They had no other ownership and or rights to our program, but they were inflating their numbers with our show to try to con this Rob Ellen guy that they were bigger than their fucking britches well, no, indicated. Don't assume they're trying to con Rob Ellen. That's an assumption we shouldn't make. Well, I, sh I should, we shouldn't make that because chances are the conner is in with the con E. We don't know. But my point is we shouldn't make any assumptions because there's a lot of moving parts and more and more voices coming at it on that topic. But our their numbers were being inflated by our numbers. We can say that regardless yes. of who the audience was. And while we do appreciate the fine comedic efforts of Whitney Cummings and Sarah Silverman and some of these other fine people that we're not familiar with, does anybody out there believe that anybody that we have just mentioned or any of their her heralded programs have the audience that ours does? I think not, and that's probably why we got at least more of our money for a longer period of time than most people did, because he wanted to keep us happy as best he could until he decided to shove us up the old Hershey Highway. And so now that, that we are not in any way affiliated with his bogus company, his numbers don't look so good anymore. So they need to go back and they need to update some of those press releases and draw some other figures out of the fucking pit of their ass. You know, another thing, Jim, is we've heard from, since the show dropped, the first uh, show that we did about this, we've heard from a lot of former employees of Cast Media. And we've heard everything from, thank you for saying this, to go get him to thank God someone's saying these things finally. I said it in that email I wrote. I'm sure there's other people with similar stories. I will find them. Turns out there's a whole lot more than we thought. We thought it was just the content creators being ripped off and their managers and their agents. Turns out it's not. Turns out there's a lot of employees, even ones who left, I guess, without much of a issue are still happy that someone is saying something about all this, which is very telling. And in the midst of hearing all of these things from a lot of people. And if you have anything to say, reach out. Brian at ArcadianVanguard.com or CornyDriveThrough at gmail.com. We became privy to a class action lawsuit against Cast Media and Colin Thompson. Yes, which predates him telling not only all the people he was dealing with, but his own employees that they were going to either be sold or go broke. His own employees have already entered into a class action lawsuit to sue this fucking guy. 
and this started when late last year. If if I'm, I'm I believe trying to find was, the date. I believe it was served in August, or the summons is from August of 2022. Can I read this list of charges? I've been waiting to do this. I believe so, but due to the nature of this and the people that may be involved, we want to be careful what we say so it doesn't endanger anything about what they're doing. What uh, what I am basically saying, this is what this suit, the class action lawsuit filed against Cast Media. I guess Colin Thompson, but Cast Media is an entity. No, Colin, it says in there is that Colin Ca Thompson named specifically. It says in there that Cast Media is an alter ego of Colin Thompson. Okay. <laughs> well, this is what a lot of people are saying. They are being charged in this class action lawsuit. Failed to provide required meal periods, failed to provide rest periods, failed to provide overtime wages, failed to provide or pay minimum wages, failed to pay accrued but unused vacation wages, failed to pay all wages due to discharged and quitting employees, failed to promptly pay wages due, failed to maintain required records, failed to furnish accurate itemized wage statements, and failed to reimburse necessary business expenses. Sounds like a wonderful place to work. And a wonderful guy at the helm, and this is what his own employees have filed against him in a court of law that predates him screwing everybody out of money that he was working with in the podcasting world. No, it predates him screwing us out of money. Don't make that assumption either. Ah, That's true. He was already screwing other people out of money. And we, and again, we actually don't know for sure because, you know, again, this isn't going to be over until we get the full accounting, until we really see what the what they build and what they received before we got ours. This isn't over until then. So I'm not making any assumptions about when getting fucked out of money started. <laughs> Cause I don't think that's a smart thing to do right now. But uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because we're, we're basically, we're the network news now because this is going to end up. I predict your boy, what's your boy's name? Farber over there on CNBC? Faber, not Farber. David well, Faber. I, predi I predict that Farber is going to be reporting on this on network news when, uh, when everybody from Colin Thompson to Cat, his alter ego cast media, Live One, Podcast One, and every other motherfucker named One gets hauled into goddamn court. We ought to put it on Judge Judy. She'd straighten it out. Don't give me a break. Anyway, that's the update on does Colin Thompson owe you money? And apparently the answer universally is fucking yes. Universally. And if anyone has anything to say, again, if he owes you money, get in touch. You know, we're doing our best to get everyone involved so that everyone can make sure that we're aware of what's going on. If you are owed money, get in touch. If you are a former cast employee, get in touch. If you are someone that independent of either of those things has been ripped off by Colin Thompson, get in touch. New podcast coming soon. And as well, we are trying to, as you mentioned, we're trying to spread the word with our, our pulpit here that we have because other people are not so blessed and fortunate to be able to reach a lot of people. And that's why a lot of these smaller folks were in the dark about whatever was going on with Colin as we were all starting to find out. 60-40. Can you imagine 60? I can't get past that still. 60-40. Holy shit. Hey, oh. 40 for you and 60 for them. It's that standard industry. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. We're assuming that it's 60 for the creator. Yeah. That's, that's a bad assumption. Oh. That's right. But uh, until then, hey, Jim, before we wrap things up, and uh, I want to tell everyone about our fine attorney in a moment, but a few quick things, because we've had a lot of questions coming in about Cast Media, Colin Thompson, Live One, Podcast One, and all of this. There are still things going on and other things to be revealed upcoming in the near future concerning our dealings with these people. There are a lot of things going on, a lot of things going on with us and these matters, a lot of things going on with outside parties and these matters, and you'll be hearing a lot more from us about that, but we've been receiving such feedback. We have heard from probably at least a dozen now former cast employees. I mean, everyone's a former cast employee at this point. <laughs> former cast employees talking about their experiences. To a person, every single one of them has a problem with Colin Thompson. Every single one of them thinks Colin did something wrong, either personally to them, usually costing them money, or just overall in general. So that's telling. Well, and, and we talked last week about the class action suit that he's 
on the receiving end of from other former employees accusing him of everything from paying late to not paying at all to conducting a basically a slave labor camp and violating every state workplace regulation that it is possible to violate. So he's getting sued there. We're on, on his ass. The pod news people chased him down here a week or two ago and wrote an article. There may be more to come there. Yeah, there may be some more articles to come. We'll see what happens there. And But we, we haven't actually been talking enough about the other part of this equation, the other alleged weasels that are trying to help him screw everybody out of their money, which we've also found evidence is upwards of $5 million at this point. We haven't been talking about the podcast one slash live one people as much as we should. No, we're going to talk about them briefly right now. Let me just say on Colin Thompson, again, if you have any information, get in touch with us, corny drive through at gmail.com or Brian at arcadianvanguard.com. We've heard from former employees, podcasts, obviously, people in St. Louis, people in Chicago, people who know Colin Thompson's family, people who have pointed out some of the crackpot shit his father has put on social media. So there'll be a lot more to come about Colin Thompson, maybe his relationship with his church, whole bunch of things coming about Colin, because Colin took our money. Live One, for a reason that we can't fully understand, other than they were trying to get all the cast assets they wanted on the cheap, decided to dive into the middle of this fray. Colin Thompson and Cast Media owed us money. Colin Thompson incorporated Live in these emails by copying their top executives. Colin Thompson later copied the Live One top executive, Rob Ellen, to the emails. The CEO of Live One. Rob Ellen then proceeded to email Jim Cornette saying he doesn't want anything to do with this fight. However, talk to my team. I don't want anything to do with this. However, I will tell Colin to get you the statements, which we've never received. So there's a lot of this. We're not involved, however, we will instruct the person who is to do what you are saying you want him to do. And we're not involved, however, if you want any chance of getting your money without Colin going into bankruptcy, you better talk to our team. Which, which brings up why in the world would a, a successful businessman running a publicly traded company that is probably worth just billions and billions of dollars Why would they be so anxious to work with this weasel that is being outed in a variety of news sources as owing people all kinds of money and misrepresenting everything about his business to them? Why, we say. Yeah, and let's lay it out to what we believe right now, based on the evidence we have, based on everyone we've talked to, based on everything we've seen, everything we've experienced, everything that's documented, everything in writing. We suspect Colin Thompson committed fraud. We suspect Colin Thompson misappropriated our money and the money of many other content creators and slash agents and managers and everything else to either inside productions that had nothing to do with the shows that actually earned the money and he had no right to do that, or possibly outside productions like a mansion in Calabasas or various other things, we suspect fraud. We're being told that in order to be made whole based on their math, for the fraud, we would have to accept payment, including stock pre-IPO in Podcast One. Live One would be giving us stock in Podcast One to repay us for the money that was lost due to Colin Thompson's fraud. But now a lot of people might say, well, that doesn't sound so bad. Stock in this big multimedia company, well, that's just got to be worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. A lot of people might say that. Well, we can talk about that, but also some people might say that doesn't sound legal. How can a publicly traded company's stock be used in this manner to repay people for fraud? Well, especially when it's stock of a company that's not actually fully formed yet. But besides that, the company that would be issuing the stock would still be employing and doing business with The aforementioned Colin Thompson that was actually the person who committed the fraud and misrepresentation and possibly outright theft to begin with. And these people, including us and all these other people, would have to sign up to work for a company that contained the guy that stole their money. Can you imagine? I mean, just take any other situation. This guy steals your money. You want to get the money back? You have to go through me. You have to sign a deal with me. You're going to come work on my team. Oh, yeah, by the way, he's going to be in charge. 
and then we're not going to give you all your money back. We're only going to give you some of it back. The rest of it, over a couple of years, possibly in some stock. And by the way, in case anybody's saying, you know, this doesn't really have anything to do with wrestling. It does in terms of that company has had and possibly will have in the future wrestling-oriented podcasts, including major names if they are so unlucky as to do business with Live One slash Podcast One. But also, we may not be talking to the wrestling fans now, but we're talking to anybody that has a day job or knows anybody that has a day job over at the SEC. And I'm not talking about the Southeastern Conference. I'm talking about the Securities and Exchange Commission because we are going to talk publicly about the fraud and malfeasance that's going on with millions and millions of dollars until the SEC decides to look at this Who Shot John deal that Live One, Podcast One, and Cast Media and Colin Thompson are trying to put through. And let's just see if it passes all the musters. Well, Jim, let's take a step back, and I want to go to a few articles and a few press releases from the previous little less than a year, just to lay a little bit of the groundwork as we continue to tell this story in the weeks ahead. I have an article here, October 19th, 2022, on the Music Ally website. Slacker, and just so you know, Slacker, Slacker Radio is something owned by Live One. It's a streaming service. Slacker hit by... Court judgment over Sound Exchange royalties. Earlier this year, Sound Exchange sued streaming service Slacker and its parent company Live One, alleging that Slacker stopped paying statutory royalties in 2017. How did that legal case go? It certainly didn't go well for Slacker. Yesterday, Sound Exchange hailed a court ruling entering a judgment against Slacker and Live One to the tune of $9.7 million. Boom! The judgment, and this is a quote, permanently barred Slacker and Live One from using the statutory license going forward. This, more than the fine, may be the biggest problem for Slacker now in terms of delivering music to its subscribers. And again, this is as of last year. As for the parent company... In quarter two, Live One saw its revenues fall by 40% year-on-year to $23.2 million, although the company did turn a narrow operating profit of $237,000. Those financials included an admission of, quote, substantial doubt about the company's ability to continue as a growing concern within one year from the date that these financial statements are filed. Let's stop there. Their Ooh. statement from a year ago, said that they see trouble operating a year from then, which is coming up pretty soon, isn't it? Well, it does most cases. Most times, years are only 12 months. Uh, And and, and, and by the way, here, this already sounds like a stock that I want to buy in this company. They sound (laughs) like they're just world beaters. They're, they're, They're beating the customers away with a stick. Go ahead. There was also a note that at the end of June, I guess as of 2022, Slacker owed $16.9 million in aggregate royalty payments to collecting societies. So the music publishers, or whoever else, aren't able to collect the money they're supposed to collect from the company playing the music on their streaming service. So they're not paying them. This is the company that tried to get us. You said they wanted to get involved with wrestling. They tried to get involved with us, the two biggest wrestling shows on the planet, because they wanted to just... They wanted to be involved with this revenue stream. They can't make revenue. So this is from October. Two weeks later, October 31st, 2022. This is from InsideRadio.com. Live One says Sound Exchange royalty judgment would be unsustainable for the company. After being ordered to pony up nearly $10 million in unpaid royalties to Sound Exchange, Slacker's parent company, Live One, claims that paying that amount would financially ruin the company. Here's a quote. The economic damage this will cause Live One will be unsustainable for this small company, they say. Unsustainable for a small... I thought they were big operators, big businessmen, but they're saying they can't even pay that judgment or they'd be out in the street. They lost the judgment for something they did, which was stop. they stopped paying royalties. They lost the judgment. They have to pay, I'm assuming... Prior royalties, maybe there was penalties, who knows. They're saying they can't pay that. 
or they will be unsustainable. Let's fast forward a few months. I have an article here. I don't have access to the whole thing, so I'm not a subscriber currently. Billboard.com, March 1st, 2023. Do you remember one of the executives on the email, Kit Gray? The, I think he was the top guy at Podcast One at, at that division. Kit yes, Gray. yes. Podcast One president faces lawsuit claiming he fired assistant for refusing to ship weed. <laughs> Sherry Bell says Chris Kit Gray's request that she ship smoking paraphernalia from a marijuana dispensary, including vape pens and vials, violated federal law. So right now he's involved in a lawsuit where his former assistant said he wanted her to send drugs interstate. So we'll see what happens with that. Next article I have here, April 13th, 2023. So a month later, from dot.la, Podcast One aims to become the first publicly traded podcasting powerhouse. Live One, the parent company of Podcast One, just to take a step back, they're afraid they're going to go out of business or they're going to be unsustainable if they have to pay a judgment that they already lost, that they already have to pay. So now they're going to spin off Podcast One into a separate stock. Podcast One, a division of audio streaming and event company Live One, is planning to go public in a deal that would make it the first Los Angeles podcast exclusive company to be publicly traded. Several Podcast One's biggest competitors, iHeartMedia, SiriusXM, and Spotify, already have publicly listed securities. But Beverly Hills-based Podcast One would be the first local podcast company to go public. Here's a quote from Rob Ellen. About Come and listen to our story about a man named Rob, a poor little podcast operator that couldn't get a job. Here's a quote from him about Apple and Spotify. All those guys are our partners. We distribute across all of them, but we're very different. We are a small production distribution house that is laser focused on only podcasting, whereas podcasting is a piece of their business, but it is a much smaller piece of their overall companies. Ellen said that many of Podcast One's creators are also equity holders in the company and stand to benefit directly <laughs> from the listing. So he's already jumping ahead and assuming a bunch of people are taking this bogus deal so that he can say that there are equity holders in this, well, fictitious company. Maybe it's more than that. We have no idea how many existing Podcast One shows, either because they're owed money or for whatever other reason, may have been also given pre-IPO stock in this. Ah, good point. They may be pulling this across the board. The CEO also claimed it would give podcast fans a chance to invest directly in the company they care about. Because that's what the listeners want, to go spend their money on stock in the podcast company. <laughs> what a bunch of shit. Podcast One was launched in March 2007 by Podcast One founder and president Kit Gray and National Radio Hall of Fame, Hall of Famer, excuse me, Norm Pattis, who previously ran Westwood One. Uh, Live One, formerly known as Live by Live, bought Podcast One in July 2020 for $16.1 million. So there's another little wrinkle in the story. 2020, three years ago, they bought this thing for $16 million. They're now trying to spin this off end up being a stock. The offering that they're saying they want to do would spin out Podcast One as a separate division and expect shares to begin trading at around $8 to $12 each. <laughs> Wait a minute, Cor corny coin is sounding like a better idea all the time. Here's another quote from uh, Rob Ellen. We're at $125 million valuation. Overall, as I see this industry, not only are you going to have growth in pure podcasting, but podcasting, live shows, products, and podcasts. Well, wait a minute. Did he just say that his company is worth $125 million, but they just said when they lost the judgment, they couldn't even pay ten? They're at a $125 million valuation. <laughs> On paper, to some, they're worth $125 million. How much hey, is that paper right here, worth? I got some paper. You hear that? That's paper right there. And I'm writing down that Corny Coin is worth $150 million. So good day to you. I'm resigning because I'm rich and I'm retiring. As we are recording, Live One Today will be announcing their financials, having a big call today. So we'll stay on top of that. But if you have any information, again, cornydrivethrough at gmail.com or brian at arcadianvanguard.com, we will continue looking into Colin Thompson, what he did with our money, where that money went. What was his involvement with Live One and Rob Ellen and Podcast One? 
How can Podcast One and Live One think they can give people who had money stolen from them stock in a publicly traded company to make them whole from the fraud? There's a lot of questions I want answers to, and I think we're going to get them. And once again, anybody with the SEC, that's the Securities and Exchange Commission for Wall Street, 60609, we'll be glad to tell y'all a few things, too, if you're not already hearing them. Well, you know who is going to hear a lot of things and who's going to be saying a lot of things about all this? Our good friend and attorney, Stephen P. New. Well, as a matter of fact, without even any further ado, so that I can get to the big news about Stephen P. New, news about new, about P. New, play that music. Call Stephen P. Of the rest. You know what they're calling him now, don't you, Brian? No, what's that? They're just calling him Pinu. Shit, there comes Pinu. Cover your head. Get out of the way. He, I'm telling you what, when Stephen Pinu walks down the street, he takes up the whole thing. He's got wide shoulders and he's he's knocking everybody over to the side because Pinu has now made news again in the state of West Virginia. Governor Jim Justice, Sid's father and others in the state of West Virginia are being sued for $330 million by Stephen P. New and New Law Office over their horrible treatment of the prisoners in the jails and prisons and juvenile facilities in the state of West Virginia. They want injunctive relief and forcing the state to do $270 million of maintenance at these various facilities and to spend $60 million to fill worker vacancies because we've been talking about this on and off now for months since Stephen has gotten involved in this. Apparently, the jails in West Virginia, any kind of jail, the overcrowding is ridiculous. The lack of staffing is ridiculous. The lawsuit alleges that 10,000 inmates of the state are living in inhumane condition. The defendants have subjected the inmates housed at all the state's correctional facilities to inhumane living conditions, deprived them of basic human necessities, acted with deliberate indifference towards the health and safety of inmates, bug infestation, starving these people, not attending to their medical care, and the overcrowding has caused inmates to endure genuine privations and hardship over an extended period of time that may give rise to violations of the 8th and the 14th Amendments. And you know that 14th Amendment, holy shit. You know, people in prison are allowed to drink along with everybody else, one would think. The 14th Amendment taking away the right to alcohol, for heaven's sake. That wasn't the 14th Amendment. Oh, maybe that was 19. Nevertheless, there's a lot of amendments in here. But the lawsuit has been filed. Stephen P. New is going to bring the state of West Virginia to their knees of the way that they've been treating these poor, underprivileged inmates and even juvenile inmates, underage, underprivileged inmates, for heaven's sake. So if Stephen P. New will fight the governor of the state and all the high muckety mucks, on behalf of prisoners, then certainly he'll fight for you. Because you probably, if you're listening to this right now, are a nicer person than an inmate. Or at least you're the nicest guy in prison. So, if you need help, wrongful termination, damage to you, done financially or emotionally or physically by someone else's negligence, greed, or avarice, newlawoffice.com. 888-692-8084. Operators are standing by. And as soon as Stephen P. New finishes cleaning up the jail system in West Virginia, he will clean up your problem too. He may not be able to get you $330 million. But when we finish putting Colin Thompson under the courthouse, we're expecting at least $12.7 million. Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. 
800-242-8084. All right, well, before we get to discussing some new things, an update on some of the things we've been discussing again, you know, we've given a lot of attention, possibly unwanted attention, to our favorite weasel, Colin Thompson of Cast Media, who owes people millions of dollars. But we haven't given as much of the spotlight to another weasel involved in this whole altercation. Boy, there's a, there's a real weasel farm involved here. I didn't know there was that much money in the weasel breeding business. They attract each other. Apparently, well, that's why they breed a lot. Uh, they, both these weasels are probably fucking each other nonstop. Maybe even the other one might not even know it, but nevertheless. Uh, Rob Ellen, who is the CEO, founder, and chairman, according to him, of Live One, who is involved in this alleged attempted deal with Cast Media to put one over on the SEC. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. To do something that would require SEC approval in terms of issuing stock in a company to pay people back for money that Colin Thompson has misappropriated. I, we've, we've gone over all of that. But uh, Colin hadn't been speaking a lot lately, but Rob did recently out in public. Yeah, and to take a step back, because again, the last update we did on all this was going through some of the actual stories and press releases about this company, Live One. Rob Ellen, again, founder. It used to be a different name, and then he, when he bought Podcast One for a ridiculously inflated price, he changed it to Live One to match Podcast One. But we talked about them losing the judgment to Sound Exchange for almost $10 million, their declaration that they couldn't cover that bill and that it would kill the company if they were forced to pay what they were supposed to pay. $10 million. We talked about all these potential content acquisitions for pure stock, no cash. Just stock, and in some cases, stock in pre-IPO in the new company of Podcast One being spun off. Real shady guy. I think we could say, from our opinion, a very shady guy. From my opinion, just a complete fucking mook, this guy. And we have an interview he just did with the Podcast Business Journal, and a lot of listeners, surprisingly, sent this in. The editor, James Cridlin, spoke with Rob about everything going on around Live One, Podcast One, and of course, the cast media acquisition. And uh, we're not going to read this whole thing because he's a person who loves to talk without saying a lot. You will see that it's like the WWE writers. You'll see paragraphs and paragraphs, but when you analyze what was said, you really learn nothing in answer to the question that was asked. But we're going to highlight a couple of parts of this that just the, the audacity, or in the words of Jackie Fargo, the gall of you. Uh, to say these things, we want to highlight a couple of a couple of things, and he's bandying around the names of all the big names that uh, they got in their podcasting lineup. Here's another thing: I wonder of Rob Dial and Brendan Schaub and Whitney Cummings. We haven't been able to hear how much money that they might be owed at this point. Right, and that's again the problem. We're willing to say you guys stole a bunch of money from us. We hope to get some of it back. But that's not going to stop us from telling everyone all about all this shady bullshit. A lot of other people are going the other route, which is we're owed a considerable amount of money. The only chance we have of getting any of it is being strong-armed into this deal with Podcast One, which is exactly what this is. You will get no money and Colin will go bankrupt unless you take this horrible deal with us in exchange for some of the cash, as well as new terms a new split, you have to have our inept team involved with your show now, and also, we want you to accept pre-IPO stock that you can't sell. You have to hold on to this stock <laughs> until we tell you you can sell it, and it may be worth nothing by that time. Hey, Brian, I owe you a bunch of money, but look, here's a box of bubblegum wrappers. Now, if you'll just hold on to this for a few years, then I'll tell you when it's worth the money that I owe you, but I'm paying you back. Here you go. Yeah, and yeah, let's be straight, too. Rob Ellen doesn't owe us any money. Live One doesn't owe us any money. They may be responsible for some money going forward for interfering in this whole thing, but as of this very second, they owe us nothing. Colin Thompson and Cast Media owe us money. Colin Thompson is Cast Media. Everyone else is gone. It's one person who has obviously been pretending to be some kind of great creative executive, 
and he's a complete talentless boob. Because all of his employees have either quit or suing him in a class action lawsuit or have moved on because they need to support their themselves and their families. So, yeah, he's lost his his whole staff. That's right. And again, we want to find out exactly how long this relationship with him and Rob Ellen has been going on because Colin Thompson owed a lot of shows, if not every single show he had, a lot of money. And instead of explaining himself, instead of being honest about the situation, instead of saying, don't advertise the sponsors anymore because I can't pay you for any of the work you've done, let alone any future work, instead of doing any of that, he concocted a bullshit deal with Live One and Podcast One where they would give him a job, even though he's proven himself to be a complete and utter yutz. They're going to give him a job and the shows that have been ripped off, that have had money stolen from them, that have had funds misappropriated from them, those shows will be forced to enter a deal with this bullshit podcast company that has the worst reputation. Everyone in wrestling knows about this. Podcast One's a fucking joke. No one wants to be involved with them. And you have to if you want to get any of your money. Well, here, here's the thing also, Brian. The thing also is that Rob, he doesn't owe us any money. He owes other people money with all those judgments and oh, the lawsuits yeah. they've lost and everything. Well, that's the other thing. But, you have a guy who owes everyone money and the guy who apparently tries to use some of that leverage to get deals. Who knows how long he was advising Colin Thompson? Hey, listen, stop paying these people. Again, I'm just presuming out loud. Stop paying these people. It'll cause them to need them to get this deal in order to get their money. This guy's made a history of that. This guy's company owes money all over the place. And all of a sudden, he's the one advising Colin. I wanted to make the point again that our sponsors, they paid. They don't owe us any money either. It was the money that they paid to Colin Thompson that mysteriously flew away when it was in his possession. And they didn't know that these things were going on, not only with our show, but with other shows, until we informed them of that. And then all of our sponsors, as people who are listening over the past few weeks will know, have come right back to us because they wanted to be on this program. They weren't paying Colin Thompson for advertising, they were paying us. Right. And Colin, someone who has tried to present himself as being some sort of expert in getting audio content on YouTube, go look at his YouTube numbers for all of his programming. They don't do shit. This guy's a complete fraud. And you know what? You would think that if a couple of people like us, like you and me, for example, if a couple of people like us were just out here on a platform like this with hundreds of thousands of listeners, just blurting shit out of our ass, just blatant untruths, just unfactual shit, stuff that couldn't be backed up by evidence and documentation. If if somebody was doing that, you would think that the people that they were maligning would have a problem with it and try to do something about it. Read it, read it. Yeah, nothing. And, and by the way, this segment, like every other segment in this series, has been legally cleared by Stephen P. New, our counsel. So... If you got any problem, just call him directly, 888-692-8084. Ask for Steven. But Rob Ellen... Oh, yeah, yeah, just let him know you're from Cast Media or Podcast or Live One. You'll definitely get him. So the noted MOOC, Rob Ellen, CEO, founder, and live chairman, or, or chairman, excuse me, of Live One, did this interview with the he's, podcast. He's a live team. chairman right now, but he may not hold that status too much longer. Again, there's a lot of fluff here. Here's the beginning. It actually begins with an answer, not a question. We acquired Podcast One, and we continue to acquire. As you saw with the acquisition that we announced of Cast Media, and now with Fantasy Guru, I think you're going to see more of those. You're going to see the podcast industry rolled up. There's going to be a real consolidation. I can easily see us buy three or four more podcast businesses in the very near future. With what? Yeah, with no money. With no money. This is such a scam. We're going to pay you with the stock. Pre IPO, or we're going to pay you with the worthless stock of Live One as it currently is situated. They're going to roll things up. You're not Vince McMahon, Rob. You're not Vince McMahon. You're not going to buy a bunch of things and build Podcast One into a great business. Podcast One, in my estimation, is not sustainable going forward beyond the judgment. There's more issues. But anyway, let's get back to this interview. The topic, Jim, was brought up about podcast TV later this year. 
Where does Rob think things are going with podcasts and video? Podcasting, this is Rob now, podcasting has gone from 200 million to 1.6 million? That's still in the first innings of where pod, what the fuck is this it, idiot that's, talking That's about? a typo. I think it's 200 million to 1.6 billion. It but must be, yeah. Of what? Listeners? That's still in the first innings of where podcasting is going? What is he, Heyman? You're watching the habitual behavior of consumers move more and more to podcasts. We've grown from seven sponsors to over 703 years. <laughs> there's always the joke, you have a face for radio. But there's also a lot of hosts that have crossed over between radio and video. Now you're watching video explode. And I think it's just going to continue to grow. I've talked about second windows, podcasting becoming TV shows and movies. We just did a digital live show with Adam Carolla, which nobody watched. I think there's so many opportunities for podcasters. This is a big opportunity for video, and the acquisition of assets from cast media really expanded our video dramatically. Ho! Oh, first, a radio video boogie with a suitcase. How much video did cast media have? And. If that little small bit of video that Cast Media had expanded their video dramatically, then how shitty was their video to begin with? We're talking about, is anybody associated with Cast Media doing any numbers on YouTube? Because they had nothing to do with our YouTube. And if they were claiming they did, claiming any of our numbers, he was lying again. So where else is, uh, I love Sarah Silverman, haven't seen her YouTube numbers doing anything next to ours no and again this guy's talking almost past the reality trying to get a message out there to wall street he's trying to get a message out there this really has nothing to do with the realities like oh video is a great thing who would have ever thought people want to see videos you fucking idiot <laughs> this has been the business for years sorry that you guys are playing catch up because you have a fucking shitty podcast company so the next question kind of leans us into the direction of how he feels about the acquisition of certain assets of cast media when we bought podcast one it was a distressed asset luckily they had norm behind it so they had unlimited money and he could bail them out each time just for you just so you know jim norm was the founder of westwood one which well he's he's mentioned earlier in the in the article norm Pattis. That's right. He sold the company uh, along with his partner to Rob Ellen. Norm has since died. Westwood One, for those of you outside the country who don't know, was one of the biggest radio uh, syndicators out there. And there's a beautiful world that would have existed if they had sold their assets to Lorimar and DIR Broadcasting had stayed in business. But anyway, back to this here. But this is such an early stage for this industry. And Colin is a wonderful guy. He's super talented but he got himself caught up in a rough situation where the banks pulled out. Venture capital pulled out. And there was no money left for these small companies unless you sold to Spotify or Apple. All those companies they bought were losing their shirt too. How come everybody was losing money but us? The only time we lost money was when Colin took off with it. Yeah, let's stop right there. Colin's in a bad situation. The banks and the venture capital pulled out. What did they do? Examine his books? What did they do? See that you generated all these millions of dollars in revenue? Where did that money go? Colin's in a bad situation because Colin doesn't know how to be an executive. Colin's in a bad situation because he misappropriated millions of dollars. Not because of the banks and the VC clowns. Anyway, so once again, Rob Ellen protecting Colin Thompson here. What's behind that? Oh, well, he says, so we stepped in and we said, hey, this guy put together one of the greatest lineups in podcasting. You got Rob Dial and Brendan Schaub and Whitney Cummings. It's just a massive lineup. And you got to give them a lot of credit. But you also got to help them, right? And we couldn't just step in and bail them out of the problem. We had to slowly try to fix as much as we could. So <laughs> this is the part I love. So whoever wants to come and be a real partner and change the economics, the 80-20 deals are all before. They're never happening again. There have to be fair deals that both partners can make money. Brian, our 80-20 deal that we have with our new advertising agency is never going to happen again, even though it's currently happening. 
It's never going to happen with a company like Podcast One that's unsustainable. They need to try to grab back as much of a percentage as they can from the creators for really unjust reasons. Go get an advertiser and pay a reasonable rate. You don't need a company like this. What are they going to do? They're going to pay your hosting? They're going to cover that? Hey, listen, if you're making any money with your podcast, do your own fucking hosting then. What would they do that would necessitate a 60-40 split, which is what we saw? Are they going to spend a lot of money marketing and advertising your show? Probably not. They don't have a lot of money. They're trading everything for stock. The parent company says that they have to pay their judgment. They're out of business. But he's trying to give all these shows, according to him, a good deal. We've done terrific so far. We've announced a couple, including more news. Millions of dollars are moving over. We said it could be as high as $10 million. And I would say we'll be halfway there shortly. And there's no reason why we can't get all the way there. Yeah, there well, is. Good. Then, then they <laughs> can t- pay the $10 million judgment and be back where they started from. So again, this goes to the idea of what really went wrong with cast. The revenue streams are fine. Every show has advertisers. The advertisers pay. That's the revenue stream. It's the person managing the stream who diverted those funds to unknown places. That's the problem. He's a beaver. He's building a dam in the middle of the stream, diverting the stream. There have to be fair deals so both partners can make money. What does your company do, Rob, that any podcast would really need? You have a shit team. Your hosting can be done by anyone. Your distribution can be done by anyone. You have no good marketing or advertising. Your production doesn't really matter. What do you do that would cause a 60-40 split to be in any way acceptable? Nothing. And that question you were asking is of a gentleman named Rob Ellen, E-L-L-I-N, who claims to be the CEO. You can't take any of these people at their word. Claims to be the CEO of Live One. That's right. And once again, he's a mook. Let's go back to him here. We've spoken to every podcaster. We've offered really fair deals. Equity in our IPO to help them. They have got to decide for themselves whether or not they want to go to another platform. No other platform is going to pay them for the past. They're only going to work with them in the future. No, we know that, Rob. You're holding our money hostage. We get that. Well, no, no, no. We're working with Colin to hold our money hostage. We completely understand. We expect that if, if Joe down the street owes us money and won't pay us, that we could go to Bill across town and he'll pay it. No, we don't think that. We don't think another platform is going to pay the money that we are owed from this other guy, we thought he should have done it. That's right. Rob, we think you're a mook. If YouTube would allow cunt, we'd call you a cunt. Back to this. It has to be a win for everybody. I really hope more podcasters come over. Even if they just come over the distribution platform, they could get paid. Wait a minute, are we allowed to come over the distribution platform? It sounds messy. We'll all run it for them. We'll help you. And if you get to know us well, and you get to see what we do, nobody's going to leave. <laughs> you're, sure, not going you're not going to s- be able to afford to. You're not going to see a small company that is more entwined and entrenched with their creators. We're a white glove, hands-on partnership. We're going to keep holding their hands and keep growing with them. Well, now I'm kind of insulted. The guy won't hold my hand till he puts a glove on? You do nothing. You do nothing. You can't create shows that people care about. You're not producing shows from scratch that people will care about. You can find things that work and try to latch on to their fucking revenue stream. That's all this is. You bring nothing to the table, Rob. You don't even bring cash. You don't even bring fucking cash. (laughs) Pre-IPO stock in my bullshit company that I'm trying to fuck everyone over on. Back to Rob Ellen here. We've gone through tough times with Podcast One before we acquired it. We made it clear to them, you cannot move with a fistful of anger. You have, you have to move over where you truly, in partnership with us, there may be some uh, words missing here. Transcription issues possibly here, or maybe he's just having a small stroke. And all of us want to grow and build together and do something great together. And even if we do something great together, we make history together. You're going to make your money back. Holy shit. It all comes back to you're not getting any of your money unless you have to work with me and my awful team. And then you'll make your money back. And by the way, how good is this team? They're hiring Colin Thompson. They're hiring the guy who blew millions of dollars. 
He had a company that was making multi-million dollars a year, every single year. It was a very simple thing they had to do. All that money disappeared. Somehow this guy's getting a life vest and all of his shows are getting screwed. We're not because we didn't have a contract. And also we're willing to say, fuck you. We're going to do it our own way. And look at this. Look at the quotes from this MOOC. Would anyone want to work for this MOOC? Would anyone want to work for this MOOC company? I just have one question to ask you, Brian Last. Is MOOC a word that's going to get us kicked off of anything? No, not yet. Okay. So here's the next question. I'll let you read the question. I'll answer the question. Oh, so the acquisition is around shows. It's not around staff of cast media. It's around the shows and the creative. Because again, the original stuff we heard from them was that our cast team yes. was coming forward. The original press release about the weird sale of certain assets was about the team coming over. Here's Rob Ellen. We looked at all their assets. We don't want people to lose jobs. We want to try to help them. We're growing fast. Wait a minute. Let me just say one thing. You can read the next three paragraphs, but that is the last thing that he says to address the question that was asked about right. the staff of cast media. And then he starts talking about how they're growing and their, their revenue that they think this quarter and the blah, blah, blah. He doesn't talk about any of the people that work for cast or whether they still exist in the company or on this planet. There's a lot He's more just, fluff. It's just gaga. It's a lot more fluff here, a lot more him trying to build up his company. Even when in the emails that we read on the show, I said, podcast one fucking sucks. No one wants to be involved with that shit company. Even then he was like writing to you, we're worth a hundred million dollars. Where's the cash? Yeah. Well, that's remember I said, well, if you're worth a hundred million, you know, you only owe us a couple hundred grand. This guy's such a mook, and podcasting is his newest grift. And now he's trying to spin this off from his other company to be a stock, which I guess, in a sense, would be paying for all of this stuff that he's trying to do now, which, in our estimation, based on everything we've learned, everything we've discovered, everything we have documented, includes trying to use his stock to compensate shows, including us, for fraud. Trying to use pre IPO stock to repay people who had their money stolen because of fraud. That's Rob Ellen, the CEO of Live One. He's helping out Colin Thompson, CEO of Cast Media, who's responsible for millions of missing dollars. This stinks. These two people stink. I'm sure they smell like fucking fish. And I think... Don't we, insult fish. They didn't do anything to you. We need to do more each and every week to make sure more and more people know about this, know their names, know what they're up to, and know what they're all about. And that's what we're going to do. And if you buy stock or you have investments of any kind or you have investment brokers or whatever, tell them stay away from Live One or Podcast One until somebody wants to explain why they associate with people who commit malfeasance and misappropriation. Hey, I'll, I'll say another thing. In that email he wrote to you, remember when he tried to go around my back thinking that somehow that would work, and go to you directly, he said he's been a partner with WWE for 40 plus years. We have a lot of people in the office listening to this show. If anyone remembers Rob Ellen doing any business with WWE 40 years ago, or 30 years ago, or 20 years ago, please or let last us know. week, or any of the involvement with him or any of his associated companies since then. Get in touch with us. Let us know. Let us know if he owes you money. I bet you he considers himself a partner of the WWE for however many years because he's sold their advertising to somebody else in the past or done something, and they wouldn't know him from Adam's house cat. Seriously. But he likes to talk. He obviously likes to talk like he's very important. Where is the person in the world who likes the brand Podcast One? <laughs> Where is the person that gets excited if they see a Podcast One attached to a show? Oh my God, now it'll be good. It's the opposite. I'm sorry you spent $60 million buying this, but you're an asshole and you've made a bunch of stupid decisions. And you know, boy, once again, it's amazing how that people can just get on a platform like this one and just say these things without any rebuttal from somebody like you, Rob, you got my email address, obviously, or you, Colin, or anybody who wants to say something to me personally or Brian personally, but you can't because we ain't lying.
because we don't give a shit and we're telling the truth about you and your fucking screwy business deals and whatever else you've done to all these other people that are not at liberty to comment on the situation. We're in the wrestling business. We don't give a shit. Fuck you. That's right. More to come. And if anyone involved in this, Rob Ellen or Colin Thompson or anyone beyond what we're saying on the air is a problem with it, let me know. Just let me know. Call, call us up. We'll put you on a show if you want to talk to people. I'll bring a camera crew over there and slap the shit out of you. Hey, wait a minute. That didn't work out the last time. Leave the camera crew out of it. Let's just do the slapping. We'll see what Steven says. All right. Jim, before we get going any further with the show here, and once again, jimcornet.com to check out those figures, some breaking news. Uh-oh. And this uh, goes towards the continuing saga of does Colin Thompson owe you money? We've talked about it on this show. Our former advertising agent took off with our money. Not just our money, millions of dollars from a variety of programs. Right now, from what we believe, there are shows trying to get Colin or in arbitration with Colin. There are other people looking at criminal charges. There are other people looking at other things they could do. And we haven't revealed yet Civil what we're going to do. Civil litigation is another option. Well, we haven't revealed yet what we're going to do. But in the middle of all this, we were told that the only way that we would be repaid the money that was taken from us, even though we did the work, the work was paid for, somehow the money disappeared in between, the only way we would be paid is to sign a multi-year agreement with Podcast One, and we would be repaid for the financial fraud with Podcast One stock, which was pre-IPO. Well, the headline, I have this article here from Inside Radio, the most trusted news in radio. Seven hours ago, as we are recording, mm -hmm. NASDAQ clears Live One to begin trading Podcast One on its own. Live One's long-delayed plan to spin out Podcast One into its own freestanding, publicly traded company is now closing in on the end. Live One says it has received approval to begin trading Podcast One on the NASDAQ exchange. It comes after the company said last week that it expects Podcast One to split off and begin trading on its own by September 15th in a move that will value the company at $200 million. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You pump a company that's not worth anywhere near that up with this stock so that it is, and then when everything returns to reality, what happens? But let me and, 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 and again, and this weasel... Ellen, Rob Ellen, that uh, is the CEO of Live One slash Podcast One. Just is a total entering, mook. Is entering it, a, he's a big mookster, is entering into this agreement with apparently well-known fraudster, uh, Colin Thompson, of formerly of Cast Media. And, well, now he is of Cast Media. He's the only one. All the other employees have quit and are variously suing him or looking for work. And the reason why that Ellen is is holding his nose and suffering the existence of the fraudster that he's dealing with is because the lack of cash but potential podcast programs that Colin Thompson could bring him pumped up numbers so that he could engage in this IPO and inflate the numbers of the company, the numbers of the podcast, the price potentially of the stock, all to do this. This is basically what we have apparently found out here by everything that we can determine. And again, just recently in an interview, Rob Ellen defended Colin Thompson, said he's a terrific guy. It's not his fault that the money pulled out. What money? <laughs> the money was paid in. He didn't pay everyone else. Yeah, that our, money didn't our, pull out. Our money was, was, was shoved in. And he decided to pull it out and put it in a different place for it got to us, along with many other podcasts and many other people producing podcasts. But they live one podcast one doesn't care about that as long as they get certain assets of cast media that will artificially inflate their numbers, even though there is no, really no cast media now. And all of the programs listed by cast media. The only reason they're still even entertaining the thought of doing business with this cretin is see if they can get some of the money that he owes them. Right. And now they're going to still sell stock in a company based on caca. 
That's right. A company that isn't turning a profit, I believe, based on the financials we've seen. And they got Colin Thompson involved, the guy who is being accused by us and other shows of stealing their money. He's not a creative force. He's, he's a boob, and they're going to have him attached. How long was he in the bed subject, with them? He's the subject of a class action lawsuit against him by his own employees. Already, before he told him he was going bankrupt. By the way, a quick aside. I don't know if we've talked about this. Remember we talked early on when we told the story? Steven got in touch with Colin's attorney, his entertainment attorney, and then that guy decided to try to go around Steven and come to me directly. Mm -hmm. Neil Sacker. Do you know what he's known for? What is he, what is he known for, Brian? A bunch of ex-employees of CAST got in touch with me, and then one or two other people who I guess either... I want to say someone knew his daughter, and I want to say another person just researched him. This guy, Colin Thompson's entertainment attorney, was the man working for Harvey Weinstein. No! Oh! This was the guy, whatever Harvey Weinstein had going on for all those years, apparently this guy was working for him. This guy was Harvey Weinstein's attorney, and apparently he brags about it. So that's who's on Team Colin. And we'll talk more about Mr. Sacker in the future. Back to this uh, article here. While a NASDAQ debut date has not been set, Live One says the stock ticker PODC has been reserved as the trading symbol for Podcast One's common stock. Speaking at an investment... Hey, you to P wait a minute, PODC? Yes. Piss off, damn creditors. Speaking, speaking at an investor conference, speaking of creditors, speaking at an investor conference in May, Ellen said that he expects the share price to be between $8 and $12 at its debut. I wonder what he thinks it'll be at in six months. But What anyway. kind of lunatic would pay any amount of money for this fraudulent operation they are uh, perpetrating here? Well, I will continue. It has been 13 months since Live One first announced its plans. It was marked by a series of delays, including most recently a request from NASDAQ to receive audit information ahead of Podcast One's debut on the exchange. During a conference call with analysts in June, CEO Robert Ellen, aka The Mook, called the request, quote, not an unreasonable ask, despite being months into the deal. When the move happens, Live One will continue to control Podcast One, holding about 74% of its shares. In a special dividend, Live One shareholders are expected to receive 0.48 shares in Podcast One, which is an increase from 12% announced earlier to 19%. So wait a minute, because you're the, the expert, I'm just a mere layman here, just the small town bird investor. But basically, they're trying to create a, a completely bullshit company with bullshit numbers here and sell stock to other people in it, but keep enough of the stock that they now have stock that's worth a bunch of money, even though they've done absolutely fuck all of nothing. Right. They have 74% of the stock, you know. Vince McMahon and his family had controlling interest, but that was a different level of stock. That was, uh, you know, it was class A and class B. Here, there are no real specifics other than 74% of the shares would be owned by podcasts, or would be owned by Live One, excuse me. Continue on with this. By going public, Ellen said last week it will allow Podcast One to grow by offering potential acquisition targets, a combination of cash and stock. He revealed the company has 10 acquisitions in the works, which range in size from $40 million down to $5 million as they look to consolidate podcast networks and individual shows that may be too small to attract the attention of larger industry players. Here's a quote. It's an exciting time for us to be able to roll up the small shows because there really is no home for them anymore. Oh, they've rolled up some small shows, all right. Even some big ones. I think we're the only game in town. <clears throat> and here's the final paragraph. Live One has already struck a pair of deals in recent months to bulk up its podcast business. It has signed a letter of intent to buy some shows that have been part of the podcast network cast media in an all-stock deal. All-stock! 
No price tag has been announced, but Live One says if the deal goes through, it will boost revenue at Podcast One by up to $10 million a year. Ellen has said, How is it going to boost their revenue by up to $10 million a year when they're bankrupt and he can't pay the people the money he owes them right now? Because the revenue streams are there. Rob Ellen and Live One's position is we don't give a fuck. We're, we want Colin to work with us, so we care about him in that way. But we don't care what malfeasance. We don't care what he's done to any of you. We want you guys to come to us because you have no other place to go. And the revenue streams are still working. The advertisers paid. Rob Ellen's hoping that instead of Colin holding the money, he'll be able to hold the money. But it's not, it's not the holding of the money, it's the delivering of the money that is the most important thing. Hey, my old friend Rob, fuck you, by the way. Rob and fuck you, Colin, by the way, just from JC over here, because there is another way, there is another path, and we have taken it. And we don't have to deal with you fucking crooks anymore, or at all. And we're just as good as we've ever been, and as successful, and as well listened to. And other people can do the same thing. So I'm just, before Brian finishes this article here, I'm just suggesting that everybody that's associated with Podcast One or Live One in the podcast business, tell them, fuck you, it can be done and successfully on your own because we're doing it. That's right. There are other solutions. And the fact that this guy, again, the strong arm tactic, if you want any of the money that was stolen via financial fraud, you better sign this deal. And then you have to accept our stock. It may be worth 8 to $12 at launch. It may be worth 90 cents in two years. And by the way, it could go the other way. It could be worth millions of dollars in a couple of years. We don't want it. If the stock was that good, give me all my cash. And if I like it enough, I'll buy it on my own. I don't want you to give me your garbage stock. I want the option to say, no, I'm not buying that garbage stock. So all of this is happening. Rob Ellen's trying to strong arm these shows. You hear these quotes. We're the only game in town. There's nowhere else to go. The 80-20 deals are gone. This guy is trying- Everything we've done and everything we've got is fictitious. Everything that makes money for podcasters isn't what benefits Live One. Live One only benefits if Live One makes money. Whether they pay the podcasters, whether they pay Sound Exchange, who they owe, what, close to $10 million to? Doesn't matter. Paying people out isn't the issue. They just want to make the money for themselves. There is a way. You can build your own audience. You can control your own advertising. You can keep everything in-house. We've mostly done it in the past. Now we've completely done it. Other shows can do it too. You don't need Podcast One holding you hostage. By the way, notice Podcast One doesn't really have much of a wrestling portfolio. The wrestling business is hip to Podcast One being bullshit and has been for a long time. So don't, I don't want to hear, you know, he could go pretend in these statements for Wall Street or whoever he's trying to impress, whoever's money he's trying to steal and say all these great things about his company. If you're in podcasting, let alone in wrestling podcasting, you know that Podcast One is a complete fucking joke. Well, but now hold on here a second. Maybe not. Maybe because you said the wrestling business kind of has figured it out, but there's a lot of people in the world, and I would think because everybody in the world has a podcast, folks, if you're out there in the cult of Cornette, if you're in our audience, you know what's going on because we're telling you. But do you know people that do podcasts about raising ducks or podcasts about cooking fucking fritters or whatever, any podcast about any subject, if you know somebody that does that, ask them if they know what's going on with Podcast One, Live One, Cast Media, these deals, wh whether they might be involved or just may have a way to not be involved in the future with this because they've been warned. I think that might be worth calling somebody. Get on your telephone and call somebody. If they do a podcast about anything, they probably shouldn't deal with these people. Well, that's the update. Again, as we are recording today. And here's one more thing that I'll say while I'm fired up. The same thing I said a couple of days ago on the last show we did. It seems awful funny 
that we are talking to an audience of this size. Brian, you look at the charts. I don't even have time. I got a sick puppy. Are we still the number one wrestling podcast most times, most weeks? Oh, no. We're, we are always the number one and usually the number two wrestling podcast every single week for years now. We have been the most listened to show. We have higher numbers than anyone else in existence, oh, okay. let alone put, put, currently. Put, put, I mean, it's, it's not even close. There are other networks of shows that like to pretend they're big. The two all shows right. we do will do better numbers every week than all of their shows on their network combined. I mean, it's not even put close. You, put your tongue back in your mouth now. I'll just ask a simple question. I'm saying we got a platform here. And as well, and that doesn't count YouTube. That's and the biggest anyone's ever had in wrestling. No other podcast has any real presence. None of them have ever really figured out how to do it right. They just try to copy our model okay and, once again didn't need uh, I, I asked you what time it was i didn't tell you how to there's a lot of me failure. build the watch there's a lot of real failures out there in wrestling what media. i'm saying is between 10 12 13 14 million listens per month on youtube and all these hundreds of thousands of people per podcast that translates into millions of people per week and per month and we're saying this stuff about rob ellen and colin thompson and what's what's the lawyer's name? Um, Neil Sacker. Sacker. I knew it had something to do with a sack <laughs> or a bag or a coin purse or something. Oh, you got to Google him later on, ladies and gentlemen, and see that well, face. Oof. He's liable to be Googled here soon. But the point is, we're saying this stuff about these people that are fixing to do a deal that they're claiming is worth tens of millions of dollars, and they got a deal with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And we're saying this, mentioning their names, to millions of people, it seems to me if something we were saying was demonstrably untrue, was provably false, or was in some way injurious or damaging to their character or their reputation because we didn't have documentation, whether emails or other printed form to back it up, Seems like they'd try to do something about this, doesn't it? Well, they all but threatened to in a number of ways beforehand. They, I've been threatened by old women with chairs worse than these threats. They, they threatened me in an email. Well, don't be saying that shit. We don't take... Fuck you. That's not a threat to me. <laughs> a goddamn sharp blade within a foot of my throat saying, I'm going to cut your fucking heart out, motherfucker. I'll take that one seriously. You email me a threat, you can ball that son of a bitch up and shove it up your ass. Or shove it up Colin's ass, Rob, whatever you're into. Whichever one wants to put the other thing up the other person's ass is no concern of mine. As long as all uh, their bullshit ends up shoved back up their own asses. So that's the point. Shut me up by telling me that I'm telling lies, motherfuckers. Because elsewise... We're going to be in the Wall Street Journal over this thing before it's over with, with your fucking securities and exchange. You wish you were in the Southeastern Conference by the time Brian Lass gets finished with you, I'll tell you that. Well, with that, all we could say is the investigation continues. We're looking into all the details about the relationship between Colin Thompson and Cast Media and Rob Ellen and Live One, now Podcast One. We're looking into Colin Thompson's personal and business relationships. Where did this money go? How far back did the scam start? Someone sent me the other day, do I even have it up here anymore? Yeah, I do. One of the listeners found this on Colin Thompson's Twitter. Do you know how to tell? I'm asking people what their secrets and tells are for good lying. And apparently it was a show he did, How to Lie with Colin Thompson. What the Oh fuck? my God. So we're going to find out a whole lot more. We're hearing a lot of things about his relationship with his church. And boy, we've gone, we've started a deep dive on his family, specifically that father of his and that wife of his, there's going to be a whole lot more to come for this. You can't just steal people's money and think you're just going to bounce away to the next fucking thing. You know, his life is a perverted situation comedy. That wife and that father and boy, that wacky cousin, we're, we're talking to everybody. When you're living a lie in a variety of ways, it's going to come back and get you. And I don't care if you have Rob Ellen protecting you and trying to help you. We're never going to let this go. Everyone's going to know about you. Everyone's going to know what you did. And we will get our money back one way or another. In entertainment value, if nothing else. That's and, right. And besides that, we might be influencing some influencers over there. Colin. Well, we'll see what happens. More to come on all of this. Again, if you have a problem with it, this segment, if you're hearing it, has been legally cleared. 
But if you have a problem, call Stephen P. New, 888-692-8084. Do you hear that, Neil? Call Stephen P. New. Don't email me. Go right to my lawyer. Well, now, wait a minute. Hold on now. Hold on now. Do you think this is even? Do you think this is a fair fight? Because we've got an attorney over here named, what's his name, Sack Job? Uh, Sack- Sacker. Sacker. Old Sacker is over here. He's most noted, apparently, for being the personal attorney, possibly well, the... I don't know about personal attorney. Or it may have business been for attorney. Yeah. He, the, the, the business, he's a, an attorney for Harvey Wienerstein. And then you got <laughs> on the other corner. Weinstein, but yes. In the other corner, you got Stephen P. New, who just laid, just dropped a $330 million lawsuit on the governor of the state of West Virginia. I don't know if that's fair. I think Sacker better wait until a few more fucking lawyers shows up on his side to make this thing even. Yeah, see, that's the thing. We have a real attorney. This Sacker guy's an entertainment attorney. Our attorney goes after the Sacklers. Our attorney goes after the governor of West Virginia. The Sacklers, not the Sackers. That's right. But what more about this? By the the way, did I ever tell you that when Dixie Carter had her attorney write me a very sternly worded letter about comments that I'd made about old Vince Russo one time, I I looked him up and found out it was an entertainment attorney. Oh. An entertainment attorney was writing, telling me that they would be notifying the federal government if anything happened to fucking shit stain. I'm like, yeah, damn. So you can make a movie about it. That's your area of expertise. You know, it's not I believe I could defend myself in a criminal trial against an entertainment attorney. It's not to say there aren't good entertainment attorneys out there. There are a few, but so much of it's just about leveraging your relationships. I saw Grubman and Dursky fucking rise because they represented the label. They represented the artist. They represented the executives. They were tied into every single way. They were able to make stuff happen not necessarily known for what they did in court. These guys, you know, are, these guys can read a contract, entertainment attorneys. Maybe they can negotiate. Maybe if they have some connections, they can make stuff happen. But they don't know anything about what happens in a courtroom. I, You know, I thought Grubman and Dursky were a heck of a couple of guys until they got whipped in that case by Rosencrantz and Gilderstein. Grubman and Dursky used to rule 57th Street, but that was a long time ago. Anyway, speaking of coming and going... <laughs> No, I'm serious. What the hell are you transitioning to I'm, now? I'm speaking well of coming and going, some people come into your life and some people go out of your life. And there's been a weasel lately that's gone out of our life named Colin Thompson that we've been talking about. And usually you're about halfway up his ass with some fucking barbed wire fucking with him. But I just, I've unfortunately, actually had, Unfortunately, at this point, we're standing in line. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, and the, the, the Billy club and the brass knucks and the slapjack and the coat hanger There's a lot of people, but I've had a few of the cult members contact me and just make comments. They don't know for sure people's business, but we were, you know, when we were talking about Colin Thompson, by the way, who is the weasel, the CEO of cast media, now the only employee of cast media since his employees are in a class action suit against him and the rest of them have resigned and threatened to sue him to get out of their contract so that they can actually be free to make a living. He's the only one at cast media, but he's the one that's trying to do the stock scam, perpetrating fraud with old Rob Ellen, the weasel who's the CEO of Live One slash Podcast One that we've been talking about on the programs here recently. He's a mook. The mook. But, you know, we've said that we're not the only ones affected. There's the the mom and pop podcasters that, you know, were setting themselves up to try to have a little income so they could take care of sick family members or you know, during the pandemic, for whatever reason, they needed to change occupations or, you know, some small folks that can't bear these losses. But there's big names that are apparently tied up in this also. Now, we we don't know their business, but we can assume and presume based on things that we do know. Sarah Silverman, she's a fine young comedian. And she's a name that a lot of people might recognize. She had a podcast tied up in some form or fashion with cast media. 
And Brian, would you know the the fans have told me that she hasn't had a new podcast out in about two months now. That seems awful because it was fairly regular right before that every week or so, and then bam, nothing. If a big-name celebrity like Sarah Silverman can be derailed and inconvenienced by this weasel and his mook friend, well, that's, you know, if, if, of course, now, if Sarah wants to come on the program and tell us that there maybe she's just been taking a vacation, but, you know, we don't know this to be true, but a lot of people saying it, that there's problems with cast media. And, you know, Penn Gillette, Brian, you know him. Penn and Teller, the magicians, right? I've always really liked them, yeah. I always said Teller is the one that don't talk. That's always been a tickle of mine. But old Penn Gillette, he lost a lot of weight. He used to be a bigger fella. He That's used right. to be a big motherfucker, as Rick Ross would say. And now he's in good shape, and he's always uh, done interesting things, and he's at a weird record label, so an interesting guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, he used to have a podcast tied up in some way with cast media. But apparently now his fans are telling me he's just on Patreon doing his own thing. Apparently his podcast has been derailed. Maybe it's one of those deals where Colin or Cast Media owned his feed and he couldn't get away from them, or he maybe he couldn't afford to do the show anymore because he wasn't getting paid for all the advertising he had done. He's just gone over to Patreon, just run, run off the podcasting planet. Now, we don't know this to be a fact, but it sure is odd that all these people, that whether they be small, independent operators or whether they be names that you would know, all of a sudden, everybody was tied up with cast media, <laughs> off the air, off the airwaves, except for us, and except for the fact that we're saying this, not a lot of other people are able to do this. They're apparently... Their hands are legally tied. But it's a shame that uh, all these shows that have all these listeners and all these fans, they can't get serviced anymore because of this weasel and this fraud that he's trying to perpetrate, whatever it may be, allegedly, with Live One and this IPO, what is it, initial public offering? That's right. See there, I know all these terms. Very good. Stock in a, if not worthless, highly suspect company. And I just wanted to, again, remind everybody, this is not just about wrestling, it's not just about podcasting, it's about people in front of our faces trying to get away with something. And Colin and Rob, I say again, we have been saying this in front of hundreds of thousands, by now millions of people, out loud. You can check the views on the YouTube channel if you can't get statistics on podcasts. Well, you you guys may know somebody. So you know how many people's hearing this. But where what have we heard from Colin? We haven't heard anything from Colin. He's underground. He's not a weasel. He's a mole. He dug down deep because a lot of people are looking for him. You better stay there. But Rob, Rob is out, as we illustrated on the drive-thru here a few days ago. He's out doing interviews, extolling the virtues of this big podcast network company they're going to put together, and they're going to sell stock in this, and they're going to give stock to the people that's on it. In exchange, he doesn't add for the money they're already owed for work they've already done. That was stolen through fraud. That was stolen through fraud, malfeasance, misappropriation. Financial fraud. We're, we're, we're willing to use any of those terms. But anyway, that's what he's doing is he's out doing interviews and ignoring what we're saying because he doesn't want to call attention to it because the podcasting world might know about it and the wrestling world, thanks to us, might know about it. But so far, apparently, the Securities and Exchange Commission has not investigated it well or at all as far as we know. And that's what we're just trying to do. We're trying to call some attention to things to make sure that everything is disinfected with the sunlight. And if they can prove that their deal is on the up and up, then more power to them. But also Rob and Colin and any of your other peripheral stooges, such as, what's his name, Sackbag, the lawyer? Neil Sacker. Sacker. Neil Sacker. Sacker. What we're saying is out in public here. 
And if it's demonstrably untrue, if it's provably false, if you claim that we do not have documentation to back up what we have said, and or if you would like to question anything that we have said without documentation that can go into the discovery process and civil litigation, if you're feeling froggy, fucker, hop. Otherwise, we're going to keep talking about you. Even if our listeners have to skip ahead, we're doing it for our own goddamn amusement and also because we're going to do everything we can to make sure that your deal that's supposed to go through next month gets looked at upside, downways, and crossways by people who might know what the fuck's going on. Because you're trying to pull something. That's what I'm saying. Shut me up or prove me wrong, motherfucker. I'm sorry, motherfuckers. They're trying to treat podcasters like like a scummy record label in the 50s would treat a musician. Hey, if you want to buy Podcast One stock or Live One stock or whatever this company is going to be called stock, if they'll steal from us, they'll steal from you. Listen, if a company has a history of owing everyone money and their solution is to spin off part of their company to create another stock, how many times is that going to happen? How many times will that happen? And let's also talk about one of the key things. Beyond the financial fraud, which may really be the undoing of Colin Thompson, beyond trying to repay us for the fraud and also force us into a deal with a company no one wants to deal with, Beyond all of that, the person who caused all the problems, the person who misappropriated all the funds, the person who was controlling the accounting, he's the one who's going to end up with a job. Not all the people, the press release, go back to the initial press release about the sale of certain assets, go back to looking forward to working with the cast team now joining uh, Live One and it's going to be great. Uh, the cast team all joined the unemployment line. Same thing in the emails we got. It'll be seamless. You'll keep working with your cast team, but, but start talking to these guys right now. They blew out the team. He screwed over his shows. He screwed over his investors. He screwed over his employees. And he's the one that Rob Ellen thinks is worth protecting. He's the one, for some weird reason, that Rob Ellen thinks is worth wrapping his arm around. Any other show has a problem getting out of their, uh, getting their RSS feed, let us know. Maybe we have some advice for you. Yeah, and, and by the way, the deals that uh, Rob Ellen is saying are never going to happen again and you can't possibly get took us seven days to get. Very important note there, though. They're impossible to get if you work with a big bullshit company with a high overhead, like a Podcast One. But that's not what podcasting is supposed to be about. Podcasting is supposed to be about independence. Who says, you know what would really make things better? For some people to come in and treat this like, like I said before, scummy record label owners in the 50s. I'm going to get your publishing. I'm going to own the rights to everything. It's all, I'm going to control the money. You'll get it when I tell you you can. Even though you're supposed to get it every month, you'll get it when I tell you you can. That's what this shit is. But that's not what podcasting is supposed to be. These guys are trying to do, in a haphazard way with less talented people involved what Vince McMahon tried to do to wrestling in 1984 but it's a different world and it's a different platform and it only works if people get roped into it like this you only get your money if you sign a deal with podcast one that's the only offer you're getting you want this money you have to it's easy for us to say fuck you to be quite honest Jim and I are financially secure it's easy for us to say, into the six figures that you owe us, fuck you. Fuck you. You're not going to hold this hostage. It's not so easy for other people. Whether that money is $20,000, whether that money is $100,000. I saw another show. I won't say their name. It's up to them because they didn't name cast. But another show came out saying they're owed $100,000 from their advertising agency. And let's say, I don't think Sarah Silverman is on a soup line, but another byproduct of this not only people that can't afford it is people that can't get out of it he's got her feed maybe or he's got her goddamn 
production team that he just pulled away and then they all dispersed when the company immolated. Or they don't realize that his contracts are bullshit. And and are easily... <laughs> we're violated a long time violated. ago. Yeah, yeah, we're violated a long time ago. And it's one other show, and I won't say their name because they haven't publicly said anything. But a lot of internet sleuths and listeners of their programs have said stuff about a show, a series of shows, owed $1.4 million from their advertising agency. Turns out it was Cast Media. The word is that that person signed a deal with Podcast One. If you're owed 1.4, well, it's a little less than 500 grand that you're going to get up front if you got the same deal offer that we got. I don't know if he did, because quite frankly, we seem to be getting better deals than everyone else does. But that's almost 500 grand with the promise of another almost 500 grand in stock and payment over two years in undefined monetary terms. I wouldn't do that. Again, I don't want to be held hostage, but that's the problem. You could understand why a show like that, rather not say anything, rather not fight the system, rather just get some of their money and then have to deal with the new overlord and hope that somehow it works out better. But it'll just work out the same. That's the problem. Well, and one more interesting point, and we'll move on. You mentioned that show has moved over to Podcast One. How many shows affiliated with Cast Media have we seen or can we verify or have been announced as moving from Cast Media to Podcast One? I believe they've only announced two shows, but it's actually like one show and as a spinoff show. Some more news <laughs> and more news, I think it is, or some news. It's some news, more news. There's something going on. They There's took some the, news again. They took the deal, apparently. Yeah, so there hasn't been a, a mass exodus of, oh, God, let us in. They're not beating the doors down. No, I mean, as we are recording right now, from what we have been told, Colin is right now in arbitration. He's also right now being sued already. And that's not even counting the class action lawsuit against him and Cast Media from former employees. And there's more to come. And Rob Ellen's still wrapping his arms around this guy. What the fuck is going on? And by the way, just give us our fucking money, <laughs> you fucking dopes. Or at least give us the accounting so we can really get mad. So, yes, yeah, so we know exactly <laughs> how much it was you stole from us. We're only estimating so far because we don't trust your figures. Yeah. You know why they're not saying shit? Because the last thing they want to do is sue, and the last thing they want us to do is go to Discovery, because we know exactly what to look for and where to look for it. And who to talk to about it. Bingo. But after, what, four weeks from now, let's close with this. After four weeks from now, it won't matter because they'll have issued this stock, right? That's what they're trying to do under the radar without nothing to see here. Look at the pretty monkey on the wall, whatever. They're just trying to get through with that. And again, he knows what's going on, Rob Ellen. Colin knows what's going on. They've heard what's happening here. They've been asked by reporters, from what I understand, about the accusations we've made here, accusations we could back up with documentation, ac accusations we could back up with emails and text messages from Colin himself. So they haven't said boo about any of this, but they're aware of it. The last thing they want is any attention on it because they know what we're saying is fucking true. Everything we have said about this is true. And there's a lot of people they're fucking with. And this isn't going to end. People don't like do this and like, all right, you know what? I fucked with a bunch of people's lives. Now I'm going to be a decent person. <laughs> now it's time to give back to my community for real and care. No. <laughs> No, it's going to be, who do I fuck over next? No, no, no. I'll have you know that I've already seen the press release. Colin Thompson is, is currently opening a halfway house for girls who won't go all the way. Well, we'll see about that. By the way, if you're hearing this on the air, reminder, this has been legally cleared by Stephen P. New. If you have a problem with anything we said in this, have your lawyer call Stephen P. New. 888-692-8084. We had a celebration this week when everybody <laughs> jumped on the goddamn bandwagon that we've been trumpeting toot toot for so long now about our favorite weasel, your friend and mine, Mr. Thompson. Yeah, a very interesting week after we, I mean, we recorded so much stuff in the last uh, several days and now things are kind of slowing down to the normal frantic pace. <clears throat> I forget when it was, but late last week, Jason Ellis spoke out. Jason Ellis is a skateboarder. 
He's a long time, he had a radio show on Sirius for years. He's been a podcaster, does a show with Tony Hawk. He's done MMA. People know who he is. And he got ripped off by Cast Media and Colin Thompson. He put up a video about it. Apparently, other people who work there may have been helping Colin check out his video, ask any questions. You know, anyone who has any questions, ask any of the show's questions because there's a lot going on here. But Jason Ellis spoke out, that got some attention. And then Theo Vaughn, who is a comedian. Some of you who are around my age, I'm 43, may remember him from Road Rules years ago on MTV. But he's a comedian. He's got a pretty big podcast and a pretty big following. And he's out there. And I saw he's got like a million Twitter followers and probably 700, 800,000 of them are probably real, like normal with Twitter. But still, he's got a widespread audience and apparently some crossover. Apparently some crossover. And the thing is, with a lot of us who talk to an audience, we end up having more of a real Twitter following than a lot of people who they're famous, but they don't really like there's no communication. It's just like, I'm famous. Follow me. And clearly, based on the reaction Theo got to his video that I encourage everyone to check out and his podcast that I encourage everyone to check out, talking about Colin Thompson, cast media, as he put it, his show being defrauded. He says, I I have to say this because this is so interesting and we'll see what this ties into because as we are recording today, this is the day before the podcast one stock goes public. And I have been informed that podcast one's Rob Ellen, as well as Colin Thompson, are both now claiming that Colin never had a guaranteed job with podcast one. (laughs) <laughs> that he was never going to be a part of this, you know, which ignores kind of what their press statements indicated and ignores what I was told. But now they're denying that it was ever a thing. Theo Vaughn in his video says flat out he was told that by them and they defended him the same way they did in that interview that Rob Ellen did with uh, Podcast Business Journal. Well, I watched the Theo Vaughn video on YouTube. And also saw so many of the comments from people who apparently listen to his and our show. That's why there's some crossover audience. Because they were all saying the same thing. They were saying, my God, this is almost the identical story that Theo Vaughn is telling, that Cornette and Last have been telling. He was given the same deal, the same treatment, the same, the same issues started happening. And then the the same money started being owed in the exact same way. And then the same thing was told, as was told to us, as was presented to us. It was almost identical. Of course, he worded it differently. But it's the identical chain of events that everybody has gotten, pretty much that we've spoken to, that have dealt with Colin Thompson, Cast Media, Rob Ellen, Live One, Podcast One. And what's that? Uh, Theo even mentioned, I, we're on first name basis now because we've both been fucked together. Um, what's the crooked lawyer's name? Oh, Neil Sacker. Neil Sacker mentioned him too. and, and that he, he worked was, for Harvey Weinstein. He's, apparently he's yes. like telling people all about that. Yes. And Miramax. Apparently Theo Vaughn didn't think anything more, uh, didn't think any more of that than we did as, as far as not being an endorsement of an attorney. And so he's telling the exact same story because they've done this to so many different people in so many different fields, big and small, as we mentioned, you know, apparent caretaking parents and comedians and wrestling pseudo celebrities or whatever the case. We're all in the same boat with these crooks that are trying to do and are going to do an IPO on Wall Street tomorrow for this company that they're apparently building with fraud, broken promises, misappropriation, and Elmer's glue. Yeah, the stock is going to be going public. And we got to keep a running tally on this thing, don't we? We certainly do. Because again, you would assume if Colin Thompson is selling the assets of Cast Media that Cast Media actually has, which I guess would only be the original productions produced and executive produced and owned by Colin Thompson that Colin will be getting a good amount of stock with this deal, a good amount of money. So it'll be very interesting. 
Very interesting. I wonder if his will be good right away or if he has to wait for two years like he was wanting us to wait. Well, I think we'll find that out. I think we're going to find out a lot of things in very short order. We're going to find out what happens when Colin Thompson gets his ass kicked in arbitration. We're going to find out what happens when Colin Thompson gets sued from a variety of people. We're going to find out what happens when, when Colin Thompson has to deal with the reality that Podcast One's going to eventually cut ties. It's not a, it's not a reality. It's an eventuality. It's that he's gotten too toxic because we're all speaking out. They thought we were all going to shut up. Again, to refresh everyone from the email chain, you can go back. There's a playlist now for it on YouTube. We were told that our money was gone, that Colin's going to go bankrupt and we'll get nothing, or we have to sign a new deal with Podcast One for worse terms. Terms that could be changed by them, apparently, based on the wording of the email, but terms that weren't good for us, we would get a third of the money that they claim they owe us. They also owe us accounting. And they've sent us various sets of numbers at different times. So they claim they owe us the amount that they would give us a third of in cash, a third of over two years in an unknown source, not defined, and a third in pre-IPO stock in Podcast One. We rejected all of this. We said, just give us our money. And the strong arm tactics began. There were two different sets of them. It was talk to podcast one. Colin kept doing it every email. I rejected that we were going to do this. Every email, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them. Rob Ellen tries to go behind my back, gets in touch with Jim. Same thing. Talk. You don't want to talk to me. Talk to my team. Talk to my team. Every email. Talk to my my gut tell my gut tells me you should talk to my team. Well, he ought to he ought to be eating some of those fucking athletic greens he used to sell us the spots for because his gut's wrong. And then the intimidation was, we expect you to keep confidentiality for the contract that we don't have with you. We think you should know you'll be in line for tw- ten to twenty million dollars in damages from a variety of parties. <laughs> If you do anything to mess up this deal. Don't say anything out in public. Yeah. what we were told, so. I would strongly advise you not to say anything. My other favorite thing still is the S, Rob Allen from uh, Podcast One, or Live One, the SEC doesn't take too kindly to these kind of threats. My threat was to call the SEC. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's the, that's like Saturday night's all right for fighting, except when you do and then you get fired. <laughs> Saturday night's all right for firing. The SEC doesn't think, take kindly to threats of people calling them. That's why we tweeted them. That's why our lawyer called them. <laughs> but, and, and, and just and real briefly, just uh, refresh me. Um, I'm trying to think of the dozens and dozens and many, many shows that have taken this deal publicly that have gone over to these whatever the company this these people are trying to put together instead of just going off the grid completely or speaking out now, we know sarah silverman hadn't had a new podcast in a couple months poor thing and i guess pin gillette has been run over to patreon theo vaughn said something jason ellis said something we've said a number of things And we've heard of that one podcast, that one show that did migrate over because they were owed well over a million dollars and figured they could get something so they could pay their staff. Or buy a truck or something. Or buy a truck or whatever. Nobody's knocking this door down is what I'm saying. They got nothing. They're getting nothing. Cast Media was a joke run by a crook. It, was I plain enough on that? I, I goddamn double dog dare you. Sue me. Just give me something to fucking talk about, motherfucker. You fucking crooks. You pieces of shit. You sleep in the street. You drink Thunderbird and <laughs> smell like elderberries. <laughs> You've taken it I too far. I upon you. You've gone too far now. Theo Vaughn said it great. I actually, I love what he said. I think I think the exact quote was, I think he's the Bernie Madoff of podcasting. Yeah, because he made off with our money. Because it is like a Ponzi scheme. When you rob Peter to pay Paul, that's called a Ponzi scheme. And here's another thing. Who does Paul know? Because Paul's always the one getting paid. Peter's always the one getting robbed. Why, could, why couldn't it be even? Why couldn't every once in a while 
You rob Paul and pay Peter back. How come Peter gets the dick into things? That's just the way people say it. You could feel free to say it the other way. Be different. Stand well, out. Well, goddamn, if I'm the only one, then I'm I'm battling a goddamn giant <laughs> tide. We need a movement. Well, a movement has started, and the shows that were ripped off and defrauded by cast media are speaking out. They're not afraid, and we're all going to do, I think I can speak on behalf of Arcadian Vanguard and Jim Cornette, anything we could do to help any of the other shows, we're there. The fact that we're not letting this get by is a good thing. Yeah, and let me just say one more thing to Colin Thompson, because you're younger than I am, Colin, but I'm in pretty good fucking health, and I'll guarantee you that if you get on any form of social media for the rest of your life, I'll know, and other people will too, because I'm going to start a movement, and that movement's going to finish when I'm squatting over your face and I have that movement in your mouth. <laughs> well, hold on now. I don't, know if, <laughs> I don't know if everyone wants to join a movement that has that as the only No, ultimate. that'll be just my <laughs> private movement. But one way or another, this guy can do what he wants in the world of business. But if he's on any kind of social media, or his name is, unless he changes his name to Izzy Frobisher, then uh, I will let people know how they can express their feelings about what he's done for the rest of my life. So I hope he's going to become a monk at a monastery somewhere. It'll probably be more peaceful for him. It makes me happy, and I think it makes the other victims of cast happy, that he's not going to be able to outrun this. This will follow him. But I also think it makes us all happy that you could say the same thing about that hairdo. Of his. <laughs> He'll never be able to outrun the multiple photos of him with that ridiculous fucking hair. You know what? He looks so much like little Pip Sabian that people on Twitter were saying, aha, see, Cornette, you've been knocking him for four years. He assumed a fake identity just to get revenge. It's been Pip Sabian all along. Not to go too far off. But Kip Sabian, I've seen a couple of things with him recently. Maybe worth a second look at some point. What the f have they have they figured out some way to surgically enhance his fucking legs so he's a foot taller? No, and I don't think it's them. I think it's him. I think he's figured out a little bit more of a personality so he stands out. But also, actually, I saw him on the British uh, pre-show, and I thought he was really, really good on that as one of the people, one of the talking heads, one of the people sitting next to Renee. But anyway, back to Colin Thompson. He's not going to outrun this. Again, he stole all of our money for a long time. It's not like he just suddenly, like, oh, all of a sudden the money's all gone. No, it took time. And he was fucking around with the books for a while. We want the accounting. And eventually, he made it so that the only option, by his choice, because he had plenty of time to give anyone a heads up, the only option was I go bankrupt or you take this deal. I get nothing, or you save my ass. That's what that is. He didn't realize we had an option, which was, go fuck your mother. And that's But what then you took. showed me a picture of her, and I said, no, <laughs> even six figures, that ain't worth it. Well, it's six figures for us, and it's six figures for others. It's seven figures for others. We're talking millions of dollars that are gone. Where was that money appropriated? We will find out. Do you think him and this other weasel Ellen are going to get one of those rounds of applause when they foist this bad paper out at the, uh, at the stock exchange tomorrow as we speak here now? It'll be, by the time people hear this, it will have happened. So we'll be keeping track of the value of the stock, where it starts and where it ends up. And apparently they're spinning off the slacker radio, someone told me. I got to check into this. That's going to be the next stock that they spin off from the company that owes all the money to the fucking sound exchange. I don't know what to think is, of all this. Is spinning off kind of like fighting off? Is that, is it, can they fight off? Will they spin off or should they just sit on it and spin in one place? It's like Maud and the Jeffersons worked, Fish didn't. <laughs> Sometimes it works. GE split in half. That very, worked. Very good. Very good. Very good. That's Poor insane. Abe Vigoda. God damn it. Well, he's dead now. Well, he's dead. But you know what? He looked like he was 90 when he was 60. That's the problem. Everyone said that for like 40 years of his life. You look like an yeah. old man. <laughs> and then, you know, Ernie Borgnine was 96 when he died. We kept waiting for him to die. 
Why? Not because not because we hated Ernie Borgnine, but it seemed like he had been old for so long he should be even older than that. Mickey Rooney was pretty old, wasn't he? Mickey Rooney, my God, he fossilized before he quit breathing. Apparently he was a real fucking maniac. I read something recently Dana Carvey was talking about working on Mickey Rooney's sitcom that he had briefly in the early 80s. Like Dana Carvey, no one remembers it because it lasted a very short period of time. It was Mickey Rooney with Dana Carvey, either as his son or his roommate. I forget what it was. But he said Mickey Rooney every single day to set would be like, I was the biggest star in Hollywood. <laughs> I slept with everyone. <laughs> and then he lived another 30 years or whatever. Yeah. And then he was sitting there with his like eighth wife doing fucking insurance commercials where she was really kind of shaking his jowls from the back of his neck so that it looked like his mouth was moving. It's crazy seeing Shatner on like the old Twilight Zone episodes and realizing like he could be in the next commercial. Oh yeah, it's, it, it, again, he's 90 fucking four and still doing first run television shows and major motion pictures and sitcoms, commercials, endorsements. The fuck? He, it, 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 and look at William Shatner and look at George Burns. When they were the same age, 94 years old. What the fuck happened to poor George? He got them. Stars. Well, but it did. It looked like he shrunk. He was dehydrated. They, they, <laughs> they desiccated him. It took all the moisture out of him. He was half as tall as he was when he was 50 years old. He was half the weight. Well, Shatner's pretty plump. I get, you're saying Shatner stretched out all of his wrinkles. You know, remember what he looked like on TJ Hooker? Do you think him and Bruno shared the same wig maker? Oh, when Bruno had the perm, very good. There. Yeah, because uh, let's face it, that was obviously artificially enhanced at that point. But, but at the same point, think about this. George Burns, a man of his time, yeah. a manly man. He never had work done. He never had any kind of cosmetic surgery or whatever. Now, we might... William Shatner can afford the best. He looks pretty good, but let's maybe he's had so many facelifts, they'd have enough left over to make a midget. And maybe if, if he didn't wear that high-necked shirt, you would see nipples on his neck. We don't know what, what he's had done to enhance himself. George was just out there like George was. Goddamn, after Gracie died in 64, he said, fuck it. I'm just going to... Fuck every fucking starlet in Hollywood on my reputation. I'm not going to do anything about my appearance. I haven't heard that about George Burns. You heard that he fucked every starlet? I'm, I'm thinking he was always on those award shows and on the arm of some bevy of beauties. On the award so, show, they put those people together and shoot, shushed them out. They just pushed them right onto the stage. For, yeah, but from the time he was 65 to the time he was maybe 80, 82, somewhere about that, he had to have a little fucking... Comedy relief every now and then, didn't he? One would think. Me and Lana Turner. <laughs> and Judy Garland, I got her her first pills. All right, well, this was uh, the cast media segment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck you, Colin. We're coming for your ass. Yeah, fuck you, Colin. Yeah. Fuck your whole family, Colin. Give us yeah. our money, Colin. Dirtbag. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. All this is alleged. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, once again, if you hear this, it has been cleared by our legal counsel. If you got a problem with that, call him directly. Stephen P. New, 888 692 8084. That's right. Speaking of a bow on stage, Jim, of course, we did go in the time machine and travel to the future here as we are recording. And according to, uh, let me update this. Right now, <laughs> the podcast one stock listed as PODC Courtside Group Incorporated. This was the stock, ladies and gentlemen, you may remember this, that Colin Thompson of Cast Media on an email to myself with the chief executives of Podcast One said we would get for the money that Colin misappropriated of ours, at least the amount he was admitting to in that email. We would have gotten a third of that in Podcast One pre-IPO stock, stock with a valuation before it goes public, and then we would have to hold that stock for two years. Now, it's an important note here. I've recently learned that other people 
who have received some of this stock. For instance, employees of Podcast One, or perhaps Colin Thompson. They're allowed to unload the stock in six months. Uh. You got to wonder if in six months, no matter where this is, is going to be a rush to sell that thing. And then every podcast that has to hold it for another year and a half is going to be fucked. But the stock we were promised pre-IPO podcast one went public today, this morning, the team from podcast one and what a motley crew this is. Luckily, there are visuals, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, good Lord. Yes. Oh, the the one guy looked like fucking Lumpy Rutherford's fucking older uncle. <laughs> his fucking round face and his fake teeth because they were so bright white. They were he was doing like the star bling thing whenever whenever he had his forced smile on his face. Otherwise, he looked uncomfortable, like he had a outbreak of shingles in between his buttocks. <laughs> I believe you're speaking of Kit Gray from Podcast One. He was next to Rob Ellen, who uh, certainly didn't dress up for the occasion. I guess he wants people to think he's Mr. Rock and Roll. He, he, he came right in from Hollywood. But the stock went public this morning, Jim. It opened at $8 a share. That is <laughs> what they were thinking for a while. They were saying they hoped to open between $12 a share and $8 a share. Again, that's what they thought. I guess eight is in between eight and 12, ain't it? I guess so. And if we had received any of the stock, if we had accepted this deal, this bad deal, which also we would have been locked into working with these people who we don't want to work with, we would have received this. It would have opened at eight. And right now, as we are recording, we would have $4.44 a share. It is down 44.5% already on the day. Is it, what time do they open up there? 9.30, 10 o'clock? 9.30 is the stock market. Okay, so four hours, a little over four hours, and it's already worth half of what it was to begin with. And so th this six months thing, you know, good luck. This is going to be one of those deals where, like some South American country, you have to carry the currency in a wheelbarrow. You're going to have to have so many thousands of shares to get any folding money out of it in six months that you'll have to wheelbarrow the thing up to the window. And again, 80% of Podcast One stock will be owned by the parent company, <laughs> Live One. It's kind of like WWE and Vince in a way, but they'll have 80% of the stock. The other 20% is what's being sold or what's being given to either investors or employees or of course, podcasters were offered. They didn't, they didn't counterfeit money. They didn't print actual currency that somebody may have been able to pass off for real they just printed their own stock and it's bad paper and they paid people with bad paper that started at a value that they gave it based on nothing and now is worth half of that in four hours is what i'm saying what i is what i'm hearing as a layman as a yeah. small town bird lawyer that certainly seems like it. And again, if you receive this stock, whether it's six months or two years, you couldn't sell it right away. So you're just watching whatever valuation you thought you had slip away. Now, look, it may rise up again a little bit because it's gone down so fast. I could see some people jumping in and trying to buy a lot, but didn't no, they, didn't no they serious hold? institution's going to buy a $4.44 share of Podcast One, I'll tell you that. Didn't they halt trading because it was dropping so fast at one point? They halted trading four times so far today. <laughs> Uh, but we're not exactly sure what caused the halt. Uh, CNBC has not been covering this stock for some reason uh, on the day. Uh, there's other things happening right now. Right now, they're talking about crypto. So that shows you where their priorities are here in the two o'clock hour. But $4.44 today. And a hey, hey, good job, Rob Ellen. My buddy, my pal that emailed me can't even fucking write English. I wonder if he's a graduate from a major university. Did he go to. Penn State, or did he go to the state pen, I wonder? Hey, Rob, by the way, fuck you. Fuck you, and, Rob. And You know, and here's the thing. We Again, I personally, me, Jim Cornette, speaking in front of hundreds of thousands of people. I'm not even talking to Colin Thompson now. He's He's got one of those padlocks on his Twitter account now, and he's he's gone somewhere. He wasn't up on stage with the rest of these cretins and reprobates. It looked like a goddamn hostage situation they were hostages of the sandinistas that were being traded for political prisoners if they played their cards right that's what they all looked. one woman looked like she was breaking into tears up there in the shot that i saw but nevertheless rob i have said everything about all of you people except the only thing i've not said 
is that your mother sucked dicks for dimes and dive bars and your father sold government secrets to the Nazis. Everything else I've said. And I know that Colin is on the run and either stole the money and lost it or he stole the money and kept it, but he didn't want to pay for a lawyer because he hasn't fucking had his shyster attorney contact me about my comments. But Rob, you're up there with a goddamn hammer at the stock exchange. Even though you dressed like an explosion in a Salvation Army drop box, it would seem that since you're the CEO of Live One or Podcast One or whatever shyster Both. scam you're operating. Both. You'd be able to afford an attorney. So if I've said something that's not true or that you don't like and you feel like you can do something about it, if you're feeling froggy, asshole, fucking hop. But otherwise, I'm continuing to say, fuck you, you fucking crook, in front of hundreds of thousands of people and you ain't doing anything about it. And that, apparently, you're scared to bring attention to this, but it's too late now anyway, Rob, because your fucking scam, the, the, the shit's already worth half of what it was four hours ago. People are catching on. I'm sure you've figured out some way you're going to make money off of this, fucking everybody else. You and Colin, your good, close, personal friend or whatever. But you can't do God dead. Please have a, a lawyer call me. I will print his fucking letter on my website like I did the last time. And I will fucking read it on the air to millions of people. And I will also tell your lawyer to shove his gavel up his fucking ass. Fuck you. Fuck all of you fucking Wall Street crooks. Yeah, no, fuck Rob Ellen. He's a complete piece of shit for his involvement in this. And what gets me is they're lying about stuff now. Because we were told Colin Thompson's going along with this deal. Theo Vaughn just said, he was told, Colin Thompson was going along with this deal. They said, we thought he did a wonderful job to Theo. The press statement they put out was all about, I mean, Colin had his quotes in there. The official yes. Live One press release. His quotes were in there. He was going to be a part of this. We look forward to what we're going to keep doing. There was nothing going to stop. He was going to land there, get a bunch of stock he could sell after six months, more than likely, I think. And every show they got screwed to get screwed a second time. A second time. And now they're saying that Colin had no guaranteed job. Obviously, Colin wasn't there at the stock exchange. None of this has gone the way they thought it was going to go. They thought we were all going to be a bunch of sap podcasters desperate for any money we can get. They all thought we were going to be a bunch of idiots and let these people fucking steal from us a second time. All you have to do is go look at this Rob Ellen guy and go look at this Kit Gray guy. And boy, there are videos and every photo of Colin Thompson with his fucking ridiculous hairdo. Kit, hey, 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 Kit Gray looked like he was looking for that little fucking laser beam sight on a fucking scope. Like he was up there about to be fucking shot on sight. He was nervous. He was shaking like a dog shit and peach seeds up there. While the other stooge was talking. Would you want to ever work with or for any of these people? We no. learned our lesson. We're not going to, you know, the who. We won't get fooled again. Or George Bush, you fool me once, can't get, won't get fooled again. We're not going to get fucked a second time by the same person. <laughs> you're the fucky. We're the fuckers. Yeah. But I hope you're enjoying your stock. Who? Hope you're Who's enjoying your morning. Now? I hope yeah. you're enjoying your morning with your stock. I understand things aren't going very well. Oh, that, cla that class action suit from his former employees? That is another thing happening right now. And I can tell you there are a lot of media members circling this story. And we're telling everyone the same thing. You'll listen to what we've said on the air. We have documentation to back everything up. Anything you guys need, we are providing information of everything we're saying to document it and back it up. We challenge Colin Thompson and Rob Ellen to do the same. Because eventually it's all going to come out in discovery. And eventually you two are going to turn on each other and one of you is going to point the finger at the other one. And I'm going to be there to laugh at both of you. I'll tell you what, that probably from the looks of him won't be the first time that Colin gets fingered. Probably not. But that is the update. Oh, actually, we have some audio. Look at this. Let's give people an example. Do you want to hear what Rob Ellen sounds like? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here is an interview 
from the Schwab Network. This is from the floor of NASDAQ, so uh, let's go to this. Joining me right now from the NASDAQ, Rob Elin, Chairman and CEO of Live One. All right, good to see you, Rob. Big day. You guys rang the bell there at the NASDAQ. And this is um, the first company to complete a spin off, direct listing, and a partial dividend. There's a lot going on here. Explain what's happened. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> There's a lot going they on here. You cannot figure out a way to encapsulate and, and explain this deal. <laughs> Even she doesn't know how to fucking explain this. She's the fucking on-air anchor of the fucking program. Let's go to this. Explain, Rob. Here today. Now, this is, this is the first of its kind. Um, I mean, it took a little longer than we expected, but it's exciting uh, to have the only podcast network trading on a national exchange. And as you just saw, we just raised our guidance substantially um, to 47 to 52 million and four to five million dollars of EBITDA. So a massive jump from last year's 34 million in losing money. Right. It's a really what? exciting time for the company. And I think this is that is a massive jump, isn't it? He's just fucking blurting out numbers and, and loud noises. How does last how year we it, lost all this money, but this year we're doing a lot better. We want you to believe in us this year. Forget about last year. Oh my God! It's a time for the podcast industry to be rolled up. I think it's an opportunity for us to roll up multiple companies in this space, as well as to pick off many of the podcasters who are. Stop right there. Listen to the uh, words what are, he's what using. Are, what are we? What are we? Fucking uh, the the ducks at the shooting gallery at the county fair. He's going to pick us off, us podcasters. And roll everybody up? Roll everyone up, pick them off. This is the problem. You have a mook who had nothing to do with podcasting until his shitty company bought Podcast One, which was a shitty company. So now all of a sudden, because he owns Podcast One and he's the CEO of the parent company, he gets to come out here and pretend like he knows anything about podcasting. Of course he thinks it's time to roll everything up. He wants to roll it up under his stock. He wants to be the Vince McMahon of podcasting and tell everybody what to say and how to do it. Vince McMahon was never a frump, Rob. <laughs> Let's go back to Rob. For a home that can really provide them that full 360 play. So great revenue jump. Um, business is terrific. We did 10.6 <laughs> million for the quarter. Um, our 10.6 million in what? In revenue? In, in what, for what, and at what cost? Largest number in the history of the company. And with this now, and by doing this separation and spinoff, you, I mean, for Live One still owns about 80% of Podcast One, but you're still working on more consolidation. What are you thinking in a year or two or three? What might we be saying? Now, let me just stop it right here to say an overall general principle I have. And Jim and I are in a very fortunate position. Independence is the way to go. We all need help at various points, but a podcaster needs independence. You need to get your own hosting. If you need production support, get production support. If you need advertising support, get advertising support. But you don't need a record label. You don't need a television network. All they can do, the only thing they can do is just dump money into your show. And then they're going to want to own a piece of everything. And then they're going to want a bigger cut of everything. 360 deals. They want to be involved in everything. 360 deal means merch. That means YouTube. That means touring. That means the podcast. This MOOC saw what other people were doing in the music industry 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and not realizing the market conditions of what is the podcasting industry is attempting to do it now. Let's go back to this. Well, hold on a second. Before yeah. we go back to anything, I'll break it down even simpler than that. What the fuck? The whole idea of podcasting is like the whole idea of YouTube. It's that the internet has uh, given us the magical ability to be our own TV network or to be our own record label or to be our own fucking radio station and do our own thing our own way, whatever that thing is. And I'm not, I'm talking about the Royal Hour now. Everybody out here that does a podcast or gets on YouTube or puts something on fucking Facebook or whatever all is, pictures of cats, I don't give a shit, whatever. That's the fucking idea, isn't it? So now they want to do a deal where now everybody's 
independent, doing their own thing, things, suddenly it, they all work for this fucking asshole and they do the shows the way he wants them to the, and say the things that he wants or doesn't want or has, if you're a comedian, a stand-up comic, he's got part of your touring and your merchandise or if you're us, he's not only, he would have strong-armed us into having uh, uh, involvement in our YouTube channel, which is nobody else does, is completely separate from the podcast, but we own everything. It, he's trying to take over everybody's shit that are, that are doing this specifically because, yes, there has been some goddamn dumbing down of entertainment. You used to, like I've said before, you used to have to know how to fucking write be able to write for a goddamn news outlet, a magazine or a newspaper. Now the internet used to have to be able to sing, be able to record your music and get it out where anybody could see it or hear it. There's that, there's that too. But also this is the whole idea. It's do it your fucking self, right? That's right. That's exactly right. And again, I'm not saying there's not room for companies because there absolutely is advertising support, production help, maybe marketing help, advertising help. But it shouldn't be the old model of some big bloated company that's going to have all these divisions that they're going to stock with people they like, may not be people you like, and then they're going to take more and more money off the top. That's not the way it's supposed to go. The way podcasting is and the way the entertainment business is, everything's going the other way. You know what? This is kind of the most legitimate, now that we think about this. This is kind of the most legitimate way to determine whether you're any fucking good or not. Because back in the old days when there were three networks, you could put something on fucking Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on CBS and it would get 35 million viewers by default, whether it was goddamn any good or not. But now people can see and hear every fucking thing. So if a podcast is good or if a TV show is good, People will watch it, but they don't have to. So it's the kind of the ultimate stand or fall on your merits. If you find an audience, then that means that for the kind of people that like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing those people like. And if you don't, well, you know, it, it, you know, mama says it bees that way sometimes, right? That's right. Well, let's go back to some more audio from Mr. Elegance, who thinks he's somehow in a position where he should be the leader of the podcast business. Let's go to this. Yeah, great question. So what I publicly said is I believe the TAM of the industry right now is growing so fast, right? It's about 1.3 or 1.4 billion. It's going to 7 to 10 billion of, between now and, and uh, 2030. Um, what we've said is, is that right now we have the biggest pipeline of podcasts in the history of the company. There's over 100 in that pipeline. Number two is we said there are 10 acquisitions that we are actively looking at that are potential candidates, right? Just like Fantasy Guru and just like Cass. We're looking at potential candidates. That's the funniest yeah. fucking way to put it. We have a bunch of shows in mind that we're going to go and make a bullshit deal to. We're looking at them right now. And, and yeah, Cass, a, a potential deal. Actually, what, three or four months after they sent out emails and, and paperwork to the affected shows from Cass saying that it was a deal that they were going to be doing. And now they're backing up on all of their verbiage. We were told by Colin it was a straight-up sale. The press release announced a sale of certain assets, and that's in quotes, certain assets. Turned out they were going to get rid of their whole team, and only Colin was going to go there. And then all of a sudden it became you have to go work for them. So there's a lot of things we need to track down the timeline of, but let's go back to uh, Mr. Podcast. That have great assets, the distressed. Um, they're fighting through Distressed. a very difficult bank. See, that's the problem. How many other Colin Thompsons are there out there who, because there was a bubble and because people don't know anything about podcasting, try to pour themselves into it, they get involved with these people and they're building unsustainable networks unless you're doing it the right way, which is here's a revenue stream. Here's the share that goes to the podcaster. Here's our share. Here are all the other shares we get from other shows. The business has to work on that. Well, besides that, he said the, the distressed asset, the, the, re, the reason, the cause of our distress was the guy that's then trying to sell all those shows over here to this fucking crook. So he distressed us on purpose 
so that we'd want to allegedly want to fucking go to any safe harbor. And then this guy was waiting with the fucking ferry boat. Key market, they're fighting through a very difficult small cap market. And this could be that opportunity to really roll it up. And our, our team is so experienced. You know, they're a team that built, you know, helped build Westwood One. Uh, they Westwood One fucking sucks, by the way. Anyone who knows anything about radio syndication, Westwood One fucking sucks. But anyway, back to this. Come out of the iHearts of the world, Sue McNamara, rent sales to Howard Stern and Mel Carmazin. This is a world-class team that has that experience that really, you know, is going to be able to provide stability for those smaller companies and give them yeah. an outlet to be able to really be roll up and, and feel comfortable that someone's going to create that value for and that's why they have to change everyone's deals. And that's why they're trying to get 60, 40 deals. And that's why they want 360 deals. Cause somehow they got to pay for all this shit. They're trying to fucking sell everyone on for them. And having the only public currency is going to give us a huge advantage. Yeah. And you talk about top artists, there's music, there's entertainment, all kinds of podcasts. You have the audio group and the music group. Um, name names. Tell me a little bit about that. I like when you bring in things that people understand or recognize because you talked about the growth of the company. You talked about some of the numbers. I mean, how many listeners are we talking about and um, how are you breaking it down for this growth and recognition too? Yeah, a couple of things. The crossover between our music obviously fits together. Just like the music, I don't know if he means Slacker Radio, the company that lost a $10 million judgment, or almost $10 million to Sound Exchange last year, who, from what I've heard, he's about to spin off as the next stock of, uh, of Live One. So I'm well, not wait sure. Wait a minute. How could he spin that off as stock when they said when they lost the judgment that, that they couldn't afford to pay it to begin with? That was only $10 million. I'm not sure. We actually have to find out what I'll reach out to Sound Exchange, see what we can find out about what's going on with that. But let's go back to the MOOC. And everybody else has enhanced the experience, the music listening and audio by adding podcasting, right? Um, we have this very unique partnership with Elon Musk and Tesla, and we've just added a Tesla. Tesla. It's not Tesla, it's Tesla. <clears throat> I'll put my money on this guy's either from the five towns or Merrick Belmore. But anyway, back to this. 125 podcasts into every Tesla car. It's a new revenue stream, advertising stream, sponsorship stream. And so again, that's something interesting. They can inflate how many subscribers they have, I guess, because if it's just automatically put into a Tesla car, whether you subscribe or not, like I get a new car, it comes with Sirius satellite radio. I never sign up for it. So it'll give me three free months. Technically, I'm a subscriber, I guess, for those free months. But then I never come back. Now, these people, certainly they wouldn't artificially inflate their numbers by nefarious means. I would say certainly not. They're a publicly traded company, but it's a questionable thing. Uh, they've, been they've been nefariously inflating everything else, including their dates for this evening. Why is Elon Musk doing business with these people? But anyway. New way for us to reach our audience inside of Tesla's and talk to them to be able to upsell them and do other things with them. On top of that, our musicians cross over. We now have T-Pain with a great podcast with us. And we've done many others. We did with Pitbull. And we see great advantages in that crossover between driving music, driving audio, and driving that content. This guy's so full of shit. He looks like a fucking potato with a potato head. Yeah, and when we look at the uh, big picture here going forward and talk about you're, you're done with the at least part of the spinoff, now what are you hoping to accomplish at least in the near term? Because when you see the What are they in a chart, parking lot? They are in the stock exchange and there are no cars in these indoor buildings, so I'm not sure, unless this is like outside a hospital, I'm not sure. It really is looking great. Yeah, so I mean, to, to start with, we've also talked about spinning off our slacker business, right? Which Bingo. the subscription is, is literally just hockey stick growth, very much like Podcast One. Um, and when you look at those numbers, we've grown our subscription from 400,000 when we took Live One public to over 3 million, and we're on our way to 4 million this year. So, really exciting. And How many of those subscribers have this automatically given to them, like for instance, in a Tesla car and have never sought out slacker? or wanted slacker, because, you know, it's not 2003 or anything. We don't know. Millions and millions of paid subscribers. We're growing slacker. about 65, almost 70,000 paid subscribers a month. 
That's a right. lot. And, it, um, and they're all paying, as you said. I mean, that's another big part of it. What about the advertising business? It's so fragmented. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like there was COVID and then improvement? Where do we stand now on an economy and advertising? I think the overall ad market is in, is, is struggling. Uh, this is a, this is a, it's better than it was three months ago, but still struggling. But interesting enough, in pod part of the problem is in the podcasting, it needs to be on a show by show basis. Bundling a bunch of shows is a bad idea, even if it's the same genre of shows. It has to be a show by show basis. That's why a lot of podcasters should just get their own advertising team that will work specifically with them for their needs. Right, podcasting is actually doing doing very well. And part of the reason it's do, doing so well, because the metrics are so easy to track as a digital experience. And I think, you know, just going back when, you know, in, in my career as I've watched, you know, having those Howard Stearns, having those Adam Carollas, they said, we have an art platform, the Jordan Harbingers. They have such a sphere of influence over over their 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 enthusiastic consumer base, right? Those super fans. This guy's I such a douche. You're going to see uh, continued growth in sponsorship in podcasting. And I think you're going to see very uniquely so many new sponsors have moved into podcasting. Yeah, he's right about that. People who have been using their radio budgets, uh, people who have not been applying their radio budgets to podcasting are finally starting to loosen up. People have been only using it for digital advertising are starting to look to podcasting. That's the way it should be. But he doesn't really have any function in that. They're just trying to swallow up a bunch of shows. Look, when Vince McMahon started getting wrestlers, everyone felt like this was great. After a while, it was like, man, he, he's got everything. He owns everything. It's all about him. We're fucked. He owns my name. That's what this guy's trying to do right here. I don't know how much longer I could listen to this guy. Any closing thoughts? I was thoughts? about to say, closing thoughts is, what is the closing price of the stock oh. before it closes its doors? Hold on, maybe it went up. It had to have gone up. Uh, it went down. It's now four dollars and thirty six cents a share. <laughs> so it's now down forty five. Uh, it's still forty five point five percent. Three dollars and sixty four cents down from where it opened at eight dollars. And uh, why would you buy everybody it? Everybody apprised. Why would you buy it? The only reason you buy a stock is if you're hoping to make money with it. So why would you? Again. I'm just going based on my personal experience with these people, just in our dealings that we've talked about on the air. I wouldn't want anything to do with this executive team, and I don't want anything to do with this CEO, and I saw how they tried to fuck me and give me this stock, and I saw and have talked to people who have been offered worse deals than we were offered with them. So why would anyone want to do business with these people, and why would anyone want to own this stock? Apparently, nobody does. <laughs> It, it doesn't have too much farther to fall in, unless it's made out of rubber and then it'll bounce so it can fall again. Well, that was the update on Colin Thompson, Cast One, uh, Cast One Live One, Cast Media, Podcast One. Apparently, Cast Media still in operation, haven't filed for bankruptcy. Colin's still billing on whatever shows he still has that he could bill off. Where's that money going? We'll find out. I interest you in some stock? <laughs> Would you like some stock instead of me sending you money? I send you the stock. Yes, don't I'd sell like it. Some, I'd like some stock, and it's gone. Just hold it. Just don't sell. Hold it. Yeah, yeah. I'm holding myself right now with your stock, there, pal. Yeah, we're gonna talk about our Wall Street exploits because some of the some of the cult of cornet listeners are regulars out there, and we we love you. Bless your little pea picking hearts. We love you. We really do. All of the regulars out there who keep coming back for more may know we're a little bit late this week. And, and we must share the blame, Brian and myself, because I actually took a vacation day. I'll have you know on Saturday. More on that later. But then also, Brian, you have been the, the bell of the media ball. You have been contacted by some people that it's obviously out in public now. That you've already been quoted. And some people that it is yet to be revealed have been speaking to you about this whole cast media. Colin Thompson is now, he's, he's not even Frank Nitty level. He's not even the enforcer, much less Al Capone. We started out thinking he was the big time crook in this little fucking fiasco and come to find out he's merely, as they used to say, a prawn in the game. And we got bigger fish. 
that are in the process of being hooked and finning for their lives right now. They're, they're fanning those fins out, but they ain't sticking nobody. They're getting stuck. They got hooks in their mouth that's a mile wide and a yard deep, and uh, they're going to be, I think, twisting on vines or lines or whatever the case. Uh, uh, ca cast, cast media was appropriate. We went casting for crooked fish, and we got some big, we got some whales of fishes, crooked fishes. Uh, basically, I, we got some big fish, so cast media was apropos. I, we could do some fly fishing for big crooked fish. We can, we got the net. We can trap them. Brian, it says that we're going to be, if, we're going to be eating crooked fish for a long time at, at last manor in Castle Cornet. Eating crooked fish? It sounds like Baltimore Harbor. No, I think, um, you know, we always said uh, privately, and I think we've even said it on the air, there are two big things here. One of them, and we'll talk more about this, is Live One, a publicly traded company getting into business with Colin Thompson, the tactics they use to try to strong arm shows like us into deals with them. And we'll again, we'll get into more about that, Live One podcast, one Rob Ellen. But the other big deal is Colin Thompson and this financial fraud. Taking money that was paid for podcasts and diverting it elsewhere. Not supplying accounting. Now there are multiple questions about the actual accounting. And you say I've been busy. I've never been busier because I'm getting hit up by members of the media. We made Billboard. We were in Billboard this past week. See, I, I told you, I, I told you my singing would get us into no, Billboard. It wasn't that uh, that got us in there. It wasn't that section of uh, Billboard. So there are a lot of reporters circling this story. There are a lot of investigative reporters circling the story. And, you know, we've gone public and talked about what we have gone through. Theo Vaughn went public, talked about what he went through. Jason Ellis did the same thing. The similarities in all of our stories, and I had never talked to Theo or Jason before all this. Oh, me, me, and, me and Theo go way back. Well, it just so happens all of our stories are very similar of what went on. But there are more people that haven't spoken out. There are more people, you know, we're very public about what we're doing. There's some people that aren't doing that with this. So this, we've been saying it since the beginning. This is a big story and it's going to get bigger. And I still think that's the case. I mean, it's, it's gotten more public and it's getting more attention because it's going farther up the food chain into more potential criminality and or at least the, the very the very least rude behavior. Let's just put it that way so we can get this legally clear. Well, we'll find out what happens, but Colin Thompson is certainly in a lot of trouble. And he can't talk his way out of this one. Uh, and Gabe Fagluzzi, I hope I'm saying that right, a cult of cornet member sent me a custom-made corny coin. On the back of it, it says, in corny we trust and everything. And I'm putting that in my coin collection. How much stock would you like for it? Well, I tell you what, you get send me um how how are we gonna work that with the corny coin? I'll send all the Cornets collectibles customers ten dollars in corny coin, and then when they send it back to me, I this time I'll just keep it rather than sending them anything. So that way I'll come out ahead, right? Right. I get all the corny coins made. See, before the the fly in the ointment was that they were sending me back stuff and I was sending them merchandise and and then I had the same shit I started with but they got the merchandise for nothing so this time I'm going to make up all the corny coins and send them to the customers and then when the customers send them back to me I'm just going to keep them and not send any merchandise out and that'll show them and then I'll get rich right because I'll have all the corny coins back that the people sent me and send out nothing in return. Well, that's that's foolproof. You could stop with fool. Well, wait, what, what's the matter with that now? You're going to have a bunch of valueless currency all to yourself? Mm. What are you going to do with it? I'd have all of it. Who are you going to use it with? Who's going to take that currency in exchange for what? Well, wait a minute. Oh, I know. People that do podcasts. <laughs> 
I can take this meaningless currency and offer it to him instead of the money that I owe him. That's sto- right. that stock, by the way, right now, currently, as we are recording uh, at the moment, is three dollars and thirty seven cents a share. Three thirty seven down from eight dollars on Friday. The next trading day down a dollar uh, two today. Well, that's that's because it dropped so far on Friday that it didn't have so far to fall today. Well, and while we're at it, let's just update that also that uh, Colin Thompson has been asked to not be a part of Podcast One or Live One or whatever this organization is called, calling itself this week to stay ahead of the law. Colin Thompson now publicly they're saying, "Nope, we're we're not we're not going to employ him. He's not going to come aboard." That, that's the latest story they're telling. How many stories does this make they're telling? He was coming, yeah. then he might come, then he, well, we're not sure if he's coming, well, then he's not going to come. Colin told me on the phone that he was selling his company to Podcast One, which of course would have facilitated us being paid back, and him and his team were going there. The email that we got talking about the potential deal that they wanted us to take was all about how we would be continuing with our cast team. Nothing in there, in terms of the way it was written, indicated Colin's not going to be a part of this. Other shows have now come out, Theo Vaughn said it, that he was told Colin's going to be a part of this, that these guys defended him. When we went public and people started asking about that, they were all of a sudden told, reporters were told, from what I understand, that there were no guarantees that Colin's going to have a job. But they didn't completely back away from it. And then when Theo Vaughn went public, and this got a lot of attention in the last few days, when the stock went public that morning, they released a statement that Colin Thompson will no longer be involved or is not going to be with Podcast One or the parent company Live One. Doesn't say he's not going to be compensated, by the way. Doesn't say he's not going to receive stock for cash shows that go there. We need to find out about all that. But apparently Colin Thompson won't be working there, and it took Theo Vaughn coming out for them to finally get there, because he was already so toxic to anyone who already knows the situation. You're asking yourself, how could a publicly traded company move forward with him? It makes no sense. They were trying to. They were hoping that... They did their best. They were hoping that the angry wrestlers and the skateboarders would be ignored. And then all of a sudden it's got attention, and Colin had to go. Well, but so what, would it would it work? Where where are the the live one audience uh, audiences? Where are the live one offices? The podcast one offices out there in the West Coast of Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, California, somewhere. Well, I certainly can't uh, speak to their audience, but I could say I think they're on West Hollywood. Oh uh, well, uh, Collins he's on his own private island now with all the money that he embezzled somewhere. But we don't know that it's embezzlement, and that's part of the problem. We have no idea where all these millions of dollars went. You think about various options, and you're like, well, how could all of that money disappear for any of these things? I mean, there's just no reasonable answer to any of the questions. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, I know they've set a precedent for money disappearing, and and now the stock price is disappearing, and it's gone. So they're, they're dropping like a turd in a toilet bowl is the stock price of this venture. So... I've, they've they've shown a proclivity, you like that word, a proclivity for being able to lose money, a talent for it. So I'm I'm pretty sure they could they could fucking lose money in any situation easily. These these folks. Well, more more on as we as we hear more reports from the real detectives that are on the uh, the cases, uh, we will fill people in on that. We're moving on here with the show. We're going to uh, change topics briefly. We'll get back to some wrestling and some classic wrestling talk in a little bit. But as we've been talking about now for weeks, there's a playlist on YouTube. The Colin Thompson Cast Media Live One Podcast One Saga. We've been a part of it. We've been following it. We've been hoping that... We've been breaking it. We've been breaking it, but also we've been hoping that others would pay attention to it. And we've been very busy behind the scenes talking with a lot of different people. And here, as we are recording, a brand new video by CoffeeZilla came out. The name of the video, by the way, let me get the exact name, Exposing a Podcast Scam. And it's on YouTube right now. It's on my social media. Jim, what are your uh, first thoughts about all this? 
You know, I got to be honest, I didn't know of Mr. Zilla's work. I'll call him Coffee. I feel like now we're all on the same side. But he has a massive following. Now, you know, Brian, we are the number one pro wrestling podcast. Yes, ever. That's without question. But, but currently at the same and time, ever. Yes. Currently and ever. But at the same time, I'm willing to realize that there are four or five people in this world with a bigger audience than ours. And Coffee Zilla's one of them. And, and, and our friend Theo Vaughn, he's done quite well for himself. Yeah. And again, I've, I've alluded to it earlier in the program, but a lot of people thought, ah, they're just pissed off at this guy and they're going to have fun just fucking with this guy, this loser. This weasel Colin Thompson, and it's not going to come to anything because the guy's just some some bum. But we knew that there was a little bit more going on to this thing, and we were following the trail of weasels that were swimming upstream, and we decided to do our own due diligence and investigation on exactly what was going on. And we've been talking about this because we knew that it was bigger than just a wrestling podcast, than just some local yokel, than just us getting screwed over. Then we revealed the number of podcasts and the the fact that he owed a bunch of people more money than he owed us. And then uncovering that the whole plot of why he was doing this, running this Ponzi-type situation, robbing Peter to pay old Paul, was to build this thing up to eventually either sell it or sell stock in it which has now been vindicated. That's exactly what he was doing. And that's where our friend Rob Ellen came into the story. And and people are looking into him and his behavior. But uh, in the meantime, this video that CoffeeZilla just did talks about me. Of course, I was unavailable for comment. You are uh, uh, Your comments are in the piece, as well as other people in other fields of podcasting saying the same thing that we've been saying we were the first ones because we were basically the only ones that don't give a shit because we're in a wrestling business. But finally, other people say, you know what? They're saying it and nobody's fucking with them. It must be, you know, it must be a defense if you can tell the truth about people. So we're going to tell the truth too. And now, not only has Colin Thompson been forever painted as a thief and a fraud and a liar and and in Coffee Zilla's video, you get to see and hear Colin Thompson lying from his own chicken lips, not only about us, by the way, Stephen P. New, 888 692 8084, also heard you lie about us, Colin Thompson, from your own chicken lips, accusing us of shady behavior that Coffee Zilla shot down like that because it was fraudulent, a fraudulent claim. But not only is all that going on, Colin Thompson has been painted like this, but Rob Ellen is starting now to reap the rewards of his treachery because I don't know how many companies he owns, but apparently the stock in every single one of them is dropping through the basement. It's so far underwater, Jacques Cousteau wouldn't buy this shit. So this whole thing is coming down and Not to toot my own horn or anything like that, Brian, but... Well... We knew it all along! We knew it all along. We knew that that he wanted to sell all along. Remember, we wanted a key man clause. That's why we were at a contract for over two years. Because I insisted on an out clause in case there was a sale or any kind of change in management. And he wouldn't give it to me. Because we were starting to smell something that was cooking. Well, we will get to Rob Ellen and Live One and Podcast One probably on the next show or something because we really should well, focus just on the this. Stock, the stock price is just is just comedic. Well, yeah. Now, did, didn't you say actually now not only the Podcast One stock that started at eight dollars it is now two dollars and whatever fucking cents, but didn't you tell me that if Live One, the parent company stock, is it a dollar something? You'd have to have a suitcase to buy dinner with these this fucking stock. And if it goes any lower, they could lose the opportunity for people to fucking trade them on NASDAQ because it's so fucking cheap. Well, like I said, we will discuss it because it's a lot of stuff going on there. The only thing I do want to make an important note, we talked about last time how the statement was issued by Podcast One when the stock went public that Colin Thompson will not be a part of the company. 
no cast management, will be working for Live One or Podcast One, I can tell you that I've heard from shows that Colin's still recruiting for Podcast One. It's like the old WWE thing. You don't work here. You're an independent contractor. He's not working there, but he's right now working on their behalf, and maybe his own behalf too, actually, to get shows to sign with Podcast One. And according to CoffeeZilla, it's not just that the shows get stock. For every show that goes over, Cast Media gets stock. Who's Cast Media? Colin Thompson. So in order to bail him out for what he did to all of us, which is a crime, he benefits as well. And and they're giving him stock in whatever company for every show that goes over from Cast Media to Podcast One. <laughs> And he's trying to get them to go over as quickly as possible because every second that they don't, he gets less money because the stock is tanking and continues to tank, tank, tank. So he's trying to hustle everybody and get them to hurry up and do this wonderful thing so that he can profit from it after he stole their money. Well, on that topic, CoffeeZilla looked into this. Where did the money go? Now, we're going at least in this video, with the idea that it's $4 million. I have no reason to believe it is just $4 million. No, that's just what we've been able to track down and talk to people and do some rough math. And because of the accounting issues that CoffeeZilla also goes into in this video on the phone with one of Colin Thompson's accountants. No. Wasn't that, it was his partner, right? Was that an accountant? It was, it was a former business partner. Okay, former business partner. He didn't know how Colin was getting those numbers. So we nobody knows how much money that he took from advertisers and people that were paying him and misdirected it to other shit to build this thing up because he was starting to, even when he was in financial trouble earlier this year and knew it already, he was offering large guarantees to other podcasters to join cast media. Apparently he was taking the money that was coming in from advertising from existing shows while he was leaving us and them twisting around. He was giving that money to these new shows to sign them up to cast, to make cast artificially look more elaborate and more extensive and more profitable try to unload it through his friend Rob and do this stock scam. We don't know that. I mean, you're just assuming that the way everyone else is. We well, because I'm just a small town bird lawyer. I don't know how all this high finance works. I'm just speculating. Well, the thing is, we don't know that. If we're going to assume that he gave some shows minimum guarantees or he gave some shows money to join the network, we don't know that. Who are those shows, by the way? Who are the shows that were getting the other shows money? I don't think they knew it. How could you know that? Only Colin knew that, and whoever was helping him with the books, which is going to be something that becomes a much bigger story, I think. Colin, I could tell you, was looking for investors in April. So, in March, we reached out about what's going on. We, told, we were told that they're repairing everything to give us our past due amount. Also, as we already knew, our shows were in a very strong position, that we we're going to have a very good year. We knew that. We do a good job. And then all of a sudden, a month later, he's looking for investors. And a month later, it's, I'm going bankrupt. You have to sign a podcast one deal. He had plenty of time to give people a heads up. I'm not going to, with blind faith, assume that he gave all that money to other shows until I see evidence of that. Oh, when well, I didn't say all the money. Because uh, as CoffeeZilla says, also, he built a big, nice, what, $1.7 is a number I heard bandied around house out there in... Hoo-ha-ville. That's right. Well, this plays into the story. This is where Jim and I actually, well, let's just put it this way. Colin lied. We got maligned. We got maligned. We got slandered. That's right. By this guy. And that's why Stephen P. New is investigating all of these various slander statutes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It turns out, we've talked about this house before in the past, right? We heard that he had built a custom home. All, all of these. his employees that are either suing him or quit or got a ra ran away from him like their heads were on fire said, yeah, and meanwhile, he's going to Hawaii all the time and he's taking these elaborate vacations with his 
significant other, and he's got this brand new couple million dollar mansion house out there in in some resort area of uh, of California. Well, and how does that happen? Well, he says that. Well, what happened was Coffeezilla starts looking into the house, right? Finds out that Colin's house in June, at the end of June, and based on what I know, I believe it was two days before the internally discussed closing date for the cast asset sale. So the end of June, Colin goes and moves his house into a trust, and the trustee is an LLC in Wyoming. For those of you who don't know this, Wyoming is now one of these safe havens where people put some of their assets and it turns out the company, well, let me just say this. He put it all into Wyoming into a trust overseen by an LLC. Looks suspicious, right? Looks like he's hiding his assets ahead of bankruptcy or being sued. Coffeezilla asks him. He says he had to do that because Jim Cornette... And these shows had threats, and listeners have been threatening him and his family. So, because of that... Because we told him where he lived. We gave out his address. Spe- he we said specifically. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He said specifically. We gave out his address, and because of that, him and his poor little family were getting all these threats. The problem is, he said we did that so it caused the house to be moved to Wyoming. That happened at the end of June. We didn't go public on the air until the end of July. He lied. He made that up. And also, CoffeeZilla listened to, since we've been kind enough to put these clips on YouTube labeled clearly where everybody can listen to them in their entirety, he listened to them. We didn't give this fucking guy's address. That's right. We didn't say that it was 2414 Spring Hill Drive. Calabasas County, California. Well, the point is, he made the claim that it was because of you and this show and us giving out his address, so he had to go into the LLC despite the fact that... And he used your time machine. Yeah, it's a chronological impossibility that that happened. So then, when called on that, he said, well, actually, Brian Last threatened it in the emails in May. You may remember those emails, folks. I read them on the air. Yes. Coffeezilla has them. Coffeezilla went through him. Coffeezilla said Brian Last did nothing of the sort. The only thing Brian Last said was that he's going to remind the listeners over and over again that Colin Thompson, a podcast once, stole his money. And I am. And I am. And, and we have. are. And we have. I mean, we've we done everything. And we're we continuing we- to do this. <laughs> so he then got called on that. It turns out the website he used to form this LLC, they specialize in asset protection. <laughs> they say that they will help you hide your assets from judgments. And Colin's response to that was that he doesn't write the marketing material. So the same guy that when Pod News got in touch with him about this, sent him a link to an article about libel law. This snake, who all of a sudden, you go watch this CoffeeZilla thing. I don't know if Colin sat at home and watched Sam Bankman Freed and thought, this is a good strategy. I'll pretend that I'm just some doe-eyed knave who had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Oh, I didn't know. I was trying to help everyone. No, you weren't. You were pocketing the money. You were obfuscating. The accounting issues go way back. And they're going to, by the way, now we're going to find out how far back they really go. Every single accountant, and I know at least five of them, that was involved with cast, is about to have their ass dragged to a few different places to explain themselves. We will find out where every cent went. But even if Colin and... It seemed like he was reading off a script. If you watched his eyes, I think I think he had his his influencer uh, holding up cue cards. I think Colin is trying to now throw himself at everyone that he is just an innocent victim in all this. He was an entrepreneur with a lot of spirit who got ahead of himself, <laughs> and then he tried to help everyone by getting this podcast one deal. And he's been so stressed over the last year over losing all this money that he had to go to Hawaii multiple times. Multiple to clear times. His head. Multiple times, they said. Multiple times. It's expensive to go to Hawaii, even if you live in California. It's not a cheap trip. You know, he should have packed a lunch and swam. Would have saved money. So he's out there now trying to make himself 
the innocent guy. By the way, every conversation or dealing I ever had with him, I never got to see that. There was a bit of arrogance. He certainly thought he was some sort of creative podcast genius. Turns out that was a bunch of bullshit. But, you know, I feel bad for He's the a people bubblehead. That, that were really hooked into him because, again, we were using this fucking guy as an advertising agency on an 80-20 split. There, I'll, I'll reveal that so all the people that he was screwing out of a bigger piece. And now the podcast one's going from 60-40 to 50-50 for some people. But we allegedly, used him as allegedly, allegedly. We, we've heard that from people. We we have heard that. But he was we were using as a, him as an advertising agency, and some of these people were contractually tied up to him. They couldn't move their show. They couldn't do anything else with their show. He made decisions for them. And it, now we're hearing the testimony from the Coffeezilla video. He was behind nine months with some of these people. We were mad because we were getting a check. Every other month, but it was just enough, as Mama Cornette used to say, to piss you off. But we don't know. But, but see, that, that comes back to the accounting. We know he sent us money, and at times it was a lot of money. But we don't know if that's what we were supposed if to We get. don't know if it was all of the money. I can tell you, based on the period of time now, where I'm dealing directly with the company supplying programmatic ads and everything, or the platform, I have a reason to suspect that he may not have been paying us our correct share for that. We don't have a breakdown of who paid what. And by the way, here's another important note. He ripped us off and lied to us, and then tried to screw us a second time. Whatever you want to say about Rob Ellen and Podcast One, they're opportunists looking to take advantage of a bad situation. Colin tried to fuck everyone twice. He also screwed over the advertisers. These people paid millions of dollars for podcasters, influencers, celebrities, whatever it may be, to talk about their products on the air. And all those people did it. And more than likely did it well, probably not as well as us, but did it well. Yeah. They weren't paid. So the advertiser, we were defrauded on our end and the advertisers were defrauded on their end. You know what? When we haul him finally, I, again, it's going to look like the, the line in airplane waiting to slap the guy around. But when he finally does get hauled into court, I'm thinking, Brian, here's the deal. We know he's probably so broke now he can't pay attention. He's just a, a gum-bumping sack of snake feces now trying to con people and stay out of jail. What about if we do this? When the judge finds him guilty, since he can't pay us back, he gets sentenced to be our butler. Yeah, I don't know about that. Think about the programming. It, or maybe the maid. Maybe he, get, he gets sentenced to be our maid. I'm thinking we could get our money back in the programming of making him wash jackasses and do various things with a wash tub. Hey, you know, if we're going to talk about this, let's let people actually hear him. We did this once before where we played audio of him talking about how to get paid if you're a podcaster. You may remember yeah, that clip. Yeah. Stay away from me. We've got permission. Here's him talking with Coffeezilla. The question, I believe, is... Where is the $4 million? And again, I'm not going with the assumption that it's $4 million. Could be much more than that. And I have reason to think he was cheating everyone a lot longer than some of us thought. Here's Colin Thompson. Where did the money go? I began to reach out to everyone, starting with Colin Thompson, to ask for his side of the story. You're being accused of basically stealing $4 million. Your clients say you defrauded them. What's your side of the story? Yeah, I appreciate you reaching out. You know, um, I wanted to talk with you because I, I appreciate the work that you do. Um, I appreciate the, your journalistic integrity and I know that you're going to tell a fair story. Cast is sort of the dream of, of the vision of independence, you know, free speech, not bound by sort of corporate norms, um, the ability and the backbone, backbone to support visionary, talented, unique, independent voices, people like Theo. For those of you who are not seeing this yet, please go out of your way to see it. It appears to me. Is he in the closet? Well, that's he another He looks story. like he's in his closet. No, he looks, he's broadcasting from his closet. Colin Thompson is in the closet. No, it there. looks like those are cupboards. It may, it may be his office. Who knows? I mean, I thought a... it was one of those designer closet things. Well, what I was going to say is if you look at his eyes, to me. Darting. They're going back and forth. They're shifting from left to right. 
He's reading something, I think. But let's go back to this. Um, you know, cast perspective was independence is the product. There were plenty of times where, you know, we believed in the show. Uh, it ran into trouble. Maybe it was canceled in one way or another. And the question was, where's the four million dollars? Yeah. <laughs> canceled, quote unquote. And, and we stood by our creators, right? Continue to support them through that time, you know. When maybe a more corporate organization wouldn't, we we weathered the storm together. Um, we believe truly that that's what you know was unique and special. We about had no storms mo- until you stopped paying us our advertising money. We were weathering everything just fine. It was all sunshine, lollipops, rainbows, and waterfalls. Our audience was growing by leaps and bounds. You stole our fucking money. Where is the money? That's the question. Continue, Brian. My heart and soul is still in that vision. I'm a musician originally um and i got into this because i wanted to support shows that were bucking the trend going against the grain but unique and important to the broader dialogue um what the fuck is he talking about (laughs) where is the four million dollars not what can you say to try to make yourself sound sympathetic i'm a musician good for you take your guitar and hit yourself over the head with it or your piano whatever it may be but where's the where's the four million? I mean, I mean, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Every everybody's got a grand vision, but the grand vision yeah. when it you know when we get to this point, everyone wants to know where the money is, not what the vision is. Sure, you know we built an infrastructure, a cast that I wasn't in tremendously proud of. I believe that over the years we generated better revenue for creators. Um, paid them out more than other podcasts would necessarily be able to because we invested heavily in an infrastructure, took an individualized approach, anecdotally. Um, you know, we. But that's you're saying word? you pay out more, but that's another I, I word. mean. He just, he's just throwing he's just words in there. Shouting out words, loud noises. Anecdotally. That's a sentence. He didn't say anything before it or after it, just anecdotally. I mean, clearly that's. You know, kind of not true, right? Oh, wait, wait, but you you asked for my story. Do you mind if I I just just tell just tell the story? You know, we're getting to the financial difficulties. Season. Sure, sure. Uh, it says something when you ask someone a very simple question, although there may be a complicated answer. Where's the money? Where's the missing millions of dollars? You would like him to start answering that question, even if it's long and complicated. Get started with it. I'll follow you through it if you'll address the issue. Why would you need to preface that with, I want to tell my story? Because he was born a small black child in a log cabin in Missouri. Um, you know, uh, our vision, it really worked. Creators benefited, made, made a lot m- more money than, than they would have. Um, uh, and many creators are, you know, do have more money in their pocket now because of that. However, During the period from February 2022 until February 2023, our unit economics changed drastically. Our revenue per download, which is an important metric for analyzing sales performance, you know, free from content performance considerations, dropped by 58%. Um, In other words, over the course of those 12 months, the revenue that we could generate on one download uh, moved down by 58%. You know? What the okay. fuck is he talking about? Yeah, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean if you took every show across the network or that he was distributing or working with and you took all of their downloads and then weighed that against all of the money coming in, it's making less? Or that each ad is like he's not in any way specific about what this is. And again, it doesn't reflect what we were experiencing. Our rates did not go down. Our audience went up. We were charging more for advertising, if I was eyeballing that correctly, instead of less. And and we were supposed to be getting it. It was getting paid. That's the other thing. It's not an issue of where'd the money go? I wasn't paid. It was, it wasn't the advertisers didn't pay us, so we can't pay you. It was the advertisers paid us. Oops. It's gone. And it's gone. Yeah, and I think that's important to note. The advertisers paid them. The financial problems aren't because they weren't getting the money in that they expected from the advertisers. The advertisers paid what they were supposed to. The problems were outside of that. It never got to us. And Colin, again, if you have to preface a simple question with a long, sympathetic... A tale of sorrow and woe that would bring a tear to a glass eye is not what we are looking for from Colin the Weasel at this point. It's an accounting of himself. 
Now, one of the big theories that's come out, and again, until we see evidence, I'm not assuming anything when it comes to this stuff, is that Colin was paying certain shows minimum guarantees. No matter what business they were doing or weren't doing, they got minimum guarantees. And because of that, I assume instead of breaking those deals, he decided not to pay other shows on top of whatever else he did to divert the money. Well, because those apparently, from what I was hearing, were new deals. So if if he got them happy, while the other people are waiting on their money, they've gotten money from him before, now they're waiting on the money again, he'll get these new people paid for a little while, and then this will all be fucking off of his shoulders, and he's on easy street floating down Wall Street. That's right. Well, let's play a little more audio, because again, you and I come into play here. Yeah, get, get to where he slanders me in a legally actionable fashion by claiming that I threatened him when I didn't do that. Here it is. Uh, I believe this is the spot. Coffeezilla talking about Colin Thompson blaming Jim Cornette and myself for him putting his house earlier than that into a trust run by an LLC in Wyoming that was formed using a company that advertises itself as protecting ass. This is amazing and found that Colin Thompson indeed bought a $1.7 million house the same year as his financial troubles. And I also found out that right about the time he was talking about declaring bankruptcy, he moved that house into a trust where the trustee was a Wyoming LLC he set up, which from where I stood looked a lot like hiding assets from a bankruptcy right before a bankruptcy. But when I confronted Colin about this, he said, I had things completely backwards. The truth is he was hiding his property for a totally different reason, a very sympathetic reason. We anonymized our address because we were getting threats um, in the the last 30 days. There was, there's been, you know, there's been nothing on I think you can see, yeah, I think you can see though how other people might see it another way where it looks like you're trying to shield it by hiding it from a personal name into a trust owned by an LLC. I mean, I'm just, I, in a very favorable well, state. I assume you listen to the just, Jim Cornette episodes where I'm they just specify where I live, right? I, I assume you listen to the Jim Cornette episodes where they specifically call out where I live. We were really, really concerned. We were getting threats. When I heard this, I was pretty alarmed and I totally understood his fears. So I went to go ahead and look for the episode where Jim Cornette apparently specifically called out where he lived, but it wasn't there. Actually, Jim Cornette never mentions a specific address, but a general area. But way more damning for Colin's story is the fact that that episode came out in July, but Colin formed his LLC for moving the house in June. Bingo! Before these threats ever happened, he's creating this shell company. So I found it very hard to believe. I pointed this out to Colin and he said this, quote, they revealed general details and I anticipated the possibility of this happening. Brian threatened it very specifically in my original email exchange with him back in May. So I got a hold of those emails. There was no threat in them. Instead, Brian said things like, consider this a serious caution. We're gonna make sure to endlessly let all listeners know with great detail that Colin Thompson of Podcast One stole our money because he doesn't know how to run a business which is sort of true. This guy doesn't know how to run a (laughs) (laughs) Nice try, Colin. Good job. Good job, Colin. Lying about us on video. Thank you, Colin. And you know what? Thank you, Colin. That's what I'm going to say after what he just did there, this idiot. Thank you, Colin. Stephen P. Newell have something to say about this. Write your lies down and keep dates down so that you know what story you're telling, pal. And again, that was his story on this day. That doesn't mean it was his story the days before it or the days after it. Everything's been changed. Look, these guys are all in crisis mode right now. Podcast One, Colin Thompson, none of this has gone the way they expected it to. Even the worst case scenario, they didn't expect all this. They didn't expect any of us to hold our ground and say, fuck you to your legal threats. They're bullshit. These these segments, let me say it here. If you're hearing this, this has been cleared by Stephen Pinu, 888-692-8084. Get even with Stephen. Jim, anything you'd like to say about Stephen? 
Well, uh, yes, there is that I would like to say, first of all, thank you again to Colin, as you said, for giving us some more information or some more ammunition. And Stephen is also, uh, as we speak now, today he has been on the phone with a variety of different enforcement agencies over potentially what might be civil liability and what might be criminal liability and what statutes in various states that Mr. Thompson may have evaded or eluded or uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Various statutes he has committed offenses against. And Rob Ellen, I, I just got to ask you as once again, the maven of Wall Street, this guy told me in the poorly worded, drunken sounding email that he sent me trying to get me to talk to his crummy company. He said it's a hundred million dollar company. If their stock is trading for barely above a dollar a share, does that mean there's a hundred million shares of that shit? In which case you'd need a U-Haul truck. You might as well use it for toilet paper. It'd be cheaper in the long run. Has that company, has their stock ever been worth anything? I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't believe any serious institution will ever hold any of their stock. And I, as an investor, would never consider spending any of my money on this stock. Was it ever worth $5, you think? It may have been. It may have been. Then then how how bad a businessman is Rob Ellen running a company where stock was maybe $5 and now it's a dollar and 14 fucking cents or whatever. Well, again, I think there's going to be a lot more on this because, you know, the thing that's happened... Oh, we're not done. Nobody's done. Well, beyond that, it's not even us. You know, what happened is because we came out first and we were public, and then through us continuing to talk about this, we've heard from numerous people, reporters, investigators, people looking into various parties involved in all this for a variety of different reasons so this is certainly not the end of it i do want to make one prediction though this motherfucker that we are just saying fuck you to was ringing the bell at the opening of trading on, on wall street the other day and by the end of the oh. day he, he looked like he'd been slapped around by a wet trout but this is not just a small time thing this is people's money that they are ta not only have taken, but are trying to take. And a lot of people now are starting to say, hey, what's going on with well, all of you son of a bitches? Well, Jim, let me jump in. We got a little bit of news. Uh, the Verge, Amrita Khalid, I spoke with her, has just put up an article, Why Everyone in the Podcast World is Mad at Cast Media. <laughs> Whitney Cummings, Theo Vaughn, and multiple creators say that the podcast network founded by Colin Thompson owes them six or seven figures for ads sold on their podcast. I got to go through this article. That's the first time I've seen anything indicated that Whitney Cummings is saying that she's owed that amount. Because that begs the question. Again, the question is, if he was paying these advances or these minimum guarantees, like it's fucking WCW, to any of these other people, who was he paying it to? What shows were getting that money? Poor old Whitney wasn't getting hers, but, but that's, that's the point. The point that I was going to make is, whether this Rob is the head of a $100 million company and he decided to get in bed with this weasel from a fucking a slaughterhouse somewhere, and he decided to get in bed with him, which means he is suspicious as well, and people are investigating all of this, and we've been saying this, and the only people we haven't heard from is Rob's lawyer or Colin's lawyer. So apparently that means they don't have a leg to stand on. And you know what they say, Brian, you know the old saying, if a tree falls on you in the forest and nobody is there to see it, does it really hurt? Well, the answer apparently is yes. And these motherfuckers are getting trees launched at them, and they can't do dick about it. Again, I have to go through this article, but I just want to hit, I'm just flipping, not flipping, but scrolling through it as we're doing this. Here's the end of it. Uh, Thompson, uh, he says that in an interview with Yahoo Finance last week, Ellen indicated that the company Newcast was in a bad position and that turning its assets around was the point of the deal. Quote, we've bought a very distressed, troubled asset he said, of the still-in-the-works IP acquisition 
still in the works, IP acquisition of Cast Podcasts, adding that it, quote, owed a lot of money to its podcasters and couldn't really afford to pay them. <clears throat> Thompson responded to numerous allegations against him in a phone call with Hot Pod on Tuesday. His version of events is this. Cast got underwater due to this year's soft ad market. <clears throat> and the company fell behind on its payments to creators. Thompson met with investors in March and claimed that none of them were interested in investing in podcasting, or perhaps a podcast company that's completely not profitable because the money's gone. Who knows? He finally met Ellen in late April, and they began exploring a way for Podcast One to serve as a potential lifeboat. <laughs> Here's a quote from Colin. I don't know if that's a lifeboat or a slave ship. But again, he's an idiot who got to this position, and it's unfortunate that a lot of us, in just trying to do what's best for our shows, propped him up. But he's a bubblehead. He's a bubblehead. And this is the position he got himself into right here. And he came last straight. Podcast One has as good of a reputation as anyone in the space. They were coming up with deals for cash shows that were strong. No, they weren't. Again, are you a stock market moron? Do you really think anyone... And by the way, you're the one who lost anyone's money. Why should anyone think you have any idea what the fuck you're doing? You idiot. Put on a clean t-shirt when you're going to be interviewed. Ah, get out of the closet. You're going to be on fucking Skype. While Thompson acknowledged that Podcast One originally wanted to offer him a position at the company... He stressed that it wasn't his priority. Here's a quote. I should say that was explored early on, but it was never a focus for me. I never tried to negotiate anything, he said. Thompson's real priority, he insisted, were the creators. As to videos by Vaughn and the hosts of the Jim Cornette Experience, Thompson has a mixed response. Quote, I don't deserve some of the things that were said about me, but I do deserve some of the things that were said about me, too. <laughs> Thompson said he acknowledged that some creators may have been unhappy with the deals offered by Podcast One or being left in the dark about cast financial status for so long. He understood that creators were angry with him and guessed that many of them felt led on by him. That's a quote. He denied all allegations of fraud, though he'd stressed that there were business decisions he regretted. And it ends with a quote, I've done plenty of soul searching and reflecting, and I think as a business leader, you have to weigh the pros and cons. So there it is, Colin. Can I make a prediction well, before we uh, say anything ahead. else? I was just going to say more cons than pros in this, but go ahead. He ripped off people and lied and obfuscated, and he's still trying to spin a story right now that's bullshit for months, maybe years. Actually, definitely at least a year. So I'm not even going to say months, year, maybe years. He did this. He did it to people in states all across this country. I predict Colin Thompson's going to go to federal prison. That's my prediction I'm making on the air right now. Colin Thompson, everyone's worried about who's going to sue him. He's going to prison. He's going to prison. He fucked around with millions of dollars across state lines. This money was coming to people like me in New Jersey. People like Jim in Kentucky. People like Theo, wherever he is. <laughs> Never let Some, wherever he is, somebody ought to call the FBI. Wherever anyone is. That money was paid by an advertiser, who knows what state they're in, to cast media with the explicit reason being cast media takes their cut, they send the rest of the money to the creator in other states. Never happened. Colin Thompson's going to federal prison. That's my prediction. They may like him there. They may really like him there. Well, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, he said he was doing some soul searching. And I think, uh, Colin, you ought to do a bunch of soul searching. As a matter of fact, get a whole group of soul searchers to help you. Go get Chuck Brown himself because you're going to feel like busting loose where they're going to put you. You didn't even snicker at that one. No, no. Chuck Brown and the soul searchers. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm still just, you know. Yeah, you're just The living. fact that this guy just thinks it's okay to lie and just constantly lie and lie and lie and lie. And he's going to somehow talk his way out of it. That's what's offensive. 
As Aunt Lola would say, he lies like a rug. He certainly does. And with that, Jim, we will take this short commercial timeout and return after this. And from speaking of spending money, since it could have been a dark and dreary holiday season around Castle Cornet and Last Manor, if it wasn't for the fact that we were smart enough to have other streams of income besides the weasel, a, a Colin Thompson has been exposed for the fraud, the charlatan, the carpetbagger that he is all over every kind of media. I think I've seen billboards. Does this man owe you money? He's been on the news, he's been on the websites, he's been in, on podcasts. Whitney Cummings came out and said, well, it's a, just, what, she didn't even cuss, she just said it's a, it's a darn shame that people like him exist or something oh, no. to that effect. Hold on, I have the quote here. Uh, the whole thing is a nightmare. That's the quote from Whitney Cummings. Well, there you go. And uh, so what is the latest that we found out? You know, I looked up the word disparagement. Brian, you know, I got the American Heritage Dictionary here, the, the third edition. When was this published? This is the one I've been using for 1994. So as long as the word hadn't come out in the last 30 years, I'm pretty good here. And uh, when I go to disparagement, now I've lost the, the goddamn pay. There's dissemble. That's a good one to conceal the real nature or motives of. Or dispossessed to deprive of possession, e.g. land or property. Uh, but when I go, what was I doing? Disparagement. To speak of in a slighting way. Or belittle. And we were accused of doing such a thing. And that was proven completely false and without merit. Right from the guy's own chicken lips. because. He can't even keep the chronological order of his lies straight. He accused us of doing something and making him do something that he did before we did. See? I said it perfect, just like that. And again, what makes it a deal was what he said was provably false. He said something that was ridiculous, something that was a chronological impossibility. He said it about Jim and myself, the Arcadian Vanguard production, about all of the shows that you guys listen to. He said that we did something causing him to do something called hiding your assets, <laughs> that we did something to cause that, despite the fact he did it before we ever said a word publicly. But that's okay, because uh, our friend Coffeezilla there said, you know what, just to make sure, just to make sure, I went back and listened to the Cornet and Last shows, and... It just wasn't there. It wasn't even Owen. It was fictitious. It was Colin. He was there. You know, and it, <laughs> I was what? just going to say, this, this guy is such an idiot now, and he's like a deer caught in the headlights that everybody in the known, at least English-speaking world, is looking for him to ask him where all the millions and millions of dollars that he stole is. And again, he shouldn't be able to work anymore in podcasting, and he shouldn't be able to go out there and work with advertisers or creators. He's proven that he can't deal with that like a non-criminal human being. <laughs> a couple things I want to uh, mention to you, Jim, from an article that came out in Bloomberg by Ashley Carmen: a fight over missing ad money royals the podcasting in the, or podcast, excuse me, royals the podcast industry. And let me scroll down here a little bit because some information we're finding out. Yesterday, as this was published, which was on September 14th, yesterday, Alex Weiss, a podcaster who goes by A-dubs, filed a lawsuit echoing the previous allegations. The case claims that in September 2021, Cass signed a two-year deal for her, excuse me, with her, for $550,000 overall, which would be paid in equal monthly installments. In June 2022, however, Cast allegedly stopped making payments. Lawyers for Cast did not respond to a request for comment about the lawsuit. Let's stop there before we go on any further. Timeline-wise, that's very interesting. Because if you remember what Colin said in the CoffeeZilla video, February 2022 to February 2023, 
is where everything changed and it hit the wall in June. That's when he stopped paying her. It hit the well, wall. Yeah. It hit the wall, and right away, he just stopped paying, just like that. Well, you hold on here, and also let's back up and do some mathematics because I've never heard of A Dubs. I'm sure, she's a fine young lady. I've heard of B Dubs. They got great wings, although I, they're a little skimpier on the portions than they used to be. But nevertheless, but five hundred and fifty grand did you say over two years? That would be two hundred and seventy-five grand a year, right? Correct. $275,000 a year, do it as 20 something thousand dollars a, a month, right? Or about five grand, whatever the case. What did he get from that from her? Was she just saying, okay, you sell the ads and keep them? Because I don't know what her audience is, but uh, somebody's getting fucked there. What if, if she's got a popular show, she's getting fucked. If if she doesn't, he's getting fucked. And why would you? I'm not sure why you'd do that. But again, if she doesn't, then we don't know anything about her business. So we're just making some yes. guesses here, hypotheses as we talk about this. If let's say her show couldn't justify that amount of money, which you would argue that's when you have a discussion with her or her management or whoever it may be. And you say, can we do something? We're having issues. It says in June, they stop payment. Just stop sending any money. Yeah. Just like that. Which right away puts that person in breach of contract. We need to mention. But how would that affect everyone else? If you're not paying the person you have the minimum guarantee to. But the money is still coming in. You know, the Jim Cornette programs were still billing. We're still making revenue, that money was still coming in. Where was it, if it wasn't associated to someone like Alex Weiss, because that's what we're being told. He took the money that everyone was owed and he paid other shows that had minimum guarantees. Where was it going? Because this is June. Let me go back to this. In the suit, Weiss claims that around November 2022, Thompson's lawyer emailed to say Cast wanted to terminate her contract in part because the content of her podcast was, quote, obscene <laughs> and, quote, vulgar. <laughs> and by the way, this is Colin who in that video that he just did, that interview where he looked awful, I'm not even talking about physically, I'm just talking about the way he presented himself in that CoffeeZilla interview. Remember what he said about cast media? Where's the $4 million? I had a vision and a dream and we were going to buck the trend and fight the system and let people speak free expression. They hit her with obscene and vulgar. This skateboarder. What was she saying on that show that was so can obscene and vulgar? she be more vulgar than we are? And if so, how can we step up our game? According to the lawsuit, the lawyer made her an offer. If she agreed to terminate her original contract with Cast, she would then receive three months worth of unpaid installments. The lawsuit claims that Weiss entered into the agreement but then never received the money and is still owed $68,750. So, in addition, so well, hold on. In we, addition to financial damages, the lawsuit is also seeking an audit of Cast's accounting, which Weiss go. claims she's entitled to under her original contract. Boom. Boy, they better start working a copy machine overtime on Collins' accounting. But is the th so they say they trump up some bullshit. Well, we got to get out of this deal. So we'll give you part of what we owe you if you will get out of this contract. Okay, yeah, let me get out of this contract with you people for part. Of and then they don't pay her the part. You know, Vince went to Brett and said, I can't pay you. Negotiate with Bischoff again. Whatever was true or what it wasn't, Vince went to Brett and said, I can't pay you. I can't afford this contract. Go talk. To Bischoff. He didn't say, Brett, come into my office. I have to fire you today for <laughs> vulgarity and obscenity. And, and Brett's like, what the fuck? I'm sorry. But, you know, if you take this offer here, you'll get some money. This is a, such a shady way to do business. Well, it's, it's just it's uh, heartwarming to know that a lot of people are finding out. Could this story, again, has been covered in so many, ev everywhere from Billboard to Bloomberg to Pod News. And, you know, 
Once again, I, I think I said this on your show a couple of days ago. When this thing started, it was our money, and obviously we were pissed, and we were going to be talking about it anyway, but it didn't take too long to realize that there's this fucking thing was a lot bigger and involved a lot more people and was going to get a lot more attention, especially when this stock scheme got involved and is now exposed and what they're the podcast one new company stock and the live one parent company stock put together one share of each will not currently buy you a fucking hot and juicy Dave's single at Wendy's. It wouldn't get my cappuccino in the morning. So, and, and, and you can fucking probably survive a little bit longer by drinking the cappuccino or eating the fucking Wendy's Dave and Buster's fucking juicy goddamn single. You see what they're doing now? Every day they put out another press release to try to turn the tide a little bit. Like, we have a well, big stock buyback now. Yeah, you're buying the stock that no one else will buy. You're buying your own stock that no one else will buy. Good job. Ex explain that to me, Brian Buffett, because it, that's the thing. Now, how are they artificially trying to inflate the price of their stock with their own money by buying some of it back so it looks like more people want to buy it? How does this work? Help well, me. I'm not exactly saying they're doing that, and either are you, but I'm saying that. How would If someone was doing that, how would that be done? Well, again, you're seeing movement in the stock. You look for some sort of positive signs in the stock. If you're someone who's willing to avoid things like, you know, financials, and you're just looking for a stock that's going to make some moves, you're watching to see what's going to happen. If it looks like a bunch of people are jumping in and buying something, you may want to take the ride if you're that kind of investor or that kind of trader. Me, I go the other way. <laughs> and I look at other stocks that actually make some sense, may have a dividend, may have some chance of some fucking growth i'm gonna make some money out of <laughs> not this again not only would i not buy it jim and i said no to accepting it we turned it down to even have it <laughs> we didn't we didn't want our fingerprints on it that's right and you know there's gonna still be a lot more and how do i put this so that it reveals a little bit but not too much you know forensic accountants make a lot of money because they're able to go and really put shit together where there is a lot of questions. And there certainly are a lot of accountants that work for cast media that probably don't want to spend a ton of money on lawyers, which based on what we're all learning may be something they would have to do. And I think when the books have been played with possibly going back much earlier than any of the signs that anyone noticed, we're not talking about getting accounting from Colin anymore. I mean, that, we can't trust Colin. And if Colin's the only one who had access to anything, it's going after his bank records. And then it's going after the actual orders from agencies and advertisers for everyone. Because Colin's books are fucked. We all know that by now. And no one could trust any of those accountants. The most recent one, Michael Calabretta, was the one who sent me two different sets of numbers <laughs> for what we were owed at different points. Well, he just said, pick the ones you like best. So I think that's going to be a big part of the story now. Everyone knows this happened. Everyone saw Colin in that CoffeeZilla video. You see what kind of weasel he is. We're calling him a weasel based on our personal dealings with him. He's a weasel. Steals other people's money and then tries to make himself the victim. And if he wanted to look like somebody, he needs to get out of that closet. Yeah, sitting there, in, obviously, it, with his laptop on Zoom or Skype or whatever, sitting in his closet with his goddamn shelves behind him with his big fucking weird-looking head there. It looked like he was hiding from law enforcement on the video. Get out of the, your closet, Colin. Yeah, you see, that was, I think, part of a strategy. He didn't do it from a big, glorious room in his house. He didn't do it from his bedroom. He did it in the darkest area, wore a dirty shirt, looked disheveled, and then wanted to tell his story. Let me tell you my story. You know what the problem is with his story? There's hundreds of people that are also in that story, and not one of them would agree with his version of it. That's a problem. He's a bullshit artist, and he's been one for a while. And there's going to be more stories coming out about this. I'll tell you one other thing, and I don't know how much we want to get into it today, but we could talk about it in the future. 
There's a guy who was on the CoffeeZilla piece, Dustin Knaus, Collins, I guess, former business partner. I don't think they're still working together, but that's how he was introduced on this show. And he was involved with production. And there's a story about how he got fired that is so despicable, so disgusting, that it speaks volumes to the character of Colin Thompson. But I think we'll save that for the drive through But I saw this story, and I know a couple other people that know this story, and everyone had the same reaction. You know, we all have our enemies, especially us weirdo wrestling people. <laughs> we all have our enemies. Even those people, there's some things you're like, you know, I wouldn't do this to them. I would lay off of Russo if this had happened to him. So we'll talk about that on the drive through but there's more to come. And hey, the stock market's not open today. It's the weekend. It's Jim's birthday. We'll pay attention to this big stock. They keep putting out these statements. Let's see what the next big statement is. And we'll take it from there. But you know what? That's how they got, uh, that's how they got Capone was the accountants. That's how they get all the big white collar criminals is, is the accounting then the accountants and the people who flip instead of serve as in flipping sides instead of serving time. I can think of five different accountants. How much money do you think they want to spend on lawyers? And how much time do you think any of them would want to go to federal prison for helping out in whatever financial games Colin was playing affecting us podcasters all across the United States? Well, at least if they either have to serve time or et cetera, they, they'll be able to figure it out because they're good with numbers. Once again, if you're hearing this, this segment has been cleared by Stephen Pinu, the greatest attorney in the world. 888-692-8084. Get even with Stephen at newlawoffice.com. Is the stock market a good place to invest your money, Brian? How's the how's the podcast one stock going? The live one stock going? How are the the big high muckety muck players on Wall Street reacting to the stock since we've been telling them about it for the past few weeks now. Not so well. And again, we are right now in the latest installment of the saga of Colin Thompson Cast Media Live One Podcast One, something we were dragged into because Colin Thompson took our money and we still don't have any accounting and we're still owed a lot of money as so many others have. More shows have come out in the past week, Jim, but as far as the stock goes, we are recording on the weekend. The market is closed. So obviously, this does not reflect where it will be in the future, but it closed at $2.05, <laughs> the podcast one stock, although some wild after-hours movement on the stock, it got up to $2 and what is this? $2.34. Ooh! So someone after hours tried to buy a bunch and uh, jack this thing up, and then it shot down to $1.91. No! And now it's at two sixteen dollars again after hours, but it closed at two oh five. We'll see what happens. And the parent company... So, so, so wait a minute. So every time that the market closes uh, in, in late hours, somebody tries to pump a little money into it to see, if, is it like CPR for a stock, Brian? Well, let's pump a little into him and see if he can breathe on its own, and then he starts flatlining again the next day? Well, we're not exactly sure, and I will look into this, but remember, podcast... Allegedly! Well, Podcast One did put out a press release on their own saying they're about to have a big stock buyback. They've increased the amount of money they're going to spend buying their own stock back. Also, they're giving a ton of stock to all these poor saps that are doing business with them. So we don't know, but the parent company itself, Live One, actually they closed a dollar five as of uh, yesterday. But that's progress. That's up from a dollar two. So they had a big three cent bump for Friday. Now wait a minute. Hold on. We've talked about how the podcast one stock is brand new. They just went public uh, it was last week or week before or whatever. And they were trying to start it at eight dollars, and it fell quickly to under four, and now it's at two dollars and whatever you just quoted. Well, Live One has had a stock out there for a while. Has it ever been worth anything? Is it plummeting now, or has it been caca from uh, for some time or from the start? 
Going based on what is here, and this may not be completely accurate. You'd spend more than a dollar and two cents to print the stock certificate out, wouldn't you? Well, the stock, I believe it debuted September 5th, 2014, or at least that's the earliest I have here. At that point, it was $10.50. Oh. In 2016, it had a big jump up to $60 a share. $60. $60 a share, but then in December 2017, it shot up to, what is this? It's not going to be hover. $90 a share. $90, 2017. Well, December 2017, and then, well, two days later, it shot down to $4. What? Wait, what? Ho, ho, what? It went from $90 to $4 in, in two days? No, actually, it may be a little bit longer than that because uh, it doesn't let me zoom in further, but in a short period of time, it went from 60 to 90 to four. Not 7.25, so it dropped to $7.25 and then four. And then that's 2018. What the fuck happened? Was Rob Ellen the CEO then? Who was running that thing? Did they get caught with a, a dead girl or a live boy on Broadway? We don't know any of the uh, financials or any of their history, and I believe it was Rob Ellen running the company then. And then since that time... Going through its scanning, it's gotten as high as it looks like into the $6 once or twice, $3, $4, $2, $4. And then it's been since the end of 2021, it seems to have been under $2 the entire time and at times under $1. Okay, so there's some homework for somebody out there in the cult of Cornette. Find out for us if you can or if you were a part of this. What the fuck happened in that period of time where it went from 60 to 90 to 4? And what did people find out about this company that made them want to shed their stock and disavow any knowledge of their actions? And again, I want to go back to one other thing, because one thing I have heard from a few people, and it's been annoying in a way, because it's like, man, you're ignorant. When they say, well, if you had just taken the deal, you would have gotten something. <laughs> you would have gotten something. The stock was worthless. We'd have gotten hernias from trying to pick up boxes and boxes of worthless stock certificates. When you invest money in something, you're looking to make money. You're not looking to lose money or lose value because you're not investing in this. You're being given this to replace a debt that someone else racked up by running off with your money. It's a whole nother story. But to be given this stock, where's the value? Look at their financial statements. Look at podcast one. Look at live one. Where's the value? If I invest money in Apple, I see value depending on what price I get in at. I don't think it's going away. I think they have lots of cash on hand. They make lots of money. If a product doesn't do well, it still does exceptionally good. And they constantly are churning out new things. And people have hope for the future. When you're investing in podcast one, for instance, how is that sustainable? It has to be a sustainable business for you to truly make your money back. If you're an investor, not if you're a trader, not if you're looking to dive in for one day, buy a whole bunch, and then as soon as you make a few cents on each share, dump everything. I don't do that. Long-term investor, where's the value in any of this? There isn't any. So we turn down valueless stock to us. Turns out, as of this point, we were more right than we even knew. It's valueless to everybody else, too. And this story just continues. It's a disaster. It's a runaway train. Colin Thompson, and I promise you, I know a whole lot more about how investing works than Colin Thompson, tried to sell us in those emails on what a wonderful opportunity this stock was. I hope he really believed that. I really hope he did. Because then he must be losing his mind on top of everything else, knowing that the paper he got from Rob is worthless. Well, and, and Theo Vaughn figured that out, and all the other people that have come out and talked about it on their podcast, which there's been several this past week, and uh, you know, it disappoints old Sarah Silverman. She's a funny young lass. I bet she could really verbally eviscerate Colin Thompson, but she hasn't come out and said anything. She just moved to another podcast platform and started her podcast back again, apparently free of the cast debacle, but uh, she hadn't come out and blistered him yet. I'd love to hear what she has to say in private. There's a lot of people that still haven't come out and said anything. A lot of shows that are still 
not understanding or not knowing how things are going to work out for them. Not everyone may have control of their RSS feeds. Penn Jillette went to Patreon. We don't know what's going on with a lot of shows, but a lot of the other shows were doing what we can to help each other. And two more people came out this week. I believe they were both under Big IP Media, Scott Porch, and talked about cast media owing them money. These are very popular YouTubers. One of them said he's owed 100000 Another one said he's owed 16000 And this is all still adding up. More people are coming out. More lawsuits are coming out. I referenced something the other day, Jim, that people really reacted to. I said that there was something we found out that Colin did that we wouldn't do to our worst enemy. And, and actually, that's when I said, I would even, I, I'm trying to remember my exact quote. I said, I'd even lay off a fucking Russo if this happened to him. And a lot of people blew up of, what in the world could that be? Well, we now have permission to tell what in the world that could fucking be. I have an email here from Dustin Knaus. Dustin was, I believe he said, Colin's business partner. He was, I forget the exact title, VP of production or something, a cast. He gave us permission to talk about this. So let me read a little bit of this. Colin refused to pay overtime, make proper schedules for people to be able to have lunch and do other things, uh, and he did other illegal things as an employer, excuse me. I tried to spare my team by putting in too much time. I was working 70 to 80 hours a week for less than what I would have made as a producer at any other network while having the title of vice president. Strung along with the promise of getting it back once the network finally sold and had its show's IP, or had its own show's an IP. I told Colin he needed to pay his producers overtime, that he couldn't do this. He said to me, quote, if they have a problem not being paid overtime, they can sue me. Just kidding, but not really. Well, in 2021, right when I was about to launch the Howie Mandel show, I had a child. But the child was born three months premature. As a result, Colin said he wanted to wait for the launch of Howie's show. He said he wanted to redo the pilot, even though we had everything set up for launch. After the child was born, I told Colin I couldn't work the hours I used to which were all logged in a time tracker. I said I had to cut it down. This was in a big COVID surge. I was spending every day at the hospital with my child. Every day, not knowing if he was going to live or die. He was born at 26 weeks and weighed 2.1 pounds. Mm. Colin knew what I was going through. A week or so after my son was born, Colin sent an email to me saying I was the delay in Howie's launch, that there were communication issues lately, and that if things didn't get better, I would be let go in 30 days. I knew it was retaliation for standing up for the team and trying to stop him from being a scumbag. I upped my game, still working 60 hours a week. I would work a cast during the day, then at night see my son. My wife and I weren't allowed in the hospital at the same time. I would wait in the car while she saw him, then we would trade off. At one point, he was diagnosed with, uh, I may get this wrong, hydrocephal hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, I guess it would be. I I'm not no, sure. Not exactly. syph it's hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, not and had to be rushed to Children's Hospital where we feared he would have to undergo brain surgery. At multiple points, he was showing signs of NEC, a gastrointestinal problem that is almost always fatal in infants. I was always open about what was going on with him, with Colin, and my team. Colin told me things were better. He saw improvements with my performance. Three days before I was supposed to take my paternity leave, and finally get my son home after months in the hospital, Colin called me up and let me go. In California, paternity leave is a percentage of your income. If you don't have income, you don't get paternity leave. So he screwed me over. I was defeated. 
exhausted emotionally, and couldn't put up a fight. I wish I had sued then and there, but I didn't have it in me. So that's a portion of this, and that, I think, says a lot about the character of Colin Thompson. And I have no reason to doubt what Dustin Canals put in his email. I've talked to other people who know him from cast. No one has said he's a liar or anything else. And of course, he's had public comments on the CoffeeZilla thing. If he said something wrong, I'm sure we would have heard something about it. And this is the way someone who helped Colin build cast media from the inside was treated. And then he was telling them, too, oh, you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck. And then for the, some people like Dustin got canned before they even got stock. Or did, I believe he said he did get some stock, but it's, it's worthless. And, you know, so what, nobody gets anything. And again, too, as we know, I think we may know it a little better than other people from wrestling. Just an example to use. Getting stock is different than getting stock options. Jerry Jarrett thought he was getting stock yeah. in Goulas Welch. He was getting stock options, and those options were denied by Nick Goulas. He got nothing. And that's, you know, that's what everybody is getting. And actually, the only good thing is, Colin, the stock he's supposed to be getting is in Live One, and their stock ain't worth a shit either. But, you know, the, at least they're getting first count. So if anybody gets their money back, it'll be Colin and his crooked little friend Rob and their crooked little lawyer sack of nuts and whatever the rest of them. And again, they said they were going to file for bankruptcy if, not, if these deals didn't go through. The deals didn't go through. They haven't filed for bankruptcy. Colin is still billing. There are shows, and Colin has said publicly he's not letting it be known exactly which shows they are. There are shows he's still working on. He's still dealing directly with advertisers. There are advertisers still willing to work with Colin Thompson. And that's what's really fucked up. He stole everyone's money, and he thinks he could just keep doing what he's doing. He's a nut. That's Do we know that all the advertisers know what he's done? Are they in their own little business bubbles, and they don't uh, understand what's going on, even though with all the headlines over the last few weeks? We certainly know that they will, and I think it's ironic that Someone who, it turns out, is a complete bullshit artist is the executive producer and working on a show called The Opportunist. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I'd like to go see what their reviews are on Apple, see if anyone's put two and two together. Yeah, but he, sh he made a mistake when he, he screwed the guy over that does the investigative podcasts about criminal activity. Well, there's going to be a lot more stories coming out in the weeks ahead, and... There's a lot we know right now that we can't reveal. I'm going to reiterate what I said last time. I think Colin's going to go to federal prison. And I think this is a bigger story, and it's been going on longer than people realized. And it's going to probably be years before we get a real read on the accounting, because it's going to have to come from multiple places and be put together. But we got to make sure we don't let Colin have the ability to just move on. Like nothing was wrong. Because that's what they tried. And Rob Ellen, Podcast One, Live One, go read his public comments. Still putting over Colin. Putting over the guy who took everyone's money. Says a lot about him too and his bullshit company. Bad CEOs help other bad CEOs. But there'll be more to come on this. Of course, if you have a problem with anything we said here today, tough shit. This whole segment's been cleared by Stephen P. New, 888 6928084 the best lawyer in the world Stephen P new newlawoffice.com that's right and uh, and by the way and you'll be hearing from him on a more direct basis Colin and and Rob as uh he's already reached out Neil, initially but Neil 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 Conan <laughs> so speaking of Speaking of piece of shit CEOs, no, nah, come on, we can't do that. You know where you shouldn't spend your money, Brian? Where's that? In the stock market, buying stock in Podcast One, from what I understand. Well, certainly you're speaking from your own personal point of view, and I guess you could say my point of view and the point of I'm view of a lot of people. I'm speaking from the who point of view to. of any sane, reasonable person that wants to keep a hold of what little money they may have left. This fucking stock is going down like a circus seal. 
So uh, we, we've had an update in the world of cast media and Colin Thompson and Podcast One and Live One, courtesy of our friends at is Billboard a magazine anymore? Do they do it right, or do they just put stuff out on the internet these days like everybody else? Well, they have an online presence, of course, but Billboard uh, is, I guess, the last standing music industry, and in this case, beyond the music industry, publication, trade publication. It used to be Cashbox and a whole bunch of different things. Billboard's really the last one standing. It's now the paper of record. Well, it has been for a while, I think, for a lot of people. Yes, in the in the industry and and to alert people to what's going on. They had a big, would you call it an expose, Brian? Would you use the word expose of what Billboard did concerning the whole podcast one, Colin Thompson, Rob Ellen, live one, the thing that we've been talking about for low these past three months, now that it's hitting the mainstream and people are finding out all the dirty little secrets. I don't know if I would say expose, certainly an exclusive story revealing some details that no one else Knew? Those details were exposed. Those details were exposed, but let's go back a step. You asked about the stock. I don't remember where it was where we last left off, but as we are recording over the weekend, the market is closed. Podcast one, PODC on the market, or on the exchange, I should say, is at $1.98. Oh, wait a minute. I think they've made a slight comeback. Well, there's a story to be told there. And then Live One, the parent company, yeah. is at $0.96. Cents. <laughs> and uh, we'll see about any slight <laughs> comeback there. One other note about Podcast One here. Podcast One's market cap right now is approximately $45 million. How? How? How are any of explained to a layman, Brian, to a, just a, a journeyman, to a common, ordinary, everyday, shit-kicking, small-town bird lawyer? How that they can claim that these companies are worth these tens of millions of dollars when you can get a share of the parent company for 96 cents down, by the way, from its original point on Thursday of 99 cents. They missed it by that much. This stuff is not worth a goddamn dollar a share. The parent company that's supposed to be even bigger then Podcast One, which is the company they say is worth $45 million, and you can get a share of that for a dollar eighty something cents. When it was issued two weeks ago, at, they started out at $8 and, and went down like a goddamn New Orleans whore. Yeah, and again, a good time to point out here that if you're hearing this, whatever you're hearing has been legally cleared by Stephen P. New, 888. The new number. No, no. 877-507-8383. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just give them the brand new phone number, Brian. 877-50-STEVE. That's right. That's what I said. 507-8383. But Podcast One stock had a very interesting few days. It was going down. It started the week last week at 219. and on Wednesday, September 27th, they hit $1.79. The low was $1.77 altogether. So that was on the 27th. And then that same day, they put out a press release. Courtside Group Incorporated completes restructuring a balance sheet and officially rebrands named the Podcast One Incorporated. Podcast One will continue to trade on NASDAQ under the symbol PODC. The parent company, Live One, converts its $3.5 million bridge note investment into Podcast One stock at $3 a share, a 57% premium, to the September 26 closing price, increasing Live One's ownership of Podcast One to 81%. Podcast One converts the remaining bridge notes in the range of $2.5 million in the shares of common stock at $3 per share. So it sounds like the parent company, Live One, had money they loaned, or had a, bri a bridge note is a short-term loan. A bridge note investment in the podcast. The parent company is converting their investment into Podcast One into stock in the company that no one will buy the stock of. 
So that caused the stock, I think, to uh, and that caused the stock to go up. It caused the stock to go up to a two dollars, <laughs> two dollars because they were out. buying it at a price of almost twice per share of what it, everybody else was that wanted it. The few people that wanted it was it was selling for. They what do you say? Well, we'll give ourselves three dollars a share. How the fuck does this? kabuki-ish bullshit even work it's a good question and you know we probably should have an expert in one of these days on here to answer but just imagine someone says jim i'm gonna loan you 3.5 million dollars and you say great i'm gonna use that money and i'm gonna try to operate my business and then you come back and you say how about instead of giving you that cash i'm gonna give you stock in my company but i'll value that stock higher than it's currently valued you would say, no way, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would I do that? No one would do that. Unless you were the parent company of the company you're trying to help out. I don't yeah. think anyone would do that. So Nobody that, would do that. So again... You, sh you shouldn't do that, Jerry. As, Nobody. As we talked about that. previously, Podcast One just likes to dump as many press releases as they can, saying almost nothing positive that's actually happening. So while all this is going on, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And there's a lot I can't reveal today, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes and a lot going on from different parties. I could tell you that Colin Thompson's operating business as normal. There are various shows under the cast media umbrella, The Opportunist, various other ones still operating, still billing sponsors. Hasn't filed for bankruptcy. Hasn't filed for bankruptcy, which we heard he was going to do from... Him, his lawyer, and from Rob Ellen in an email to you. Turns out that was a bluff. Never happened. So in the midst of all this, and Collins, we here, working to recruit shows still for Podcast One. It came out previously. Any cast show that went to Podcast One. Cast Media, Colin Thompson, who owns Cast Media. Cast Media would get stock, additional stock, just for any shows that came over. So you're helping Colin by trying to just get straight from what Colin did to you. So an article came out in Billboard by Dave Brooks. Podcast One paid Brendan Schaub $1.6 million, while other cast podcasters were asked to accept pay cuts. Parent company Live One took out a high-interest loan to bring Schaub over to Podcast One after he and others were jilted by cast media. What are your initial thoughts on that? Well, and Brendan Schaub, for those of you like me who didn't know until this whole debacle started, is a former UFC fighter that now has three big podcasts. He's a, he's a big boy, right? He's got a big listenership. And apparently, the, the way to try to artificially inflate this new enterprise that they were going to be selling stock in, to me, just on the outside looking in, was... We got to get this guy. He's got a lot of our numbers that we're claiming. So we'll make good with him however we got to to get him. And then we can say he came over here and that'll make a lot of the other people do it. They didn't count on you and me rallying a lot of the other people. Well, also, I think that it was a two-way thing. If Colin Thompson, who recently publicly stated that he reduced his debt from $8 million to $4 million, So there's him putting the number $8 million on the debt. Who knows if that's true or not, because Colin's a liar. Right. But he said it was reduced from $8 million to $4 million. You would have to think this would be a big part of that reduction. And again, it helps Colin if he can get $1.6 million off his books. And Podcast One needs these shows for any of this to make any sense. And you can tell that... Live one and our friend Rob. And by the way, hey, Rob, when you email me and say, I highly suggest that you talk to my team and I highly suggest you don't slander this deal, I highly suggest you check your fucking stock price when you tell Jim Cornette and Brian Lash shit like that, motherfucker. Mook. Look what it is. Yeah, Mook. Mook, motherfucker. <laughs> but nevertheless, <laughs> point being, they took out a high interest loan to pay this guy the money this rob ellen claims that live one is worth so much money they have to take out what did they do go to some back alley and deal with a loan shark to get 1.6 million or whatever to pay this guy off what he was owed so that he'd come to their shyster operation 
if if they got a forty five million dollar company under their umbrella, how come they can't come up with one point five million? They got to take out all these burdensome loans. This whole thing sounds like a house of cards. But you know, I'm not an expert. No, and. To that specific point, Billboard had the details here. Records obtained by Billboard show that in early August, Live One borrowed $1.7 million from Cap Chase, an online bank based in Madrid. <laughs> that money, Billboard confirmed, was borrowed to pay UFC fighter-turned-podcaster Brendan Schaub what he was owed by Cast Media, the Los Angeles-based podcast company launched in 2016 by founder and CEO Colin Thompson. So it wasn't like, let me go to Bank of America and get a loan. Let me go to Deutsche Bank. No, let me find an online bank from Spain to get a loan to pay this guy outright the debt that someone else racked up, possibly by committing financial fraud. What the fuck? The stupidest fucking people and then, so why would why would he do that? Why not? Certainly, out of the charitable. We're not talking about Mother Teresa. We're talking about old Uncle Rob Ellen. Why would he do that? Because he thought that he was going to make even more money selling the suckers this fucking stock in this bullshit. And again, he said the stuff out loud that you're probably supposed to not say out loud. We're looking to pick off shows. We see this is our chance to be a consolidator. You're not consolidating anything. No one thinks you're a competent CEO. Stop it. Stop and it. besides that, you could have been a contender, Rob, but you fucked with Jim Cornette and Brian Last, and now your stock is worth 96 fucking cents, which is more cents than you've got. Let me go back to this article because there's some... By the way, you have my email, Rob, and I believe you probably got my phone number too if you ever had the fucking balls gutless fucking gum bumping sack of snake feces was there more to the article well by the way if he does want to call let's please get that on the air but uh let me go to the article there were some interesting details here since live one announced plans to acquire cast media in may ceo rob ellen has not budged on his offer to compensate the podcasters to whom cast owes millions of dollars ellen's best offer one third of the money cast media owes them in cash one third of what they are owed in promissory notes to be paid over two years <laughs> and one third of what they are owed in stock from Live One subsidiary Podcast One. In exchange, the podcasters must sign a multi-year agreement with Podcast One and agree to reduce their cut of ad sales from 80% to as low as 60%. Yeah, well, and also have we actually documented them actually paying anybody this way? We haven't heard of any money changing hands or any stocks changing hands or anything except this payment to Schaub. Have, and well, no, they did put out a press release uh, maybe two weeks ago when the stock started really nosediving, saying that all these shows, including Brandon Schaub shows, all employees, all shows have received stock, and any cash shows that come over, like Brandon Schaub, receive stock as well. Oh, yeah, who, who else has come over? Come over, Red Rover. Uh, some more news or more news. I always get their name wrong, but their there's show. Like two, there's like two shows, right? Yeah. Now, they're still negotiating because, look, I've heard from people that Colin Thompson is still trying to reach out to people and get them to consider making this deal, which benefits him and really screws shows in the long run. It would be interesting. It would be interesting to see if these handful of shows, these few shows that you can count on one hand, on the fingers on one hand, even if you're a goddamn ex-lumberjack and have had amputation issues, if those shows have yet to receive any stock or any promissory notes or any cash, and if they did receive cash, did the fucking green ink come off on their fingers? You know, the Podcast One accounting department doesn't have a great reputation. So I'm expecting some cash shows, anyone who makes the move, maybe a few months, maybe a year, but we're going to hear Podcast One's not paying us, or not paying us on time, or we can't get answers from accounting. We'll see. But here's a quote from Rob Ellen. This is from when he talked to Podcast Business Journal on August 11th. We've spoken to every podcaster. We've offered really fair deals, equity in our IPO, to help them. No other platform is going to pay them for the past. They're only going to work with them in the future. Yeah, no one wants to work with you to help fix what Colin Thompson did to fuck up the past. That's the problem. 
The reason no shows have jumped on this deal, no one wants to work with you. The only shows that are working with you are the ones that got forced into this position or the ones that you just paid million, $1.6 million allegedly to to get them on your team on top of stock or anything else. But that's, and, what are, and, and, and what's the bank in Madrid going to have to say about this? That's the interesting thing. Of all the places you can go to borrow some money, publicly traded company, they say they're worth, I mean, the market cap's $45 million for Podcast One. When the stock went public, I think they had it at like $250 million. Oh, come <laughs> said, on, who's making, that's what I'm saying, who's making up these numbers? It's ridiculous. It, they had a, okay, they said they were valued at $250 million two weeks ago, and now it's $45 million. So that was, that's a great investment to hop on that gravy train. And then the parent company that supposedly owns this goddamn paper mache bullshit, how much should they be worth if, they're, if their subsidiary is worth $45 million and they have to go to a goddamn online dark web place to get a million and a half bucks to pay off a fucking guy from what he's owed to come to their shitty fucking organization? What are you interested in stock? How about instead of some money, I give you some great stock in this company uh, run by me. Now, but now that I just said that, I'm wondering who's paying 96 cents for this bullshit that you toilet paper is, is going to be more expensive here pretty soon. You can wipe your ass with this stuff just as well. I'll show you how much I believe in it. 96 cents. Huh. I'll give you three dollars a share. <laughs> but but who's he giving three dollars a share to? I give it to oh, me. He gave it to himself. He took his hand out of his right pocket and he put it in his left pocket. That's all he's doing, Rob, is just playing pocket pool. But uh, we got a few more things here that are interesting. Again, Dave Brooks wrote this article for Billboard. After announcing Live One's plans to acquire Cast Media in May, Ellen revealed that the deal would only close if 70% of Cast's podcasters would join Live One under the proposed settlement terms. To date, Podcast One has not announced the closing of the cast media acquisition. We should jump in there. It was carefully worded publicly that it wasn't an acquisition. It was the acquisition of certain assets, not of cast media outright, because if they had purchased cast media outright, all of this debt would be their debt. Right. So they were saying, how do we get Colin's shows? And Colin holds on to the debt. He'll figure something out. But we'll get all the shows and all the revenue streams. This is how it all happened right here. On September 8th, the day Podcast One was listed on NASDAQ, Live One released a statement increasing its revenue and earnings guidance for the year that included Cast Media's revenue and adjusted earnings and assumed, quote, the previously announced Cast Media acquisition would have taken place at the start of the fiscal year, which is April 1st, 2024. So, and they reiterated that guidance on September 27th. Well, yeah, that's all they're doing. You said it at the lead of the uh, the uh, piece there, is they're restructuring their balance sheet. Every time they start to go in the tank, some way or another, they, they redo the figures. They read, oh, there's hope here. There's life here. For people who don't have any idea what us crooks are doing, this looks great. I'll read one more thing here. I'll let you finish it because I'm not going to okay. read my own quotes. <laughs> but the reiteration... You were, you were heavily referred to in the piece. The reiteration has not helped the company's share price. In July, Value Scope, a third-party valuation firm hired by the parent company Live One, Valued podcast one between 230 and 275 million dollars, <laughs> which came out to eight to twelve dollars per share. A valuation Ellen had hyped the podcasters considering joining podcast one. How about that? They hired some companies like, Yeah, you're worth 275 million dollars. If we take a multiple, if we look at all the money you didn't make and pretend you made it, and then we give you a multiple of a million. <laughs> What? <laughs> that estimate ended up being overly optimistic. Podcast One's share price immediately dropped 46%. I'm about to say 46 cents. 46% after being listed on the NASDAQ and has since tumbled even further. Tumbled. Three weeks after being listed on the NASDAQ, 
The stock closed Tuesday at $1.91 per share. With a $45 million market cap, a drop of more than 80% after less than three weeks of trading. Rob Ellen is a wizard. He's Tumbledore. <laughs> I'm a wizard. I'll make the money disappear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's gone. <laughs> but I'll let you finish it. I was quoted. I spoke to Dave Brooks for this article. Of course, any media people that have questions about any of this, reach out. We are more than willing to be helpful for anyone looking to investigate any of this. But I was uh, interviewed for this article. What, and, and here again is the thing they, th and we've got a pretty good audience, right? We're not, we're not Brendan Schaub. We're not even our friend Theo Vaughn, but we got a pretty good audience. And we've been talking about this for three months from the start. And we knew how this, we predicted how the stock was going to go. We told everybody how this was being worked on and we got more information as we went, but we've revealed everything. We dared them to fucking sue us or say something to us at the start of this because we knew we were right. We had the documentation. And when other people, those are apparent, you've heard them, started seeing that we weren't getting in trouble for this or running with our tail tucked between our legs or fucking mincing our words, as they say, they started doing the same thing because they were pissed off. They just, unlike us, they ag agree to certain social decorums and norms, and we say, fuck you to that. But now everybody has jumped on this, but still they thought, they thought, Rob Ellen and Colin Thompson thought that they were going to get by with conning a lot of people out of real money with this stock thing. That was uh, the whole fucking purpose and that was what they thought they were going to do. And that's why they were threatening us at the start with their little emails. And that's why they were saying all this other shit. Again, Rob, 96 cents, motherfucker. Don't fucking send me a goddamn email talking to me like I'm some fucking asshole running the county fucking fair Ferris wheel. And don't send me a bunch of gibberish that you dictated into your fucking phone in a high wind and doesn't even sound like English if you're supposed to be the goddamn CEO of a multi-million dollar company. You know what you're the CEO now of? A fucking septic tank. And thank Jim Cornette and Brian Last for that. And if you can get Colin out of his closet where he's been hiding like he's in the fucking London Blitzkrieg, then slap him about to head and face too, because he's the one that led us to you. You bunch of fucking bastards. They thought so, they were the smart ones. That's the insulting thing. Rob Ellen and Colin Thompson, when they hatched this scheme, thought they were the smart ones. They thought the podcasters were the dummies. They're going to be so grateful to get any of their money back that they'll take this bad deal, that they would listen to bullshit. They tried to sell us on this stock. I don't have the exact words in front of me. It's a great way to double up on your revenue <laughs> by owning a piece of the network that you'll be boosting by giving them your fucking ad sales. What a bunch of shit. This was a shitty deal to save Colin Thompson from what he did. Nobody would have known a goddamn thing about it except all these podcasts that got ripped off and pissed off, and many of them were under contract where they couldn't really speak. Some of them haven't yet. But they would have got by with this stock thing, and maybe it'd still be worth three or four fucking dollars or whatever if we hadn't made sure to let everybody know what the fuck was going on and how to keep a hand on your wallet when you walk past either one of these son of a bitches in a crowded room. So, Rob, Colin, you're welcome. Can you imagine... The guy who stole the money from us is like, I advise you to do this. I strongly... Why would anyone listen to you, you fucking boob? The only reason anyone listened to you is because you had the sales team. Other than that, you have nothing. You have nothing. You're a bubblehead. You sleep in the streets. I'm a musician. I was a... I used to be a musician. Anyone could do stupid fucking ambient music for a podcast. I thought he was the one that was singing soprano at the end of all the jingles. I just love the fact that this guy, who fooled a lot of people, fooled us in terms of thinking he wasn't going to run off with our money, but has fooled other people into thinking he has any idea of what he's doing, or that he has some kind of creative hold on what to do with podcasts. 
this guy who has all these true crime shows, apparently these are the only shows he still has under his umbrella, the original productions, which are like, you know, the opportunist, a real true crime look at someone with dramatic music and a narrator telling you the story in a way that's kind of boring, but we'll tell you the story anyway. All this kind of shit. This guy's going to spur a whole industry of shows about him. The guy who has all those shows is about to cause a bunch of shows to be created about him and his shit. And he still thinks he's going to get away with it. Him and that wife of his. Just wait. Yeah. Just wait. You guys have no idea what's happening behind the scenes right now. You're going to wish you had given us our money. You're going to wish you had given us our accounting. And you're going to wish you hadn't fucked around with so many people. These people are better human beings than you. All the people you ripped off, whether it's $16,000 or hundreds of thousands of dollars, all of these people, Colin, are better than you. There'll be more to say about this. Uh, and if, again, legally cleared by Stephen P. New, 877-507-8383. 50 Steve. And by the way, we're better than him, and he knows it. Well, we can't do that. Come on, you can't do that. All right. We're better than him. Baby. And he didn't know it, <laughs> but he's about to find out, and he better recognize. That's right. Stephen P. New. Your ass better call somebody. Speaking of bones to chew on, Brian, should we talk now at the top of the program about somebody who might not be having a holly jolly Christmas? Who might be, I don't know, getting ready to look good in stripes instead of a Santa Claus outfit? The folks have not heard an update on cast media and our favorite weasel, Colin Thompson. In, in some time, because well, I, did, I believe we, we, we already we did the 14-part series, so they, they had a pretty good background and, and in-depth dive on what was going on. But for the new listeners out there, the reprobate, thief, con man, liar, shyster, con artist, and all-around criminal, but not a mastermind. Allegedly. Allegedly. It will soon be alleged in, in writing. <laughs> um, the, the person that was behind the cast media debacle that not only defrauded our operation here, me and Brian, of six figures in money, but others up to seven figures and celebrities, including Theo Vaughn and Sarah Silverman and a whole Pendulette. cast of those people, Pendulette. And at least he had the, the razor blade business to fall back on. But nevertheless, uh, we, we haven't done an update in a while because certain things have been going on. There's been some investigating and some certain, certain things going on that we could not comment on publicly for, for fear that that weasel might be out there somewhere listening to us and we'd tell him some of the things that we know. That's one of the reasons. But uh, we thought we would end the year. First of all, Brian, I've, I've got to ask you as the, the Wall Street guru, uh, of course, the longtime listeners and the folks who heard the segments before know that Colin tried to strong arm everybody he owed money to into entering into an agreement with Podcast One that was going to take everybody's show to levels they'd never dreamed of. And if they didn't do it, he would go bankrupt. And if they didn't do it, he'd go bankrupt. And it was the only way you were going to get your money. How were we going to go to levels we've never dreamed of when we're already number one? Would we... Would we loop everybody else again like a fucking jammer and roller derby and come back around? But nevertheless, he tried to strong arm everybody, even though his 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 tactics may be strong arm, but his demeanor was limp wristed about it. And as a result, well, podcast one went public after we had revealed everything that we revealed about Colin and about cast, and about the guy behind Podcast One, the guy from Live One, Rob Ellen, and the machinations that they were going through to try to pump up this apparently going to be allegedly bonus stock. And in the initial public offering of said stock, they, were, they went from the penthouse to the outhouse in about 24 hours. And Brian, so my question to you is, 
Have they got out of that outhouse yet? Or are they stuck in a two-story outhouse on the first floor? We were told that the only way we would come close to being whole, still without any actual accounting, would be to accept a deal with Podcast One where a portion of it would be paid in stock. Podcast One, two other parties, we believe, were saying that the stock would be valued at 8 to $12. They went public with that as well. The stock today, the stock that we refused. By the way, if anyone hasn't been able to tell, we're having the best time we've ever had with the show right now. (laughs) And we're doing fine. Podcast One stock as we are recording, $1.68. And it, it, it debuted... It debuted at $8 that that sunny morning that it went public. No, it didn't debut at $8. They wanted it to be $8, and as soon as it opened, the market decided, you know what, $5.80 sounds more appropriate. Oh, that's right. That's right. They had said eight. It started at $5.80, and it's now a dollar. Dollar sixty-eight with a market cap of thirty-nine point two million dollars. So if you have forty million dollars, you could buy all of Podcast One in there <laughs> and figure out how it's worth that much even right now. Well, it's worth that much because Rob and his uh, now apparently not close friend Colin uh, has got together and said, "Hey, we'll print up a bunch of certificates of stock in this fictitious company that we're going to fucking strong arm people into working for." And we're going to say that it's valued at tens of millions of dollars and get people to buy pieces of it. And then we're all going to move to Calabasas. And for the record, Podcast One, 80% of it is owned by Live One, the parent company, yeah, Rob Ellen's he, company. Well, here's another. This is Rob Ellen is the CEO that tried to strong arm me via email with a veiled threat that I, I believe I ended my last communication with him was so you go fuck yourself. But nevertheless, this guy, CEO of a multi, multi multi-million dollar company, what's what's that stock worth? The parent company? The parent company of the dollar sixty-eight podcast one, eighty percent is owned by Live One, which is at one dollar and five cents. (laughs) And I just hate it that Rob. And Colin the Weasel are having a miserable Christmas, while Brian, as you mentioned, not only of our pod, because now we are in complete control of not only our podcast and our intellectual property and our trademarks and our feed and our YouTube channel and also our advertising agency who works directly for us. We own everything and control everything, and we get the numbers on everything, so, so thank you, Colin. And our new advertising agency is always already doing a better job than you ever did. So thank you, Colin. And we got a better deal. So thank you, Colin. And we got all of our sponsors back because they heard where you took their money that was supposed to come to us and shoved it in Calabasas. And so we got all of them back. And now the podcast is doing better than ever. And we're having a holly jolly Christmas, and you, you miserable piece of shit, are hiding under a rock out there on the coast somewhere, not knowing whether to wind your ass or scratch your watch, and you don't know what we know, and you don't know when we're going to tell you. And Stephen P. New is aching to take a trip to California, and he's got a new co-counsel named Andre the Giant. Who's going to put the big giant splash down? So I just want to well, say hello. There may be some trademark issues with that, but we'll work on it for the future. I just wanted to say hello <laughs> to Colin and his and his his ilk, Rob. Nobody's hearing from Colin these days, and even the podcast one press releases. Don't mention any involvement with Colin Thompson or cast media anymore, do they? No, it's very interesting, and everyone needs to remember his name, Colin Thompson. If he still has the ridiculous hairdo, he had ridiculous frosted tips. If you see this clown, that's him. This guy, who owes us a lot of money, again, we're doing great, but that doesn't change the fact that he took our money. We never got it back. We never got the accounting. He kept billing. So there's a few hundred thousand dollars that need to come back home. 
but we'll get there. That doesn't change the fact that we're doing great now. We could celebrate where we are today here at the end of 2023. I don't know if Colin could do that. You know, he said the quiet part out loud. There was an interview a few months ago. Forget which publication had it. And he didn't want to say the names of his shows. Because he was afraid that people would get in touch with the advertisers. Or that people would leave comments on Apple Podcasts or reviews. Because he's still in business. The threat of, take this deal or I will go bankrupt? We didn't take the deal. Other people didn't take the deal. Cast Media is still in operation. They're still billing. They're still pulling in money every month. Now, when you, when you say they, since we know that almost every single employee either quit or is actively suing him in some kind of class action situation, it's basically just him. He's still sending people bills for things that he's apparently collecting money for. That's right. So Colin's still in operation under the name Cast Media, but his name seems to be missing. You know, a press release went out November 15th. Podcast One acquires exclusive rights to Lost in Panama podcast, including IP for TV and film. <laughs> now, this show, I believe, like The Opportunist, that's another one of the shows that Colin still owns, were Colin's intellectual property. They were developed by Cast Media. They were his shows. When all the other shows said, fuck you, you're a thief, I'm out of here, He's still in operation because of these shows he was still able to bill for, to complete that sentence, to bill for. Yes. So now all of a sudden this press release comes out. Podcast One has acquired season one, the previous episode, which was downloaded two million times. And future episodes, as well as the TV rights, a documentary series is in development. 19 new shows added this year. You go through this uh, press release here. Not a mention of cast media. Not a mention of Colin Thompson. That's a little odd. They're acquiring this show. Who are they acquiring it from? How come all of a sudden Podcast One doesn't have Colin Thompson or cast media? I'm looking through this anywhere in this thing. It's returning in May of 2024. But who'd they buy it from? How much stock did he get for it? How's that stock doing? So that's the point. We said that we're going to try to wait everything out, get Colin back into the game. Weasels like weasels. Rob Ellen has shown himself to be someone with no integrity whatsoever. So Colin's right up there with the kind of people he would want to work with. Colin may not like the way things worked out because he's an idiot. He played his hand wrong and he's an idiot. The only thing he had going for him was his advertising. He's a podcast moron. But again, there's a lot of things in play. Don't forget his name. He may not want you to know what are his shows. Go look at what his shows are. Let those shows know what you think of the fact that they make money for the person who stole money from a bunch of shows, including Jim Cornette and Brian Last. And he's still in operation, folks. And from innocent parents of special needs children. Because I, I don't know how much, there's a limit to how much sympathy you can probably drum up for you and me, because they know we'll, we'll make yeah. it. And look, Podcast One can make deals with some of the desperate shows that were cast shows that are just shit out of luck. These are shows that are never going to really get popular, never going to really make real money. And Podcast One is promising the world with programmatic ads. If you listen to a show that's a Podcast One show and you're like, man, there's a lot of fucking ads in the middle <laughs> of this show. That's their business model. Overload the shows of programmatic ads. It's a model that we reject, by the way. Ours are done in good taste and with, with uh, decent professional lighting. So this is going to be the last thing we say for a little while. We have to go radio silent for a variety of reasons, but as soon as there is an update we can give, we will give. But the point here at the end of the year, we kind of end this year the way we ended last year. Where's our money, Colin? But we're in a better position today than we were a year ago. And in life, you can't let creeps like this intimidate you, lie to you, steal from you, cheat you, and think they could bounce off and just go hang out in West Hollywood. 
No. So, more to come. And in the meantime, Colin, maybe you're going to hear from Sergeant McCoy. I don't know. <clears throat> maybe you're going to hear from Andre the Giant. I don't know. Or maybe you'll hear from this man. Wings! <laughs> you don't know what's coming, but it's coming. And by the way, if you hear this, this has all been approved by our lawyer, the esteemed Stephen P. New. Happy birthday, Stephen P. New. We love you. Happy birthday, the consigliere himself, who, as I said, is looking forward to a nice West Coast tan. But and and, and by the way, you you know you mentioned the uh, the the weaselness of Colin Thompson. And uh, I mentioned the the weaselness of, of him and his cohorts, but again, they it, it, they have created a situation where I know you, for you it would be nothing to give good stock advice. You follow the the game on Wall Street there, but oh. they created a situation where Jim Cornette. Looked like Edgar Casey prognosticating the stock market. I was actually able to say they're going to try to sell you this shit and it's going to fucking fall apart. And I was correct. So that tells you how stupid the people that actually bought that stock, the few that did, uh, must have been. And by the way, for quarter two, for 2024, the fiscal year of 2024, Podcast One reporting 10.5 million in revenue with 1.4 million in losses. So they can't make money on the millions they're making. And just wait yeah. until they have to repay those loans. Should Tony Khan buy Podcast One? Ooh, how do we take that if he does that? Is that an attack on us? How do you see that? I see that as the only other person that might buy something that loses that much money and run it just for the fucking fun of it. If he bought it for $40 million, who does he put in charge? Well, I say probably uh, RJ City and referee Aubrey Ed. You know, you're joking, but that may actually be who he puts in charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Tony Khan allegedly... In talks to buy podcast he, he one. Yes, he has alleg allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Well, just so he could, all of, all of his wrestling action figures could have their own podcast. If Tony Khan lets it come out that he's going to buy podcast one, does Nick Khan go and set up a meeting with Rob Allen? No, I, I don't think that. It appears to me that if you actually met Rob Ellen, at least the way that he writes English in his emails, you would think that he was the guy that fucking invented huffing goddamn kerosene behind the barn and instantly dismiss him as a serious person to speak to. You know, one day, and we can't do it today, we're going to end this segment momentarily, but one day after uh, some other things get taken care of, we need to talk more about him because when we talked about him, we got feedback from a variety of people who hate this man. <laughs> like, we think he's a mook, and we can laugh about him, and he tried to rip us off, but he's a jerk-off. But there are people who fucking hate him, and he's alleged by former investors to have ripped off them, the investors. Apparently him and Bo Deedle, the famed investigator, private oh, detective. Oh, good lord, that private eye character that with the fat jowls and the fucking stubble that's always was always on news shows for years. A New York legend. Well, apparently they have had a feud because he got ripped off. Apparently, this is the weirdest one. Apparently he got sued, Rob Ellen, by the widow of Brandon Tartikoff, TV legend, <laughs> programming legend, because he rented her house and wouldn't pay. I mean, there's a whole bunch oh of stuff, God. a variety of lawsuits and depositions. Like, more people don't like this guy and are just waiting for anyone to talk about him. They just sent all this shit out. But maybe in the future, but more things need to happen, and uh, stay tuned for those happenings. I need to hear more about the problems with Mrs. Tartikoff. Lily Tartikoff. Lily Tartikoff. Well, she certainly did. Well, there it is, our look back at the majority of the last year, our dealings with Cast Media, Jim Cornette's Cast Media Omnibus. Jim, as we close out 2023 with big things coming in 2024, and we have had a great year. Did I get around the bell? I think I did. Despite <laughs> everything happening with Cast Media, 
But what do you think when you look back on this cast media saga right now? I didn't ding you, Brian, because you were using the word great in the proper usage. But I will ding Colin along with Rob and everybody else involved with them because that's what you guys are going to be hearing a lot of this year. Bells, your ears are going to be ringing because they're going to be boxed courtesy of the legal bulldog himself, the consigliere, and his assorted minions, if not henchmen. Associates. Associates. And as well, uh, Colin and Rob and all, and anybody associated with you people, we enjoy monitoring your stock price as it continues to go down like a circus seal. Fuck you very much. For this omnibus and for Jim Cornette, I'm the great Brian Last. Fuck you, Colin. Tally-ho!